Likes up, get them likes up.
sure you guys get them likes up. Shout out to the sponsor, uh, T.J. Hanley. Shout out to T.J. Hanley. Shout out to the sponsor, Tease Hanley. It's too early, but that's okay. My gym workout was phenomenal. Before I went home, I decided to stop over at my mother's house. I haven't seen my mother in two months. I know she's going to be very surprised to see me. I can't wait. What the? I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The first thing I noticed was this person's skin. What is going on? Uncomplicated, untreated skin? Who is this guy? I had to take a step back, but then I realized it was my brother. But look at his skin. Have you guys ever seen anything like that? I had to take a closer look and figure out what was going on. Best believe I crept up on him. Peep this. I'm still looking at his skin trying to figure out how did we get here? I could do nothing but shake my head. He could definitely use my help. I had to get to the bottom of this. He definitely needed some game to buy this skin. I'm just staring at it, like looking at it. Come on, bro. I knew what to do. I had to reach in my bag and get that T's handling. Uncomplicated skincare for men. Bro, this is why I'm excited to have T's Hanley as the sponsor of today's video. They have helped me start and maintain my skincare routine by making the entire process uncomplicated. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend you start with their level one system, which comes with all the basics. A daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and the grime on your skin. A two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells. An AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun. And a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My brother was so excited. My favorite part about Teach Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. They really make the process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin easy. Shout out to Teach Hanley. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and not only will you get Teach Hanley for the best possible price, but they'll also give you a free gift with your first box. Click that link and get started today for just $30. Feel the teach. Let the teach force be with you. Let's just have a conversation. Welcome to La People. Let's talk and reduce the crew. We got Mr. Logic. Oh, Pookie, that's Pookie. My bad, Mr. Pookie. We got Anton. We got Kay, Chicago Rilla, Miss Courtney, Island Girl Q, Kayla, and me and myself on La Peep JR. Welcome to La Peep. Let's talk, family. What's going on? What's going on? How y'all doing, family? Good. How are you? Good evening. Uh, Happy Thursday. Hello. You said what? What'd you say, Island Girl? Happy too? Thursday. Oh, you said happy birthday. I, I said happy, happy birthday. Thursday. I heard you. I, I think you said somebody's birthday. Thursday. Okay. So how y'all doing, man? Oh, oh wait, wait, hold Courtney. on. Courtney, hold on, hold on. Courtney. Hey, what up, what up, what up? Courtney, you look incredible. <laughs> Loving the hair color. Well, you know, New Year, Courtney, New you, must be, you, you must be in the gym. 
I am. I've lost 15 pounds. Okay. Let me school my chair up a little bit. Another, another 10 more. I'm going to come out here with a brazier. That's it. <laughs> Courtney looking like a snack. Oh, my God. Okay, girl. Let me, let me put a cover over that side of the screen. Give me a second. <laughs> Jesus. But that's good. Yeah, that's you should just flip us. Oh, you yeah. Just yeah, go. yeah, here we go. Yeah. Put me in that I know Courtney yeah, my original. That's that's my original baby girl anyway. So. There we go. <laughs> now next to my nigga. Hey, um, Jr. We got new merch on deck. Am I am I looking at that right? No, nah, I didn't sell merch, man. This that look like new colorways, Joe. Nah, it's, it's old. It's old, man. It's old. <laughs> I, I just <laughs> only made one. Oh, Yo, you starting the front on us? Okay. <laughs> nah, it was just a test, man. I, uh, I thought I, I thought I tried uh, like nine months later. <laughs> and time you left me on red, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wasn't nothing to talk about. Wasn't nothing to talk about. We good. What? Uh oh. Hey man. Hey man. <laughs> Shout out to the Pistons though. What up though? All right. That's good, man. Well, I'm glad to have you guys uh tonight. It's gonna be a great show per usual. If you guys just tuning in, welcome again. Make sure you guys get them likes up. Also, subscribe to the channel. I do see the green gang in the chat. So let me do a little something for you guys that I like to do. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate y'all. Make sure you guys hit that join button if you want to become a member and go green. Let's get the show started, man. I mean, hey, can I get a quick salute, though, to my Georgia Bulldogs? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see that Bulldog in the back. Hey, salute oh, to the Georgia hey, Bulldogs. Hey, Bulldogs. 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 <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me get that. Uh... There you go, Lodge. There you <laughs> <laughs> I right, don't start doing no cute dogging up in here now. Oh, cute dog. Oh, I guess I guess everybody missed it. That's cool. I That's cool. I'm about to work on my jokes. I know. The, I know what they are. You know, take that one off the list. No, the okay. jokes are still dry. Um, yeah. You know take what it, it off is. The list. <laughs> 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 He's like, after all this time. Oh, okay. So y'all, so y'all laughed at the joke that was against me, but y'all didn't laugh at when I said the joke. I see how it's working tonight. I see. That's cool. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Your joke wasn't funny. It wasn't oh, okay. good at all. Okay. Okay. Y'all gonna stop? <laughs> you want to fight? Oh, my bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, again, hit that like button. Let's get this show started with the first topic of the night. This should be an easy one, man. I know y'all can fly through this one. Why do we care if people date outside their race? It seems like it's such a big thing. Um, I had some conversations with some of you guys, and a lot of y'all like to keep the keep it together. So I just want to kind of break it down, get you guys thoughts as to why do we care so much if people date outside their race? Why can't they? Let me see. Start with you, Rilla. I see you looking away like that. <clears throat> I didn't want to get called on. No, nah, we don't care. We don't care if you care. Listen, here's the thing. We actually don't care if you date outside our outside of your race. But why do you care if we insist on dating within our race Ooh. to preserve our legacy, <laughs> right? To preserve our family. Why? Really, you're not gonna start capping as early in the show, bro. <laughs> you know it ain't not one person that's Hold dating on. outside that race that give a flying fuck about whether or not somebody that's dating black is dating black. They do oh, they not do. care. Yeah, they, no, 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 they, they don't. They stop, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> they one thousand percent do. They do. They do. I guess. Um, and, it, and that definitely ain't cap, bro. Let's let's keep it a bean because for every Capalicious. person, that, I hear you. For every person that does call somebody into account, you know what I'm saying. Um, in terms of them dating outside, their, me. Well, let me say it like this: me personally, I don't care. So when I say we, me, my team, my circle, we don't care. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? You 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 do your thing, like and and whether you uh. Male or female, is it the way that we personally will rock? We all have our own opinions on that, but we don't care. But why is it that when we say, okay, if you say, if you, if, <laughs> and let's keep, let's keep it a bean, Anton, for the gentlemen that are adamant and say stuff like, well, we, we ain't down with the brown, right? We ain't night riders. When other people come back and say, well, yeah, I'm down with the brown. I night ride all day, seven ways to Sunday. Why do you take such offense to that when we say that? 
right? So that's Ooh, when did they take offense to that? Oh, they definitely do. They get super defensive, get super, super, super say on energy for that. Well, I can't have a choice. I can't have a preference, bro. You could do whatever. Well, that's because you're speaking specifically to them, but they're not coming back at you saying, yeah, "Why are you I dating?" Mean, wait, 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 wait. So they coming yeah. back at you and saying, "Hey, Rilla, why are you dating black?" Is that what they doing? Mm -hmm. Courtney, what what am I missing here? Oh yes, oh yes. Matter of fact, I'm under attack right now because I support and date uh, date black men. I love black men. What? <laughs> These are facts. Okay, so what's the problem? But with that? no, well, there's a group of women that I've been talking to that are against women, black women dating black men. They are diverse. Really? And they call me mammy. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So let me let me back up because I guess what I'm thinking about is I'm kind of kind of sort of looking at it from a men's perspective. Like I don't okay. see men getting mad at other men. So maybe this is a completely different lens because I've always related back to me having conversations with men larger largely you know what i'm saying so maybe you got some more context i'm gonna step back for a minute i'm gonna observe because I'm, I'm not aware of this new phenomenon but go ahead do your thing love well i'm not against interracial dating dating whomever you date who loves you and you love them back you know i only have a problem when you choose to date out but then you want to disrespect your own culture your own race then it's like i mean chill out you know date whoever you want to date but you know, that doesn't mean you disrespect the other race by doing so. But however, there there are people out there and I've heard men call other men that say they love black women simps. Um, they get called that all the time. And especially with me, when I'm say black love, they say, well, black love is a myth. You're dumb for believing in that. Black men don't love black women. So why would you even want to be with a black man? You're dumb. Be with a white man. That's your true Prince Charming. Okay. Why do people care if we date outside that race? Um, I think I don't think people care that much um, nowadays. I think that people start to care when, uh, like Courtney said, you start like someone starts disrespecting their own race. Like this is why I date so and so because you black so and so's. Like when people start doing that type of thing, I think that's when people start to care. Um, or when there's always some kind of comparison. I don't think that, um, for the most part, people walk down the street and they're just mad when they see somebody in an interracial relationship. Like, I don't think that that's a big deal for a lot of people. It's kind of crazy because uh, every time we see some, well, not every time. I know a lot of people when they see uh, interracial dating going on, they frown, have something to say. They giving this type of look like, mm. <laughs> I don't know why. It, I'm just, it, go ahead. Especially when it comes to a black man dating a white woman. I hear more g women talking about that. Like I hear regarding topic, a topic like this, I hear more women like, why, why is that black man with a white woman type of stuff? So it does come about in conversations. Honestly, I don't really care what you want to date. It's up to you. But just don't don't bash any other cultural race. But we do hear it. I'm, we're not about to be naive in what's going on here. Um, I do hear it more out of women. But shoot, we have black women dating white white men, so I feel like it's do do what you want. So that's yeah, you know, that's all. and I do I do hear it with black women as well. And I think black women have this idea of scarcity. It's an idea that there's not a lot of good black men. It's an idea that black men are the good ones are either married, gay, or in jail. So that's the idea that's pushed, that's the narrative. And so when a black woman sees a man, especially someone that's successful with a white woman, it's damn, that could have been mine. No, and it probably couldn't. So it's an idea of scarcity that a lot of black women think that when they see someone dating someone in another race, there goes another one that's one less black man for a black woman. Mr. Pookie, why yeah, do they care? It's insane, though, because uh, if you be honest, though, cut off your Facebook, cut off your Instagram, cut off your TVs, and you don't see it as much. So because we are part of the social media effect, we focus on these this small percentage of black men or black women that we see dating outside our race. And what we end up doing is we say, hey, that's majority. You know what I'm saying? We look at the couple of football players, the couple of basketball players, uh, the couple of athletes, the couple of all these different people, and then we sum it up to this as being a black race 
when you look outside your door, you see a very small percentage of it. But that's the that's our problem as black people. We sit here and make everybody our leaders. You know what I'm saying? It can be the dumbest person on world in the world. And guess what? Just because he played basketball good, we make him a leader. So now if he choose to date outside of his race, then now he almost is like, hey, look, he's holding a torch for black men. So for us to even have this conversation, and I know I, not just this platform, but across the um, our black culture, this conversation is coming up. It show us how disconnected we is from what's important in, in our community. And it also show how social media got control of us. All right. What about you, Anton? Why do they care? People date outside their race. Now, I don't care why anybody care about if anybody date <laughs> anybody. I mean, I don't I don't really see it because for some reason or another, I don't I still don't get this whole um team thing and how we align ourselves with people based off of stuff that other people can't control. People, women align themselves um, and their opinions based off of whether or not somebody's a woman, a man, you know, same thing with men conversely. And then on the other side, people align themselves based off a of race. And, you know, it's like we pick and choose all of these different things of whether or not we are going to, you know, make a decision. And it's, for me, it's, it's, it's silly because, all of this stuff was established by people that made this decision for you before you was even born. And now you still rocking with it or establishing whether or not you align somebody with it based off of that. Like, for example, I'll give you an example. Right. So somebody could say, well, if you got this percent of black blood in you, then you black. And it's like, OK, so who came up with the formula and why are we still sticking to it? So that does that mean that you're not that other race? If you got 50 percent of that and you still got 10 percent, like how do we establish that we still abide by these social norms that other people establish at some point in time that we don't even know who established it? Right. Who was the first person to come up with it? And why do we still align ourselves with it? Yet we still making decisions and opinions off of people based off of whatever overall society social norm is. Y'all can't even vote a decent president in office. Like y'all, y'all can't even pick pick people based off of their policies, and you picking them based off of the lies that they sell you. And now they got y'all worrying about whether or not you accepting payments through cash apps. Now, you know, shout out to Biden, my guy. Um, but my point is, is that how do we establish where do we draw a line in the sand, and why do we keep making us making assessments of whether or not we rock with something or we don't based off of things that people can't even control? You can't control how you was born. Yet we want to complain about the fact that people stereotype us. And then we do the same thing against other people when we see them rocking with somebody that don't look like who it is that you rock with. And it's all just a bunch of convoluted bullshit that don't even mean anything to anybody. Because at the end of the day, when you go into your grave, you're going to be skull and bones. And nobody is going to care about anything that you look like, nor are you going to care about anything that you look like because you're not even going to be here. And we all just people at the end of the day. So I don't understand it. I'm still not at the end of the day rocking with people based off of anything outside of the character that they have. And to a larger extent, something that I can't control, the proximity that I have with people that I spend the most time with. I, I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. Hey, can I interject on what Antoine said? He brought up a good point that it, it went into my point when he said, pick the presidents, not based on poli I mean, po I mean, policies. We saw that. We saw that everybody picked that certain group because Meek Mills told you to because so-and-so told you to. And then that goes into the dynamic of these relationships. You know what? They only doing what they see. They only reacting to what they see on social media instead of what they react to what they see in real life. So I want to, I want to push back a little bit. I know Kayla got to jump in here, um, but I, I, I got to push back a little bit and I want to oh. go macro and then let's bring in micro. And I've used this example before. Anton, I think that, um, and I appreciate what you're doing, bro, because I think you're trying to bring us to a, a, a heightened sense of awareness. But what you speak about is unique to America. Because when you go to France, okay, um, they still make the distinction, like, yeah, they're Frenchmen, but they still make the distinction about the Nigerians. 
that are there. They still make the distinction if I go to London. They still make the distinction about the Jamaicans that are there. And those people align to your point based on proximity. And people will often align based on proximity in terms of <laughs> who resembles them. So if you and I will go take a trip to Abu Dhabi, right? we'll go to Saudi, Saudi Arabia, guess what? The people in Saudi Arabia are going to align not primarily based on their values, principles, so that's who resembles me. So the assumption is you look like me. You look like me, so you share the same principles. What you yes, speak, sir. What you speak on oftentimes, bro, is unique to America, but we don't see that in the larger context of the entire world, which is why if I go to Dearborn, Michigan, the Chaldeans will align with Chaldeans before they align with me, regardless of if I'm a good dude, regardless That's of not if, true, bro. I, it's not true. I, and I would disagree with you. It's not I true. And, and largely, because I think you need to get out of your circle because the world is very bro, I just much. I told you I was in Dearborn, Michigan. You, you're not. Like, you're not what, 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 what circle do I need to get out of if I'm telling you about your You need to get out of America. Because America, what's happening across the board is largely the same thing that's happened as a reflection of America. Listen, why do you differ? Why, not you specifically, but no, I'm speaking to people in general. Why do people differentiate between what's light skin and dark skin? How is it any different than what's happening worldwide? How do you pick and choose? Listen, though. since the beginning of time, people have been tribal. Okay. And it's gone outside of what was necessary in order to be tribal. Tribal often at times in the very beginning of time aligned with what the need was. It had nothing to do with what separated you from a looks perspective at all. That's something that's relatively new. That's not something that historically is correct according to how it is that you're trying to align yourself. When we civilize the world and we stop focusing on what the need was, and being tribal in that aspect, we then had time to start to separate ourselves based off of how we feel. And this is what you're seeing today. I'm telling you, bro, you really need to get outside of America and see what's happening all across the board, bro. The same thing that's happening here is happening everywhere. And bro, you can get on any app and talk to any, go get on Clubhouse and talk to people that's over in London that's black and ask them what it is that they feel. They're going to say the a exact same sentiment and a very similar perspective as you got Correct. right now. Correct. Because most people tend to align with people that look like them. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out what's the part that that's um, you, you say you have a hard time understanding that. So you my point is really, my point no, is I get, this. I get your point. Why your do point. you, I get right? Your point. As educated as you are, um, as much understanding as you have, Okay, as I much as you that. align with the word of God, as you say you do, right? That. Why that. do you still have the same perspective regardless of what? I don't care if the whole world feel a certain type of way. That's not how I'm going to move, right? As far as how it is that I decide to align with people. I'm going to make my own rules and establish my own sentiment as to whether or not I'm going to rock with somebody. And it's not going to be based off of pressure from society at large. Hey man, hey, if I'm going to rock with somebody based off a of character, I'm going to rock with some base, somebody based off a of character. I don't care what they're doing in Dearborn. I don't care what they're doing. Hold on. On you you point, As a matter of fact, yeah, I think you, bro, ahead, the majority, you just, even said it, and everybody on this panel has said it, the majority of what's happening on YouTube is not what we're experiencing in real life. Yeah, but we see, don't see a bunch of dudes that be mad at chicks in real life. <laughs> why am I gonna start? Why am I going to start subjecting myself to the narrative that I see on social media when in real life that is what not, the majority of our experiences are not this, bro? But no, really, it really is partially right though, because you know what I'm saying black people are tribal. Right? But this this is the thing. You missing one concept, really. When uh, when black people have access to other tribes, then they become less tribal. So when you start seeing hey, you can't, hey bro, you can't deny that. Once they no, have no, access, to see, I, I, I want to see even in Atlanta. I could. Oh, I, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish, though. Let ahead, me finish because you don't know. You, I might say okay, it and then okay, you okay, might agree. So you got to think about this is that they are tribal, but they have certain access to certain things. 
once they get certain status and once they get certain wealth, they had access to different things. So that's why you see them start trying new things, new food, new cars, new clothes. And guess what come along with that? New women. So I'm with you. Yes, black people are tribal. They stick to their tribe. They date they, they women. They do everything within their tribe. But once they have access outside of that tribe, guess what they're going to start trying? Everything outside of that tribe. And I go ahead. I, I, I would disagree. Um, and if you in, I don't know if you in the A or if you in Georgia, um, Mr. Pookie, but if you in the A, you know, yes, sir. Fact, you know for a fact who run the black nightclub scene in Atlanta. Yes, and sir. And can't nobody get in on that, that uh, because they all align as Eritreans. Then why would you want to go if you feel differently is my point. And it's still within a tribe. On, it's still within a tribe. But Correct. guess what? I'm gonna throw something at you though, right? Do they not have access? You, really. Do they not have access? But no, I'm gonna throw something at you though, right? Wait, but you gotta answer that part. Do no. they not have the access that you talked about? Listen though, I'm telling you, I'm gonna answer okay. your question, right? Uh, what do they typically stay at? It's it within a tribe or outside of their tribe. Within a tribe. No, bro. <laughs> no. Listen, what, am I, what kid are became Bro, look, check this out. Once they get a certain level of resources, you don't ever see none of them. T.I. don't stay in West End. He don't stay in Bankhead. Guess what T.I. stay at? Oh, he stay know, outside of his tribe. Not, wait, wait. Let me, oh, let me finish. Okay. Right, Where do his kids go to school? <laughs> Within his tribe or outside his tribe? Do they drive the same cars as they tribe drive? Do they eat the same food that they tribe eat? No. Once they get resources, they have access outside of their tribe, and then that's why you start seeing it change. But isn't that two different things, though? But isn't that two different things? Moving to another location, but yet still intermingling, marrying, having babies with your same culture, your same... That, that's two different things. Is that not? Let me, let I don't me say that. Let me mention it. I'll be quiet because... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's oh, yeah, one at a time. Yeah, time. Well, even, time. even mentioning T.I. Yeah, he moved out. That's a whole, a lot of people move out. A lot of people should move out. Shout out Young Dolph. So, yeah, you, you know, move out to a better area. Unfortunately, majority of the better areas are not populated with people that look like us. But it doesn't mean that I give up on people that look like me, that I'm trying. Now I'm going to go with a white man because I'm in a white neighborhood and I'm going to put raisins in my potato salad. No, no, no. no. I'm that I'm still point, right? so look, look, I'm watch still... this. All, a lot of these rappers is from Bankhead, right? You had T.I., you had Charlotte Lowe, you had all these people, right? So now, once they got resources, did they build up Bankhead? No. Bankhead looked the same as they left it. Where they take their resources, they took it out because they developed a new tribe. So to that point that he's making... Once you get outside of your tribe, you have that resource. All you're going to do is you're going to be exposed to different things. That's all I'm right. saying. And that you're going to get exposed to different women. And that's what happens. The only thing on Bankhead is Jazzy T's. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Best strip club in the world. That's it. All right, y'all want to get to, to Kayla before you guys uh, finish the conversation. Kayla, why do uh, we care? If people date outside their race, um, that's the. I've been thinking about it. I don't really know why other. I mean, I know why other people care. I'll just start with my perspective. I don't personally care. Um, I'm pro black. I'm gonna procreate black, and there's no, there's nothing around that. Um, but I do think that I have. The only issue that I take when people date outside of their race is when they don't require or care if that person embraces or respects the culture that they are intermingling into. Um, and I live in Miami, so a lot of that happens here. And I, I just don't understand how you want to be with someone that wants you, but wants nothing to do and doesn't respect your culture and your people and you know, that just doesn't make sense to me. I have no idea why you want to be with that person. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to say was that I think with, with people dating outside of their race, um, 
I genuinely think that these preferences, like people say, oh, they have preferences, whatever. I, I believe that majority of preferences um, are programming of some sort, whether it was through your family, um, whether it was what's on television, what we see every day. I think that a good portion of preferences that people quote unquote have um, are, is really programming of some sort. So that says a lot for why people date outside of their race. But um, I genuinely think majority of the time people want to be around people that look like them. So, you know, a it's culture. a percentage and people bring up a lot, you know, black men dating outside of their race, blah, blah, blah. But it's like less 87 percent of black men marry black women. So it's a small percentage uh, of that happening. So but it's so focused because that's it, like like, you know, something that Mr. Pookie was getting to saying that, like, it does seem that when certain resources are attained, and those people are in the public eye, we see that more. But for the average everyday yes, person, sir. black women are married. Most black men are married to black women, so it's really not a big thing. But um, again, it's the programming. I've never seen. I mean, the Cheerios commercials. I mean, really, they're getting out of control. Like seriously, like every single commercial I see, it is uh, an ambiguous looking child and parents of different cultures. So it's it's become a big part of the programming in the last ten years, and um, that number at 87 percent probably was higher. I don't know for a fact, but just per my assumption, probably was higher prior to that programming. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what I think so far. So let's just say, for example, I'm a black guy and I'm raised in the suburbs and I always went to white schools like my nephews have. And um, I was never raised in a the hood. They listen to rock and roll and they marry a white girl. Is your culture still based off of what you look like or is it based off of where you were raised and how you understand the world? Kayla. I think she might have froze. Or anybody for that matter, because she said based off of, you know, she's purely based off of what you look like. And so is your culture based off of what it is that you look like or is it based off of your your experiences in life growing up? It's based on your experiences growing up. And maybe because I said I say this because growing up in the islands, you'll see people of different shades. You'll see white people, dark skin, Spanish people. So we're not gonna judge a white person and be like, oh yeah, they're strictly white. Their culture, they're gonna have Cruzian culture in them. So it's not basically what they look on the outside. I wouldn't judge, oh, that white person is strictly white or that black person is this, this. No, it's not, I don't believe that i don't know what she was i was confused and kind of what she was saying well that would just completely debunk everything that she just said no because the, the thing that we're having with this conversation and q i hear you because i've been to jamaica and i know that the owner of sandals is not black he's not he's not jamaican he's dutch right but his but his children and he himself and um so on and so forth they speak patois and they're accepted because it's one blood right that's what they believe one blood in jamaica but she I said she it. had a problem with no, A, B, and C based you, off of you, how somebody wouldn't respect what her cult, what the culture is of the person that they married. And so what I'm asking is- Sorry, you were lagging, so I didn't get it. Can you repeat the question? I said, what if a person that was black, like my nephews, were born in an environment where they weren't raised around- majority black people, but they were raised around majority white people and they listen to rock and roll. And the only thing that they've ever known is culturally something that's different from what you may have experienced growing up from a cultural perspective, right? And how it is that you align yourself. And then they wind up marrying a white girl. Is the culture by which they subject themselves to based off of what they look like, or is it based off of their life's experiences? Um... It's, it's in tandem, I believe. Uh, and proximity has a big part of, to do mm -hmm. with it as well. Because if that is all that is around you, then that makes sense. Like if there's literally only you and three black girls that go to your school, like you can't just get with one of them because there's only three black girls at the school. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, but as far as like culturally, I, 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 um, that's pro it's programming. You being in that white environment, that's not your culture. That's not your environment. You listening to their music, that's not your music. That's not your culture. You're being programmed because you're being placed into this 
cult, this other culture based on your proximity. So it makes sense to me. And those are the, those times make the most sense to me. You know what I'm saying? What's your but culture? Can you, just, can you describe your culture for me so I can better understand it? Hmm? Can you describe your culture that you own so I can better understand what's not mine and what's yours? No, I'm speaking in terms of white people. You said white people, white people versus black people is what I'm I use an example to try to figure out whether or not it was based off of what you look like or based off of your life experiences. So I'm trying to understand what is your culture since you said that's not their culture. What's yours? Can you give me some insight? I believe that your culture is is I mean, you don't you don't get to choose it. It's 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 based on who you are. Um, regardless if you practice what's within it or not, like you can just because, okay, you can be Asian and from Thailand or whatever, and you can go to a white school and listen to rock music and blah, blah, blah. That doesn't separate, that doesn't make you less Asian. That doesn't make your culture less Thai. You are still like, you are, have adapted to another culture of another people. So yes, you've been programmed into this other culture and that's totally fine. That's what happens to a lot of people when they come to America and the immigration and all of that. So it makes sense to me why people, you know, date interracially because proximity, if you live in Oklahoma. <laughs> so can you give me an example of It makes sense to me why you married white. white. It makes sense to me. <laughs> so it come, it come back to the question. You still didn't answer the question. What is your culture? So I can better understand how, how people? certain people need to align. Yeah, what's your culture? What does well, that look like? Um, Paint that picture for me, please. Well, okay. So there's two there's two levels to it. I'm American. So there's that first, right? There's a there we Americans are, it doesn't matter what race you are, you go to another country, they know if you're American, right? Then you have our subculture, which me being I'm black, African American. Um, and indigenous, and then I can go into the, the history of my culture and how my people came to this country for me to be the, my main culture, which is American. So every person is different, but I am, I am of African descent and American. So there is African American does have its own culture that was created that black people created here in this country based on what we brought here from our homeland. And we, you know, we created something. So that's what we have here now. So as a black person, there is a certain culture that uh, is expected. That doesn't necessarily mean that has to be There's. It's just like when black girls say, like, I don't know how to braid. And it's like, what? Like, all oh, just because you're black doesn't mean you know how to braid. But that is something culturally that is that is a foundation of our culture. So it is assumed that that is something that you know of and that you know about. You know what I'm saying? So I think that answers it. But. If not, then that's what you get. I don't know. That's what I get. Yeah. What? Because we tried three times. You know, first stop, second stop, third stop. We got to get out. For the first time, you froze place. up. We, we came to the home So place. we had to come back to it to rewind. All right. The second time, you didn't even yes, answer sir. the question. And then the third time, you actually added a bunch of nonsense that didn't even mean anything because it still does not align with based off of what you look like. It's based off of where it is that you were raised and what you normalized. So none of it made sense. So all three times, strike out. Okay. We can move on. I'm not going to belabor the point. You don't get it. You don't get it. It's okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this too, because I, I definitely agree that you should align yourself with people of good character and it's, especially with dating. Um, you can have a preference, but when you say I will never date anyone black and you black is like, okay, you know, why, why say black or white, just date someone that likes you. That's a good person, good character, good morals. Like I totally get that. Um, but when we speak about like schools and, you know, proximity, I think matters where, you know, there's nobody black. So who am I going to date? It's going to have to be someone that's majority there. But speaking about me that has gone to an all white school that lived in an all white neighborhood and was the only black person. It, it's uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable for me being the only black girl being looked at. And I had different body shape, different hair, like different things than all the other white girls. And I didn't speak like them. Um, it made me feel a certain type of way where I would I needed to be around someone that looked like me. And I think that's a legit thing that kids go through. Adults go through sometimes. That's why I went to an HBCU, because I wanted to be surrounded by people that look like me for the first time. And when I was, yeah. it made me feel comfortable. Like I finally felt like, whew, you know, I'm not the oddball. 
like I, my hair wearing braids and people not coming in trying to touch my hair because it it was a different texture than everybody in my school. It felt comfortable and it felt it feels comfortable sometimes being around my people. I can't tell you I go out, everyone's white and I see somebody black and I get a little head nod. Okay, and the head nod is back. I mean, it's like okay, I see you, sis. I, love it. I see you, bro. Like <laughs> it's it is a comfortability when you are mm -hmm. around your people. And I think a lot of cultures feel that way. I don't think that's anything bad. It just is what it is. I'm really struggling, man. Because I, I get it. I, I know I'm older than y'all. And uh, I'm just... Really, I, nobody knows how old you are, bro. I know. <laughs> nobody <laughs> knows. I know. I know. You are he, like he Tommy. Know, I know, I'm, I'm saying, I'm as saying, far as real as age, he is like Tommy from Martin, bro. No, This is a fact. Anything, <laughs> this is... Really can say anything, bro. No, no, Rilla is, is literally an <laughs> eternal from Marvel. We he Nobody knows his age. He just keeps saying he's so much older than the rest of us. We have no idea what you are. No, the only reason why I say that is because in the chat, when I make certain references, people try and gas and so on and so forth but I really, no, you I know, know this whole concept where we having this discussion around cultures and people aligning with certain people and people dating outside of their races and this then a third is the first thing we got to acknowledge is that I, and I hear you at times you say hey you know if you go to UK they saying the same thing or if you're in these streams bro the internet has made it it's democratized everything so I can see like, I'm not on Twitch. I'm not in these games. I hate playing games. I don't play games, but um, <laughs> I do. I hate fucker. it. I hate it. But but shout out to the gamers. Salute to the gamers. Um, but oh, I have access to those same experiences. Matter of fact, I'm I'm in a rabbit hole right now um, with Thailand. So so I, I understand what you're saying in terms of who? Thailand. 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 Bangkok. The, the place Thailand. YouTube. Oh, Thailand. You're doing Thailand. Thailand. Okay. I didn't know what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, was, I thought you know. meant a person. Oh, okay. Thailand. <laughs> I thought you said Thailand. Like Thailand. Yeah. I thought you were talking you about the rapper Thai Maybe it was just <laughs> they going in on you. Money. I mean, I, I don't <laughs> care. Bro. I'm, just, I'm waiting for. I'm waiting. <laughs> the hell. I'm trying something different. Courtney. <laughs> So really? when, when, Mr. when Mr. Pookie, when, when you and I were building, sir, and we were talking about, you know, like Atlanta specifically, and you were talking about people who may be of a certain ethnicity and culture, but then when they get to a certain status, they take, they go experience different things. And what I'm telling you is that's why I brought up the nightclub promoters, because we know who owns at least what's promoted to black communities in Atlanta specifically is Eritreans. And they don't take their money and resources nowhere near outside of their community. They could not like each other seven ways to Sunday. And at the end of the day, they're going to get money together. And then they'll argue when they go back to wherever it is, whatever side of Atlanta they from. They align with each other because of their nationality, because of their shared experience. They bond over that. What happens in America is we say... <laughs> Well, now we're saying, well, we're multicultural, so we don't need to have a shared experience. We don't need to have a, a shared bond, right? Because we we all don't agree on our shared experience in America. So there's no need for me to align with you based on that. And, and again, Anton, even as a believer, I agree with you. And I think we conflate in two different things. I'm not saying I'm not cool with people who don't look like me. I'm not saying I don't have friends that that look like me, but I do have an express preference for who I choose to deal with, who I choose to create legacy and celebrate life with. That's different. So when I say we don't care who people date outside, like we really don't care. But there is an expressed opinion on creating and maintaining our legacy as a people. That's all I'm saying. So I don't understand. Right. I'm, I'm just struggling because... In my neighborhood, so let me take it away from Dearborn, Michigan and Chaldeans, and let me say, if I go to 107th in Michigan and I go to the deli shop that the Arabs own, right, they'll come in our community, build businesses, and they don't take those resources and spread it amongst us. They don't sit up there and give back to our schools. They don't sit up there um, um, and hire people and pay them uh, fair wages, for where they work in our community. 
But they will knock down our women, though. They'll do that. Hey, real, real quick. And, hold um, on, hold on. Real, let me, let me did, finish, Mr. Pookie. This out, though, but you, to your you, point. Hold on. You switched your name out, Mr. Pookie. Let me finish real quick. Yes, sir. Yeah, do don't you finish. finish. You've been going for like an hour. You know what I'm saying? I got what you're saying. I'm telling you. I got what you're saying. Can I put up? Can I? Bro, can no, I go ahead. You gotta... <laughs> All right, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, and you still gonna call me Mr. Pookie. That's disrespectful. You see, I changed my name. I'm playing with you, bro. I got... wait, wait. It's a joke. It's a I'm joke. Look, this is the thing. That... This is the thing that I think. I that watch this. See, we're talking about two different things. When we're talking about culture, it is a byproduct of a tribe. Right. So if you take your cousin and you, you, your whatever the, the analogy was using and you move them to the whitest, matter of fact, screw that. How about you move them to Afghanistan? Right. No matter what his typical black culture is, he's still going to be whopping his ass with his hand because that's part of what consists of that tribe, which other culture things play a factor in that. So all I'm trying to get you to understand is by where you live at. Your tribe, where you live at, it would dictate a lot about you. It don't matter. You can be green and it doesn't matter if you're a green man living in Greenland. And then you're going to be trying to date green chicks because that's all the thing going to be available to you. Come back, Kay. Come back, Kay. <laughs> and, that, and, and I'm saying that point that you cannot see here to find what a person going to date, what a person, how you going to know tribes kind of identify that and if even though it's something that's typical of black culture it doesn't matter when that guy never experienced that he got white girls accessible to him so now he gonna like white girls i think somebody brought up a point the music my kids don't listen to the shit i listen to because guess what they have access to it um, they friends listen to rock and all that kind of crazy stuff so they listen to it too what I'm going to tell my kids, you need to be black. And I, I, and if somebody brought up a point, though, um, Court, um, Courtney Michelle, my um, my kid's mom had, my son is super smart, right? Super fucking smart. His mom said that she want him to go to a HBCU because she want him to have that black experience, right? Mm -hmm. And then she really believed this in her fucking head. Like, okay, so I said, you want him to go to a subpar school. And I'm just being honest. Well, he already. He's getting phone calls from colleges. You want to send him to a subpar school to get a so-called black experience? It's subpar like hell to all the other schools you have <laughs> access to and what, what his mom in her mind, what she's doing, like I'm saying, look. Can you, what are some of the schools? Okay, what, like, what are the schools? Like, so, what, what, what schools what specifically? Yeah. yeah. What schools specifically are you talking about? Almost all of these girls like 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 went to an so HBCU, so that's I, I, why I they don't hear y'all. Y'all, like, y'all, 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 If you want to call Howard subpar, you're... Time, if you're want to call Spellman subpar, Morehouse subpar, lost, lost, and lost. So those are not subpar schools. At, so depending on what even the schools that were really hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And okay, depending on the particular about. school that you're going to, whether it's for nursing and engineering, where they have one of the highest rates of graduates, period, some of them are HBCUs. So before we call a school subpar, I was what are we comparing it to? What right. school? Yeah, are you doing? Are you let's talking about the like data? And let's look at the graduation rate of those particular schools as well. So I don't know. Just because it's a black school doesn't mean it's subpar. All right, all right. Now, now I, I'm, I'm gonna answer your question. I don't care about the graduation rates. Okay, but like what school? So what is it based on? What data? Y'all gonna, gonna let him answer, answer or y'all gonna try to answer our question? About it. So my son, he's going to school. He's going to school for finance, right? Google the top schools of finance. And tell me one HBCU that's in the top 10. 
So know. yes, you said, I, can, I can tell you nursing. I can tell you engineering. I but I didn't say he's going to school for nursing. That's what I'm asking. Wait, wait, hold on, wait. See this. Hold this on, is an issue, time, right? Yeah, one at a time. This is an issue where we're dealing with, right? If you looking out for your child, do you want the best for your child, or you want the best for you? Cause see, my kid's mom, she wasn't thinking about him. She was thinking about what she wanted for him. Because he only went to, he'd been going to white schools all his life. Most of his friends is white. She want him to be in a position that me and her was in. To be around some, no, that's insane. You will send him to a subpar school in his field of finance. He's not going to school to be a nurse. You will send him a subpar school. And your reason for doing that is because you want him to get a black experience. That's a fair point. He so got yeah, a point. That, that, no, you said the top you got a point. Okay, so there's there's probably like 2,200 universities across the country. I, I don't know if that's still the accurate number. Yes, sir. So you're telling me if they're not in the top 10 that you found on Google, they're subpar. <laughs> he told you to Google right, it. Say this, say this, say this, no, no, because say that's this, the context he gave. Scale, that's the data scale. he said. He hey, said he hey, typed scale. in Google. Top right, scale, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for you, right? So my question, are you saying okay, that I'm, if I'm, it doesn't I'm, come up? I got it for you. I got it for you, right? I got it for you, right here. I Say you had a son. No, no, he I just want to, to know, school. yes okay. or no. No, listen. Say you had a son. He okay. wanted to go to school to be a lawyer. He got offers from Morehouse and Harvard. What would you tell your son to do? Again. <laughs> no, I'm not going to answer your question because I just asked you a question and you decided that you're going to ask me a question. So, what? No. <laughs> You don't want to answer my question, then, then it's okay. All right, go ahead, repeat the question, ma'am. I'm sorry. If, based <laughs> on what you said, you mm -hmm. said, if you, if out of all the universities in the country, you put in the top 10 that came up on Google, are you saying that if it's not in the top 10, that it's a subpar school? No, what I'm saying in the field of finance. In the field of finance, if it's not in the top 10, are you saying no, it's a subpar school? No, if it's not in the top 10, once you start getting there, you got, you know what I'm saying, you got a vice, you got everything. Then it, it, well, that's why I gave you the analogy. Because it's, it, it, see, I'm answering your question. That's why I gave you the analogy. So you said your, your answer was no. What? Your answer was no. I just want to make sure I'm clear. It, 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 it's no. Okay. All right. Okay, so then now, the, the thing I was saying, oh, wait, wait, hold up, hold up. Because the thing I was saying is, is you going to do what's best for your child or is you going to push your emotions and your values on that child and therefore put him at a disadvantage? Because I don't care who you is. You can be, you can be in Douglas High School in Atlanta, the most hooded school in the world. And I went there. And guess what? You had a, a scholarship to go to Harvard and you had a scholarship to go to Morehouse. Even oh, the most ratchet Harvard. first will tell you to go to Harvard. We're, we're comparing Ivy Leagues with non-Ivy Leagues. That's a no, different I'm thing. I'm comparing opportunity. Okay. It's opportunity. See, all I said was I want the best for my son and I would not hold him back just because I wanted to give him a so-called black experience. Okay. Hell, I, I, I can swim in front Ivy of BGT and get a black experience all day. Okay. Does your, does your son have the grace to go Ivy League while you're talking about Harvard? Right. Say that again. Why would you? Does your Harvard? son have the grades and the test scores to be Ivy League, i.e. Harvard? While we're, we're talking about HBC the top ten schools, being, right? Can you being so hard? Well, is are they reaching out to him? Does he have the grades to do Harvard? That's not what he's saying, y'all. I'm, that was a, I'm a, not. I didn't say that's what he said. I'm asking a question. Asking well, Kayla, question. Kayla never answered his question in the first place. Mm -hmm. After he answered her, she still deflected and didn't answer. See, I, I, I didn't. I, I, I didn't deflect. Thing. I told him I wasn't answering. You oh, wasn't okay. answering my question. Why not? Why? If your son had I don't opportunity even to go to question. Harvard, my priority was my question. Right, okay, Logic. What was the question again? I say, if your son have an opportunity, he got a scholarship from Harvard. And also, he got a scholarship from Morehouse. What so would you think your son was 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 grades was scholarship worthy? 
Why? Why is she not answering the question? You gotta, you gotta ask her the question. Yeah, he's I think just going on a <clears throat> Hold on, hold on, Kay. Hold on, hold on, Kay. We gotta deal with Kayla first, then we gonna come right to you. I promise you. I okay. promise that I'm coming to you right next. I promise you. I got you. Mm-hmm. Is something wrong okay. with your audio, Kayla? <laughs> <laughs> no, my audio is great, actually. I double checked it. Hey, hey, Do you care to answer the question, ma'am? I asked him a question. Did his no, son have test scores worthy of no. no, no, because we're using an example, and now y'all want to go down rabbit holes. You can ask me another question. You can ask me another question. And now it's another example. Now it's another example. When no, I've been using the same one. I said, if your son so why are we having this conversation? does your child have, you talking about opportunity, do they have the opportunity to go to Harvard? Yes, I said if they had a scholarship to Harvard and a scholarship to Morehouse as a mom that's looking out for the best interest of their child, where would you advise them to go? I'll probably advise them to go to Harvard, obviously. Harvard is an Ivy League school. And that was my only point. (laughs) The best option available. That's it. It's not about the Okay, again, oh, you're making well, it about the best option available, and I'm talking about the best option available for your child. Yeah, yeah we can talk was, about this was, hypothetical, we, but can your child get into Harvard? If they can't, then what, what like, what do we, you know what I'm saying? The, the, just based on the percentage no, of people that, what you're that are actually eligible, that Harvard is actually looking for, is so small. Yeah, right. Okay, like, okay come back. I'm, I'm coming to you, Kay. Well, here, I forgot about you. Come the, back, Kay. Here, here's the thing. He, you were saying coming, something hypothetical. Right to you. You were saying something hypothetical, but then she was getting more specific, talking about your son, since you said you brought it up, your family, you know, his mom talking about subpar schools. And we're like, OK, <laughs> when you say subpar, it's kind of degrading when you're talking about an HBC is subpar. So I don't like the terminology. However, does your son make the grades to get into an Ivy League school? That was the question specifically for you. It doesn't matter. If he well, makes well, 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 it, well, here's an example. To do with the point I made. No, we, okay. no, y'all are missing his point. We're not We're missing, missing the point. It's two made. questions. Hold on, y'all. One at a time. One at a time, y'all. It's two questions. But what is that? And now we're asking a whole different question to make a whole nother point. Yes. That's no, exactly my, what's my, the yeah, example right. I used earlier when I used my son as an example is I was saying that he wants to go to school for finance. Once he get that that opportunity, I will we will look at the list and we will pick the best school available. We would not pick it based off a black experience. That would not be one of the criteria for us picking that school. We would pick the best school available. Correct. That's why yes. I use the Harvard and Morehouse analogy saying that, hey, would you pick Morehouse? Will you know he got an option for a better school? Okay. Well, you didn't say that at the beginning. I said it a gazillion times. Well, this, well, he this, said it. He okay. said it a couple of times. Thank you, Island. Let me talk to Mr. Logic. So, <laughs> Ms. Logic, what we heard was this, and Kayla, get tell me if I'm wrong. He was like, he she wants him to have a, a black experience, and mm-hmm. you said, well, I don't care about him going to a subpar school. And and it, two things can happen at the same time. Yes. One of those top 10 schools in finance can also be an HBCU. So he can still right. have a black experience and go to an amazing school. That's the point that I believe we were trying to make. Can I, and can and I you can also question? go to a white school and it be a subpar school. To ask cool. Why is it so important? There are HBCUs experience? that are better no, than No, no, because you know me. I just like country. to cut through the bullshit. Cut you through can the go to a very white, the, bright school and it can be subpar know, education. So I'm going to act like Now I'm going to give you another real life experience. So I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to knock this upside the head, right? Don't do it, Logic. I w- yes, I'm finna too. I was an uh, Army ROT instructor for University of North Carolina and for a, a, a um, North Carolina a t right? It was no comparing the two. Half of my students that was in ROTC as freshmen, before they made it to their junior year, they got pregnant. So now if you want to get into the real, we can get into the real. And then the thing about this is that if you go to UNC, it's just that they just had a different level of responsibility because of they tribe held them to a different standard than North Carolina A&T. It was no tribe. So not just pregnancy rate, 
The party mm-hmm. it was it, I, I don't understand how these kids did it, but they party. And look, I'm gonna give you another example. They party and they was having orgies, unprotected sex on both ends. And you know, only one end came out with kids. So, like I said, that black experience got a lot of daggers to come with it, and I don't want my son in it. It is a subpar environment. Well, it definitely is not, being that I graduated from an HBCU and I didn't get pregnant and I wasn't in orgies and I don't know anyone that was in orgies in an HBCU. So it's not subpar. As a matter of fact, the men that I know, the women that I know that are doctors and lawyers also graduated from an HBCU. As a matter of fact, the majority of black people, the majority majority of doctors come out of HBCUs that are black. The majority of, of lawyers, black come from HBCUs. So HBCUs are actually amazing for black people that go because they are the ones that are pushing out doctors, lawyers. But are y'all discounting what his experience, what he just but said? That's just his experience. To... That's not my experience. So well, we hold can on. fight well, hold on. on You experience. didn't even hear the question. You didn't even hear the question. No, are y'all didn't. discounting his experience just because y'all went to HBCUs? Because two things could be true at the same no, time. No, you're absolutely right. No, we're not. We're just giving our experience as well. I'm just pushing back on the subpar. I'm not going to accept that. That's but but see, saying. y'all get. It seems like y'all get. It can be. He could do whatever he want with his son. But what I'm not going to do is <laughs> is accept you saying that HBCUs are subpar. I'm not going to. It's not about a but Do you understand what he's saying? I mean, listen, the one one thing that Kay has brought to this show, and I will give her the utmost credit forever, is that this is something that you can research. When he used his example and then he gave the context about finance specifically, this is not something that can be disputed. You can literally go and find the information yourself. What are we talking? What does feelings have I'm to do with the about fact? my experience? Hold on, hold on. But this show. ain't got nothing to we do with your our experience. experience and this our don't opinions. have anything to do we with your experience. Data, and your experience, I don't, I don't care. You, you're not going to over talk me because like, I was just talking. I was making my point. I was very patient. But the point that I'm making is that we don't care about your experience because that was not the example by which we were making our by which he was making his point. He was making his point to illustrate that. In the larger scheme of things, what we identify as culture has no relevance on what it is that we're trying to solve when it comes to getting the results that we want, especially for the people that we love. We don't care about how you feel. The only thing that matters is the results. And if you look at the facts according to how it is that he placed his example and then the context that he gave, it is absolutely 100% true regardless of what your experience is. So what difference do it make? What your experience? Listen, I think I, I married a, I the most phenomenal black woman on earth, in my opinion. Does that mean that there is not black women for the streets? It don't matter about what my experience is when it comes to the larger point that's being made in the context by which he's using it. Now, if I want to make a different point that's completely separate from that, that's a whole nother point. But you can't use it to dispute what it is that he's saying because it's something that you can research and it's a fact. Right. But he just but said, I asked him specifically, on to make other if it's not in the top 10, does it make it subpar? He said no. So he's saying what I'm saying, which is just because it's not in the top 10 does not mean it's a subpar school. And I'm not going to accept you saying that just because it's an HBCU, it's a subpar school. So he's he's helped me made my point, regardless of his context, the point that I'm making. Well, so here's the thing, too, that, because that. we've moved on from finance and then he started talking about his experience and how he feels. So that's how he we uses came experience to, to make a point about culture. But, well, but what he said was I have a question, Courtney. School, Hold on, let me finish this and then you can ask that. What he said when he was talking about when he was in ROTC teaching in two different schools and the, he talked about them having sex and being pregnant. And then he said HBCUs is a subpar education. He went on from talking about finances, talking about specifically black schools. And so he talked about his experience. I believe what I was saying and what Kayla was saying, well, okay, that's his experience. We're not negating his experience. But that's not our experience being that I'm a graduate of. I was there. I lived on campus for three years. Did you graduate in finance, though, Courtney? I'm sorry. But, Courtney, did you? The question, okay, but was he wrong? I didn't hear you. I said, do you have a finance degree? No, I don't. So, what are we talking about? Does that mean people that don't have finance degrees? 
Let me repeat again. Oh, yeah, what I, I do said. one at a time so they can right. hear us, y'all. We got the finance. We moved on from that. What he started talking about was his particular experience as far as teaching ROTC at a white school and a black school. And then he said the black school, it was subpar. The only thing that I was saying was that I'm not going to sit here and say HBCUs are subpar. When you say subpar, the definition is below average. HBCUs are not below average schools. And that's all I'm saying. Oh, I have a question. Oh, hold on. What, you got a what question. he said, what he said about black colleges, the orgies, even though you guys didn't encounter that or deal with that, you know there was other people doing that. Come on. We're not no going to be, that. I didn't that, go to a black college. Is that exclusive to that. black schools? Saying, hold on, hold on, okay. I mean, Kayla, hold on. Negate what he said, and his he's right about that part. Like, even though you wasn't yeah. the one doing the orgies, getting pregnant, there were plenty of people in, in HBCUs doing that. So, and there were yeah, like, and no so one what? said, like, no one, no one's, I just, I literally just said, no one is negating what he said. What he is saying is he was given his experience. We're just giving ours. It's another experience because I don't want to be on a platform where he's saying it's HBCUs are subpar. And being that I'm a graduate, I will not have that uh, narrative out there. HBCUs are not okay. subpar. Not. That's it. So if you so have, he can have his experience, I can have mine as well. So if you had to go to, if your son or daughter had to go to a school for a finance, it was Harvard or Morehouse. Which one would you choose? I will look at this. I will look at the school to see as far as the graduation rate in finance and which is a better, which one is a better school for finance. Well, okay, we, so we all know. I mean, we can really look it up simple. right now, and, and, but, yeah, we, and we know so that no HBCU was in the top 10, 15, yeah. 20, 25 of finance. And now that we know yeah. that, would you make a decision to send them to Harvard? Yeah, or whatever to school is offering a scholarship, we really? will, and he wants to do finance, we will go to the one giving him a scholarship for finance. No one is saying that. We get it. The issue that I had was calling HBCU subpar. That was it. Because there are graduates of finance at HBCUs that, that work on Wall Street, yeah, we'll that work from Merrill Lynch, Lynch, that work on executive boards for PNC. Cool, we get like it. We get like, it. Cool. I, I got one thing. If, yeah, if, 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 point, if we just talk. pull it up right now and there's no HBCU in the top 25, in the field of finance, is my example correct? Sure, for finance. Right. But then you went down no, the rabbit hole and started talking about party. It. So, so it's not that. Why y'all won't just say yes and then leave it at that? Yeah. So I what you're saying is what I said. Hey, 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 not if they're going to go hey, down hey, a rabbit hole hey. about parties and pregnancy and, and orgies and all this extra stuff. Oh, that's like icing you, on the cake for me, though. What I'm just saying. I'm saying before we even get to that part of it, though, if you cannot find one of them schools in the top 25, and my son was to go to that school, would that not be a subpar school? No, I just asked you earlier. If it's not in the top, is it subpar? You said no. You said it. Oh, well, I, did, I wasn't catching what you said then, because I don't know. Because you, you be confusing me then when you you ask me these questions when I ask you something. So I apologize. But in the aspect of the top 25, so everybody it. agree that if it's outside the top 25, then guess what it is? <sighs> we'll consider that subpar. If you got a top That's 25, right. hey, you're a rapper. You're not in the top 100. Will we call you a subpar rapper? But how, out of how, do you, do you know the definition of subpar? It's below oh, average. All right, I'm done. Yeah, so below average, average would right, mean so. it has to be underneath right. 50%. Right. Like words matter. Yeah, subpar is below you know. average. If yeah, it's right. in the top it 100, and there's ten thousand schools. It's not. It's still not subpar. It would have to be F rated to be subpar. So we saying we acknowledge that there are the A plus schools, okay. but for you to say A minus or B or B minus is subpar, that's not what subpar is. Subpar is below F. And the thousands of schools in the middle, they're not all subpar. Obviously, the ones closer to the bottom, but the but just Ivy League, and you're saying stuff under Ivy League, like Northwestern or other schools are subpar just because they're not Ivy League. What? I want you to tell somebody at Northwestern that their education is a subpar. Like right, there you go. It's not. It's if you just, guys are just top 10. if you guys are just tuning in, welcome to La Peef. Let's talk. It's uh, definitely getting a little bit of crowded. Crowded in y'all mouths right now. I just made that shit what? up. That shit was dope. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, that didn't sound 
Okay. Yeah, don't make sure you guys hit the <laughs> like button. Also, subscribe to the channel and definitely see Green Gang in the chat. Make sure you guys hit that join button if you want to become a member and go green. Again, hit that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel. I like what's going on right here, man. We get some different perspectives. Uh, I guess we're going to agree to disagree, right? You know what it is. What's up? Okay. We can do that. Rilla. We can do that. Rilla. Rilla, are you asleep? <laughs> But can't, you can't disagree with it. Good morning. Yeah, I'm over this already. Gorilla. <laughs> okay. I I ain't know I had a time watch on me on how long I can speak, so I got to watch how long I'm speaking. Oh nah, lord. No, nah, no, nah, you all good. Uh, we're gonna move on to our next topic of the night, which is uh, I just had a thing up here. This is about spiritual whistleblower. This is where I got this from. Spiritual whistleblower. I want to give her credit. I don't know if you guys heard about her. You guys frowning up about it. It sounds like some kinky shit, right? <laughs> what? I have no oh, idea. I guess maybe not. Anyhow, this lady right here. Oh, um, narcissist. Uh, narcissist. Okay. This lady right here. She oh said, do God. not trust. <laughs> oh, you know, like it. Do not trust the man's mother when you first meet her. Do not trust the man's mother. When you first meet her, some uh, I don't want to play the video, but I'm gonna just highlight some of her points. She said, "Women's women need to rise up. The way a man treats his woman is a reflection of how his mother treats herself, and how she allows other men to treat her. Just because you meet her, speaking about the guy's mother, doesn't mean shit. Don't trust her when you first meet her. She's gonna be on her best behavior." fake and phony and she's going to size you up to see if anything to see if you're tr anything trifling like she is or if you are sweet and can be played because she has trained her son to use and abuse and play good women she will also side with that toxic ex-girlfriend wife baby mama etc that's a piece of shit just like she is so she's advising people do not trust a man's mother when you first meet her, what are you guys' thoughts and why? Start with you, Kay. Mm hmm. I see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's not what I was doing. I was looking at these things that I have. But anyway, so um, <laughs> you thought I was texting. I'm not. No, I didn't um, say anything. I just <laughs> said, I, 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 just said I seen you. I, you don't know what I seen. No, I know what you thought you saw. No, I, I seen that, uh, that roach on that wall back there. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> They're in case. Anyhow, go ahead. I know you're trying to get a little time to think, but go ahead. No, um, while you were talking, I was thinking like, this sounds like, you know, an issue that she maybe has had or maybe has seen other people having. I do not agree at all with that bit of advice. Um, I think sometimes people give advice from a place like they care, but it comes from a place of like, being jaded or you know they've seen so many things and these things have happened to them so like even though they might have someone's best interest in mind it comes from a negative space based on what they've seen and what they've gone through i don't think that's always the best advice i mean maybe for some people in a similar situation we did that at the same time q <laughs> yeah. we're both like um but yeah i don't as I was listening, I was like, what? Um, everyone is definitely not like that. I don't even think that's the majority of people. Like, I think that's a very strange <laughs> uh, perspective to have on the situation. If someone told me that, I would be like, tell me more. And I would be there oh, for yeah. them. I don't mm -mm. To me. Like, but that wouldn't be my own <laughs> thought process when it comes to something like that like yeah people like to project things that they've seen that they've you know experienced but you got to realize that when you're coming from that place that's not the best for everyone that you might be advising okay real i'm coming to you next hold on i'm gonna go to really next i got you out girl q Rilla, do not trust a man's mother when you first meet her from a gas perspective is that true what are your thoughts and why Man, this woman is crazy, bro. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm saying literally. Um, and hopefully we don't get a strike on this. But uh, wait, hold on, hold do on. it. 
I'm, I'm, slow, slow it down. Think about what you're no, 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 say. No, 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 not that. I'm saying <laughs> even for what I just said because you know people in the chat that may have followed her. You know, if it, certain things when you go down this rabbit hole, man. Certain things come up in the algorithm. So anything Kevin Samuels, she had this whole campaign against Kevin Samuels, and that's why mm-hmm. I said narcissist because that's what she's on. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting that Kay, I know for a fact, has no idea who this woman is. The whistle has not seen not one video. She is a psycho, and is spot on and on in terms of her assessment. Mm-hmm. Um, ladies, I definitely have no idea who the person is. I got you, Kay. I got you. Yes. Hold, on, Hold on, brother. You, you said she's spot on. K was spot on. Oh, spot on. Okay. I thought you said whistle. Okay. Can you say the name again? Spiritual whistleblower. Do not look her up. Spiritual what? Spiritual. Oh, no, no, that's like her actual name. That's her name. That's that's what I was wondering, Kayla. Don't worry, I'm not going to look it up. Okay, you guys are getting a little bit too excited about that name. I'm not. So, excited. I mean, it's no, weird. you were the uh, Go ahead, proceed, Rella. Go ahead. <laughs> yep. So, women, you're going to want to know. You're going to want to meet his mother. You're going to have a conversation with his mother. You're going to want to, like, you're going to want to, not only that, you're going to want to meet his father. Like, I think it's interesting that she, she has all these conversations around his mother and never has anything to say about his father, which lets me know when Kay was talking about projection, the type of men she was dealing with. Right? Because I just think it's out of all her videos, you never hear her say anything about the type of father that she met. Or the type of father that a woman should meet. But ladies, you're going to want to meet the mother. And you'll get some insight. I don't think you should, um, you know, fully um, make a judgment based on the character of the man's mother. Because, you know, as men, especially, you know, those of us who are raised, some of us who are, ra- or who are raised by women, like, there comes a point where you... You separate. So the character of your mother and who she is and how you associate with her is not necessarily a reflection of you all the time. You hear plenty of stories about dudes who are like, yo, my mom was this way, but I knew as a man I had to go that way. So you're going to want to meet that that man's mother. You're going to want to um, get an understanding of their relationship. And you have to make your own judgment, man. What this woman talking about is... So wait, y'all do care about what the man's mother is like? Yes. I mean, not care what oh, the yes, mother's man. like. I feel oh sorry, good. Are you talking to really? No, I I'm talking, like I'm talking like, to I don't the care what the man's mother is like, you <laughs> I'm talking talking to the women. Do y'all really care about the what the guy's mother is like? I care what the mother thinks about me. Like I'll ask like certain questions because my job is to impress the mother before I impress the dad. Yeah, that's right? what I was wondering. Yeah, because how I how I look at it, how a man treats his mom, like it shows how he will treat you, right? So I don't know what this lady's talking about. I think she's projecting and it, it doesn't look like she has a good mother in her household. Because if she had a mom that cared for her and loved for her, she would never talk about someone else's mom in that way. So it's definitely some type of trauma, some type of hurt. But no, I feel like my job is to impress impress the mom like because at the end of the day the mom is going to be in the the son's ear and you want to have that good relationship with the mom like you even if she might be like hot tempered ratchet ghetto or anything you still got to be cordial you still got to play it nice in, in that way so it really doesn't matter how the moms come off and you as a lady shouldn't check the mother that's for your husband to do don't don't ever disrespect the mom even if she's crossing the line in my eyes that's for the husband but no, nah, she ladies don't listen to whatever that that lady. She looked kind of old, about in her forties. <laughs> Definitely don't listen to her. So she looked like she's hurt. Honestly, what she's saying, but that's all. Mm. Hey, Anton, I know you were speaking on a little bit. Uh, what are your thoughts about it? Do not trust a man's mother when you first meet her. Amer- apparently, you played a clip that I'm not familiar with, and it's cool. I don't need to see it. No, but I ain't um, play nothing. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't play nothing. No, I just uh, I just kind of went over what she said. I ain't playing nothing no more. Oh yeah, I feel you on that. um, I didn't. I've never known um a woman to be vetting nope. a guy in any way, shape, or form based off of a parents at all. I didn't know that it was that was really the thing. I thought, like Q was saying, which I completely align with what she was saying. I thought the goal was to impress the mother 
or to impress the parents in a general sense, not use it in order to vet the vet the guy. I never knew that that was even a thing. So mm -hmm. um, I don't even know where trust in a man's mother would either even factor in even remotely into the conversation. But more or less, um, I think that more or less you should be trusting, trying to figure out whether or not you even trust the guy versus the mother. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, I think, because I heard that the video that she said and she was pretty much saying, don't trust the mother because, you know, once you're gone, she's going to be in uh, the son's ear talking sh sh shit about you. Um, it's going to go with the baby mama or the ex-girlfriend and pal around them to talk shit about you. So don't trust anything about the mother because. If she don't like you, she's going to make it very clear that she doesn't like you to the sun and talk shit about you. That's what she was pretty much saying. OK, so to that, though, mm -hmm. I would say that if you find a man that's more willing to align with his mother over his wife, that's a bigger issue. It's not whether or not the mother is going to. Let me tell you something. Wife? I thought it said first me. But OK, I, again, yeah, I don't I'm but it, but again, you anticipating what the relationship is going to be long term though, right? So if the dude is more willing to have a conversation with his mother instead of having a conversation with you and your mama's boy, that's a sign of things to come is what I'm saying. So when you take that into consideration, me as a man, my wife come first over everybody. My, my mother, my kid, everybody. She is the number one person over everybody. My father, my grandmother, my brothers, Everybody is her over everybody. I'm not sitting here. Listen, I will kick it with my mom. But when it comes to whether or not my wife make an assessment, it's my wife over my mama every day, all day, every day. So the real question y'all should be asking yourselves is, are y'all dealing with a mama's boy? It's not whether or not you believe the mother is whether or not the dude is the type of dude that's going to line or take into consideration what his mother say over the wife. Okay. Logic, let me get you in on this. Uh, do not trust a man's mother when you first meet her. What are your thoughts and why? All right. Y'all ain't going to like this, so don't take this personal. Uh, I absolutely agree with her because yes, on this panel already we saw an example that, you know what I'm saying, the, the, I want my women have these expectations for their kids or their sons. And then they can't look past their own expectations. Well, a man of gym to say, hey, look, you know what? I just want my son to be happy, blase, blase. But therefore, women, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They might lose the, you know what I'm saying, cool point. The chick might lose cool point because of she don't go, she didn't she didn't go to a historical black college. So I that's that's one of the things. They women carry more emotions with these decisions. And I'm just using it as an example. So I come on, it, it's an example. That well, women hold more emotions toward things. You know what I'm saying? A man just want to see. Hmm? Wait, wait, wait. You no. saying a man just want to see his son happy? A man want to see his son happy. Yeah. A man want to just say, look, I just want you to be happy. What? Well, what? That has nothing to do with parenting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on, hold on God dang. Look, I, wait, wait, I didn't wait, say wait, he wait, chill wait, out wait. the whole, you know. You said, wait, wait, wait. You said a man, fun. a father, <laughs> just want to see son, daughter, whatever. You telling me that the man just want to see the son happy or the daughter, whatever, happy? Yes, there's an aspect right here. It said that do not trust a man's mom, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. So now I, I went and I put it on the other shoe. That man would be like, hey, she nice. She look good. Blase, blase. You, hey, you happy with the son? Yeah, I'm happy with nah. her. Nah, nah. Not my no, dad. Bro, wait, wait, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish then. And then you can interject. You can interject. So like this, a man would not get so entangled in all that stuff. A man would not be seeing say, oh, you got to do this. 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 That's something that a woman would do. So I didn't look at the video, this but based on the context of what um, JR sent, I would absolutely agree. Don't trust her because of guess what? She going to push that woman is going to push her views on the daughter and on you. And if you don't fit them, them, them categories or whatever, then she going to hold it against you. That's just my opinion. Uh, what kind of father question. just want to see this? Let me ask him one thing. Let me what? ask him one thing. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Kay. That's insane. So, logic. Um, do you think that I'm just curious? 
Do you think the same thing applies regardless of race? Like, do you think that people shouldn't trust white moms, um, you know, Asian moms? Yes. Type of mom? Yes. I, I don't think race have nothing to do with it. Okay. I, I was just yes. asking. But, but if you look at the big spectrum of the things, just look at anything from weddings to anything like that involving kids and mothers and stuff like that. A man kicked back and be like, you know what? I really don't care. I asked you that because on what? two shows, two shows, the, the other one where we were talking about rappers, and I think I said something about what you were saying. Can, can y'all? And then now this one with the HBCUs and like talking about what happens with black women. I just wanted to know if you were, you know. You know what the problem with this whole argument is? I was wet though. Hold on. Hold I, on. I didn't get no, it. No, 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 no. Hold no, on, y'all. No, no, one at a time, y'all. One at a time. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Logic that completely flies in the face of exactly. Listen, I was backing you up on that whole last subject that we was talking about. It completely flies in the face of the thing that you advocating for, which you said with your son's mother when you saying, yo, we don't want to go about doing this based off of what his experience is going to be. But we want him to go based off of what the best school is, which is what's best for the son, not necessarily what will make him happy. Yes, but the thing is, the cunt, you, you're missing a point. The question is. Do not trust a man mother when you first meet her. So that is the question. So a father on the other but hand. But you added some additional context. No, 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 you, 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 you got to deal with the point, the no, question. No, I did. I'm, I, dealt, I answered okay. the question. When you answered the question, you added some additional context that you now asking me to look over. And I'm not. Why you add that context if you only want to answer the question then? What, what question did you have? You added the context about how fathers are with their son. Now you asking me not to address it. No, no, no. I'm giving you, I, I'm saying a man as me, when I first, uh, my son bring me, bring home a, a girl, right? And I'm going to talk to you. Do you like her or whatever? Blase, blase, this and this and this and this. They say, when you first met her, right? A woman on the other end, when you first met her, will have way higher expectations for that female. And we see this play out all the time. So no, for us to act like this don't no, exist, I don't I know think, what to say. I think that the father has higher expectations, not the mother. Can't, all day long. Go ahead, Courtney. Well, I, okay. Let me, I'm going to, can I bring it back to the context? Because I, <laughs> I think, it's, okay. So what the lady said, is when don't be excited about meeting your man's mother for the first time. Don't be excited about it because what the mother is going to do is be fake and phony to you. And the reason why is that because she's going to try to size you up. And she's going to try to size you up because these types of mothers tell and teach their sons how to either finesse a woman. So if you're sweet, she's going to tell her son how to finesse you. Or she's going to tell her son she's trifling like she is, and she's going to get all her the exes and the baby mamas to attack her. So that's what she's saying. Don't trust um, the mother because the mother is going to figure out who you are and use that against you to and tell the son back, yeah, you can finesse her or you can do this. So that's what she was saying. It depends on the type of son that she got. If the son is a dude that has no expectations and he just a trash a son she just happy to get this that this dude getting a girl and get married off like if the possibility of getting married and the son is just a weak a weak beta son she just happy that this dude is getting married off in a general sense the only time that you start to hear that is when it's a single mother right when you got these mom huh, these 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 mom saying. girlfriends it's a completely different conversation because to a larger extent, the son is participating and playing a role in the mom's life as like as like a husband. Mm -hmm. Then she's going to be a little bit more, you know, be a little bit more scrutiny. But it has nothing to do with the girl itself. It has everything to do with the fact that she may be losing a companion or somebody that she views as a companion. So the context matter. But let's just assume that we in a, that they in a, in a regular home and a dude is a regular dude and he's a decent dude and they got a mother and a father. I really don't think that the mother even care like that. As long as she don't feel like the dude is getting finessed, right? That he getting used for his money or something like that. She just happy to have a, uh, a, a you know what I'm saying? Possible daughter-in-law at some point 
she looking at the future and all of that. I don't think that she cared that much. I think that the context matters in this conversation. Yeah, and I and I call mm -hmm. cap on that because every time I went to anybody's house that I met, the mama was the one that was grilling. The pops was sitting there chilling, said, you want a drink? You know what I'm saying? Blase, blase. That woman was the one that was always... But you're up. talking about it from the perspective of a man going to meet a mother, a girl's mother. We talking about a girl going to meet a man's mother. It's a different conversation. Well, well I can speak on that. It's, it was it's completely from different. my perspective. You, sorry. Go ahead, Q. I'm sorry. Sorry, no, I think my thing is lagging. But from my perspective, the mothers I met, it's usually the mom asking me questions, not the dad. Like, I felt more, honestly, I would feel more comfortable of the mom grilling me than the dad, honestly. Because I'm, I would, yeah, it's it's a woman-to-woman -woman thing. I don't want to come off too friendly to the dad so quick like that. So it was usually, it's usually been the mom that, that was asking me questions. Oh, do you have kids? No, what type of job do you have? What do you like to do for fun? Like, those type of questions, like. Yeah, I, but I actually. Mean, is she just making conversation you, because women are more talkative or is she really grilling you? Mm-hmm. Nah, she really grilling. We, we know when because we know how we know how to grill. As women, we know how to grill, so we know when we're when we're being grilled from a, from a mom's perspective. But no, nah, it's, it's usually the mom that usually is asking questions. Well, Kayla, uh, same question. I know you haven't answered yet, but you can go ahead and make your point and answer the question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say the same thing in my experience. It's more of the mother. Um, they're not really asking me like, oh, what do you do? And it, they know all these things by the time they meet me. They know what I do. They know, you know, the basics about me. So they're usually asking me like more detailed feminine kind of questions. You know what I mean? About like the kind of woman I am, like woman to woman, at least in my experience. Um you know, and the dad is a little more <laughs> just kind of chilling. Um, so I think when it comes to a woman meeting, it's different, um, regardless if she's single or married and have a husband. I just think that women, women think that they know other women. You know what I'm saying? So from the mother's perspective, she's like, OK, let me talk to her. You know, I'll be able to see things that maybe men can't always see or whatever. So um the one thing I will say, it's something that Logic said about like men don't care what their sons do. I don't know about that because that is not the case in my family. My dad, every girl my dad brings home, I mean, every girl my brother brings home, my dad is like, nope, she ain't the one. And it's like, that's it. <laughs> He'll, he'll maybe ask him, like, why is she different? And then my brother will give him all these examples. And my, my dad is like, that doesn't make her different. She you can you you'll meet someone in the future that can easily do that, that can easily do that, that can easily do that. Why is she the one? My dad is very critical with, you know, both of us. So I don't know logic. I have to push back on that part. But then um, for the question and this lady that is very weird that mm. i don't know i don't know who this lady is it's very weird it's creepy low-key and, and very toxic um uh, you know i i send i send prayer to that lady because I, <laughs> there's some there's something wrong but i do think that th when she first started talking i was listening and i was like okay because i do agree with the part in terms of don't trust a man's um, mother when you first meet her if you meet her early and casually Right. Like you come by for the barbecue or and it's super early. Maybe you've only been dating him for like a month or something. What in terms of the tr where, I, where I thought she was going in terms of the trust is that just because you meet a man's mom doesn't mean he th like he thinks that you're the one. That's where I thought she was going, because that's mm -hmm. true. A guy can bring you to the cookout next weekend, bring another girl next weekend, bring another girl. So I it, where I thought she was going is like, don't think that meeting a guy's mom means something, because for all men, it doesn't. They introduce everyone, you know, to their mother, like regardless. So that's where I thought she was going. But then she jumped off a cliff. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. Even yes, sir. That. But yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Final points on this. Final points on this, y'all. Y'all good? Yeah. We, I Roger. agree. Oh, go ahead. You got I'm some over there with some lemon the, pepper? I'm curious, for the, uh, I'm curious <laughs> for the women because I've heard them give responses of like with the fathers being involved. So you've never dated a man with who, who was, you know, raised by his mother? 
No, they all have parent, two-parent household. Y'all, y'all, y'all only no. date men in two-parent households. Okay. No, um, no, no ex- that's not. Go ahead, Kayla. I'll go after you. No, I was gonna say my ex, um, his parents are both remarried. So I went to two different houses with two different um families, you know, people. Families. So yeah, but they, you know, they're not, they weren't together. They haven't been together since he was very like young, but they've both been remarried long, long time. So that's my experience. Yeah, but I'm 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 just asking because like uh I similar to court, I'm familiar with this lady's talking points. <laughs> and um similar to what court was saying when she was adding the context, which was really she was kind of projecting it was more or less from the line uh because uh, you never will hear her talk about a dad that she met she only talks about her interactions with the mother so i was just curious of you all as you were giving your perspectives and sharing your perspectives ladies um have you never been in a conversation with your significant other's mother and there's no father involved. There's no father that's just saying, oh, yeah, uh, she look good, son. Yeah, she good. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm saying you dealing with the mother. He's a son husband. <laughs> right? So that's my question. That's what I'm asking. And if you haven't, that's cool. I get it. Yeah. I'm curious. Well, I can I can speak on that because I've dated someone that was the mother treated him like um, a husband and very overbearing. And I think it is important because I know Anton, you said you've never heard this, but, you know, when you're dating someone, their family matters, their relationship with the mother matters. So I would definitely suggest while dating and if it's dating for marriage, you're not only marrying that person, you're going to be marrying that family. And if you want to be around that mother-in-law, you know, or that dad or something, that's something to think about. And families break up relationships. So that's, it is something and it's important. You're marrying into that family. And if you're not getting along with the mother, that can cause havoc in your relationship. Has no bearing. It can, but the I think it's that man's This is what my, what, what my interaction is with my, what my future wife is. Well, I don't. It well, had a bearing on I, Wait, wait, wait. I was just going to say it's that man's this. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on real quick, Kayla. I'm sorry. Just one second. And time, because you often speak about your relationship with Rita and you tell us the story and it's magical and, you know, how she called the house and your moms gave you like, hey, this girl called and, you know, you don't, you don't, I think if I remember the story correctly, you was like, you were surprised that she even passed the number off or passed the message off to you. So you're saying in context, you didn't take your mother's assessment of Rita into context or into consideration at all? No. Interesting. Okay. At all. Because I wasn't even looking to get married. She was no, just I, I got that part. Literally, it was just like, yo, oh, yeah, that's I remember the that part. Yo. I remember that part. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. we was just it wasn't no dating with no court and well, none of that. So it had no no bearing on it whatsoever at all. Yeah. Well, all right. it has a bearing on me. Look at that family. Gotcha. Yep. All I was going to say was that, like, if his mom doesn't like you or is being, a, you know, whatever, I think it's his responsibility to do something about that. I I'm not about to do anything like you need to go and check your mom and she don't have to like me, but she need to be cordial. She need to be civil. She needs to be a loving grandparent. She need, you know what I'm saying? And like, you need to deal wait, with that. I, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. That's have his responsibility. Have mm-hmm. you dealt with a mother that didn't like you and you told no. a man he had to check his mom? Okay, no. well, all right, but I'm saying like, if that's the situation, then I think that that's what that man should do. I think he should manage his mother and require his mother to respect his wife. I agree. I wouldn't say manage. Like, it's not my job to check his mother out of no. respect for him. Out of respect for him and her. That's his responsibility. And as a man, I don't need to tell him that. He will see the the, the contract between us that he'll he'll pull her aside and tell her, like, this is my wife. That's because I see that I saw that with my dad. My my his parents didn't like my mom because she was a different race. So he checked them. Like either you gonna you're gonna obey my wife and respect her, or you're not gonna come to the wedding, or you're not gonna have nothing to do with this. And that what that's well, what I, needs to happen. I rock with that kid. By the time that I decided that I was going to get married. Like when I decided I had I was going to marry Rita, she had never like she hadn't met my wife yet. I mean, met my mom yet. Like I told her, yo, you're going to be my wife. That was the end of the conversation. 
And then, you know, she wound up meeting my, my parents and all of that. I had made my own decision. Listen, if your parents have not raised you well enough to be able to, as a man, you know what I'm saying, in order to make a decision. And if you telling me that as a man, that you you pick a wife and then she comes over to meet your mother and then your mother decides, no, that's not going to be your wife. And that's the end of the conversation. That's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. But wait, Anton, now I'm telling me my again. mother is picking my wife. I got to push back again. So my mother is, is picking my wife. Yeah. How is that crazy not- when we advocate often that men should wait? And this is the thing that people push back on you, um, Anton, is that your situation, you know, whether you like it or not, and I don't disagree with you. Like, I wish we could replicate more of the mindset of that you have in the sense of, you know, being intentional and knowing what you want out the gate to stand third. But, bro, getting married at 22, 23, it's not a lot of cats that have the mindset that I'm going to buck what my parents are saying. Like, and I'm choosing. This Are you woman. living with them or something? Are they paying your bill still? What is going on? I'm, I hear I'm you. So, wait, wait. So, Anton, wait, bro, because you live your life like an open book. Are you honestly saying at 23, that was your mindset? 22. Tw- okay. Actually, 21. I got okay, married. Let's, let's say that. Let's say 21. Are you saying at 21? I know what I was doing at 21. I know what I was doing too. I had two jobs. I was doing? going to school full time, and I was making one hundred nineteen thousand dollars a year. I was in an A. I was in an A slut. <laughs> okay. Hey, logic. That's what one twelve was on Chesterfield. No comments I though. Hate but I just go. I got. I got. Oh my gosh. Really? Um, I'm gonna actually, I'm actually so agree with the women. Really? I agree with the women on this that on this part that it is a man job. To check his mom, and that right. goes back into I what I was saying earlier. The woman's that a lot of time we see it, and it's, it's a part of our culture. We don't like to admit it, but a lot of time they'll be pushing their expectation through their kids. So if a man is a man and he like who he like, yes, I would check the fuck out of my mom because guess what? <clears throat> you know what? She's not living through. She trying to live his, live his through. All right, see, I've been quiet. Really, you seen me bring my uh, my mom just came on my platform two days ago. Talking, but my like, mom, Anton, on, we're on, not, we're on, not. We're not oh. Hold on, I mean, bro. This is the thing. Wait, 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 wait. My mom came on my morning show just 1, two days ago. My mother 1, is submissive to me, not the other way around. One thousand percent, <laughs> and it <laughs> was dope. I hear you. So what are we That's talking cool, about, bro? And what, <laughs> and what I'm saying is. is that's not everybody. Oh, Kayla, what's wrong, Kayla? <laughs> Nothing. Go ahead, Rilla. No, I honestly, uh, Kayla, and I don't know if you've seen the episode. I, I had, I told him like that. That was genius episode. It was an absolutely genius, and it's a dope. And anybody that hasn't seen it, I would encourage you to go watch the episode where he brought his mom's up. And but, that was way ago. I'm talking about just two days ago. She just came over and jumped on the episode. No, I'm talking about the one from months ago. It's on there. That one was super, super dope because it was um anyway. I don't I don't want to give too much away. I would just say go watch it. But my point being is that time you at least have to acknowledge. I would expect you to at least acknowledge when people say, yo, fam, um people may see you as aspirational, but you gotta acknowledge in in a lot of ways, bro, you the anomaly. And I'm not saying that you have to be the exception and that we have to accept that. And it ain't about running an old victim Olympics or none of that either. But what I am saying is that there are men who are raised by their mothers. And when they bring their woman home, their mother is telling them she. And I added that context. Or not. And I added that context. I added that as a caveat earlier in the conversation, did I not? Wait, wait, repeat it for I might have missed it. Repeat it for me, bro. I said I added that context already. I already spoke to that specifically. No, I'm asking you to repeat the caveat. I said that men, there's some men who mothers are just happy to get out of the home. And then I also said that there's some men that serve a role as sort of a husband gotcha. to their yeah. mother. Some and husbands. And that's I, what add all, I added all of that. I agree with you. And that and that's what I'm saying, though, bro. That's who we gotta, that's who we gotta address. We gotta address the son husband. But see, I'll ask this question because y'all like to use this F and beta all the time. 
if a man, if a woman have that much influence over a son in picking a spouse, would that be an alpha or a beta? Exactly. Fam, L- well, let me say oh, this. Oh, shit. These niggas don't like to answer questions, man. I'm done. <laughs> I don't Hold on, hold on. Let me be 1000 percent clear, fam. If you ask me a question, I start to lead in because the same way you've been patient, well, I've been well, patient too, bro. And I don't let you cook. So <laughs> either as men, we're gonna be respectful on the platform and let each other respond how we're gonna respond. Because I was answering your question. Really, don't what, get what, emotional. Don't do this. Not, why y'all do this, fam? Because we all... Come on, Watch bro. this. I it's apologize, serious. bro. Go you ahead. You got to apologize because... I, 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 go, go ahead, I mean, I'm just saying, no, go I'm ahead. I apologize. You. No, no, because I, I, I need to be clear. But here's the other thing in that time. Let me be clear with you, bro. You know, every time somebody what, what? responds and set boundaries, that don't mean they be an emotional, bro. That's not what that means. What boundaries? We talking on the internet and having a debate My about man just said, Oh, I see niggas don't like to answer questions. So we've done heard way worse than that. Oh my God. Okay, bro, you got it. I mean, if that listen, if you get triggered off of that, then who am I to tell I mean, you? Any and that's the other bro? thing. This is what I'm saying. Like, let's keep it a beam, bro. Let's like like all right, y'all got it. No, 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 no. But can, can you answer what, what are we talking about? Nothing. We ain't talking. Is about that nothing. no, no, no? Yeah, he bro, he apologized. Bro. So he apologized. What more you want from him? <laughs> you guys just tuning in. Welcome to La Peef. Let's talk. Make sure you guys get the likes up. Also subscribe to the channel if you want to become a member. Hit that join button to become part of the Green Gang. So, Green Gang. Yeah. There you go. I'm talking about man, mm. can anybody <laughs> on the panel answer that question? What was, what the, was question? the question? <laughs> if Beta. a man have so much influence, if, if a woman have so a lot of influence in a man's life with this picking a girlfriend or a spouse, is he an alpha or a beta? I already answered it with my answer. Nah, I mean, that's very, nah, I would say, let, let, let no. me say this. I get, I get tired of talking. He alpha said, and beta. No, I said beta. Yeah, before that, Mr. Logic was. Um, you said, I know y'all like to use alpha beta. And that's the first thing I was starting to address before you led in with the question, your ultimate question. The first part of what you would start, what you said is what I was starting to address. And before I could even get to that, you was like, yo, y'all niggas don't like to answer questions. So that's kind of got me triggered. Like, what we doing, fam? Either we having conversation as men or ladies and gentlemen on the panel, or we not. Right? So, Bro, I apologize. Here, wait, 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 real quick. Wait, wait, hold on. It a different way. I'm just saying, just let's get hold past on, it. Bro. Logic, because I don't know nobody over here that's talking alpha beta on this platform. So what? Who is the y'all is, is the question that I have for you. Hmm? Y'all got me spilling shit over here. Yeah. I don't want to do alpha beta either, so we can keep it moving. No, I'm asking. I'm <laughs> asking seriously. For what? Okay. Who's the, who's, the, who's the y'all over here that talk alpha beta? Just keep it a bean. Who they is are, it? Wow. I don't know nobody's talking alpha beta. All right. Wow. I got it. And if and if the mother has that much influence over the man's life, quite succinctly, the answer is he's a son husband, sir. I've never heard that term, son, husband. Yeah, me neither. It's the first time yeah. I've heard it. What? It's, de- it's definitely a thing. There's TV shows. There's a TV show out right now where, you know, they're, they can't get married because of the mother. And the mother is mm-hmm. always there. And have you seen that show or have you heard of it? Yeah. That's a- it was J-Lo was in it. J-Lo? Really? There was a movie. Yeah, J-Lo was in There's it. There's a and movie. Yeah. Was- oh, oh, you yeah. call it Monster in Law? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a reality show. Maybe it's based on that. I'm not quite sure. But the mothers are crazy. They are at the, their apartments, unannounced. Um, they go on their trips. The mother's on the trips with them. And then, like, huh? lady. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean it is a thing. That movie was crazy, though. Because in that movie, he wasn't he wasn't a husband. He wasn't even a son husband or whatever y'all talking about in that movie. She was just she was just crazy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, there are instances where 
some mothers, it's not about son husband, but it's just about the attachment to your child and understanding that now there's a change happening, a major change happening in life where his priorities change as they naturally should. And it just takes some mothers sometimes to adjust to that change. Yeah. Well, you know why mother's thing. not mother's Those not priority think, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. She thinks her role is being fulfilled by another woman. So she thinks like he's he's gonna forget about her or whatever. Yeah. Well, but, or, but it, go ahead. Go ahead. Kate. Or even just, you know, she thinks her she's losing a son. Yeah. But in some cultures there are women like the mothers will kind of probe the 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 girlfriend or the wife. Where like it's it's just a that's I think that's a normal thing, I would think, but it's not. I think in general, at that change in time, parents, they take all take it hard. I remember my mom was talking about how, like, you know, we don't talk to her as much anymore and how, like, you know, we don't pick up her calls as much. And, like, she doesn't feel connected to us. So, like, (laughs) you you know, things are just just changing. This is life. Things change. And some parents just, you know, they don't. Yeah. Well, let me talk about it a little bit more. Because Hold on. on. We got more to the next topic. No, no. We ain't going to do that. Y'all can do that after all hours. Night. Yeah, I know Kayla's going to be here all night, so we ain't got nothing to worry about. JR. <laughs> you guys are just tuning in. Welcome to Live P-Flex Talk. Hit that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel. Moving on to our next topic, which is uh, titled the thumbnail. Do men get intimidated by successful women? Do men get intimidated by successful women? We'll start with you, Kayla. Huh. Come on. Um, what? So some men, there could be some men, some men don't, but there are some men. Um, I think if, if, if successful went in front of the man, then no, like successful men, I don't believe are intimidated by successful women. I think that they like it, you know? Um, but to maybe to say you weren't so successful and she was as like, if you are a traditional man that wants to provide and she clearly, you know, is doing more successful and doing more than you are. And you know, you cannot, you know, necessarily do give her what she's used to off of your, you know, that could intimidate you. But I think most confident men for the most part, like, no, you know, because women are supposed to be different. You know, how you are at work when you're hustling is like not how you are in a relationship. So I think most really confident men aren't. Um, but there definitely are men out there that are intimidated by, you know, women that are moving and shaking and doing stuff and like, you know, really, um, really moving. And maybe they maybe they aren't as much. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. okay. Do men get intimidated by successful women? Um, I think certain types of men do. Only certain types. I Can don't you explain that, please? Yeah. I think men who are insecure or men who maybe have never had any luck with women or have a hard time approaching women or, you know, feel like they themselves aren't at the place they want to be when pursuing said woman. Um, I think those types of men might get, you know, intimidated, but I don't think that just every man does like (laughs) all types of men will approach any woman. So I don't think that, um, it's like a, just any man thing. It's only very specific types that get really intimidated. All right. Rilla, do men get intimidated by successful women? Hell no. (laughs) <laughs> I'm intimidated by no damn successful women. They intimidated by masculine women. What the fuck y'all talking about? <laughs> Who's not intimidated? Yo, fam, listen. So are you saying no man? Are you are you're saying man, right there saying listen, no man ever? In my, listen, in my observable eye, and I'm on record as saying I've I I've, I fell under the leadership of women in my career path, right? Um, I know what? other people. I know. I, listen, anybody that had a job where you punch a clock, you'd have fell under the leadership of a woman too. Don't front. 
And I'm sure you wasn't looking at her sitting up there saying, I'm jealous of where she at. I think, the last, you like, I think the last time I fell, uh, I fell under the leadership. Man, of, uh, JR, of, uh, no, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was working at Papaz, right? <laughs> Not Papaz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was, is this was in high school. Like I worked for Papaz for two days. I'm dead. It was two days. I saw why, that. Why was Hold it on. only two days, JR? It was on frying the chicken, right? And she's sitting <laughs> over there. She came over there trying to rush me to fry the chicken. I said, the chicken got a time on it. What you want me to do? You want me to bring the chicken uncooked? And so she just kept nagging at me, nagging at me. I said, you know what? I said, I gave her two middle fingers. I said, fuck you. <laughs> what? Indeed. <laughs> I said, fuck you, I'm out of here, man. And then he I came. Like, never hey, like I came back the next day and I was trying to talk to the manager, like, man, like, nah, I mean, we can't have that. And so I told her fuck her too. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? I'm like, how the hell is she gonna rush me to cook the damn chicken? It's a time it's dropped down. You gotta wait on it. Hey man. <laughs> Two days. Hey, hey, yeah. chat, chat. If y'all in here and y'all from Chicago, just so y'all know, JR from the low end. <laughs> <laughs> Two days. <laughs> So JR, I said it all the same, man. Like that, the authority of woman didn't go too well. So uh, go ahead. But um, Jr., is this question for the dating aspect? We're not talking about the working aspect. We're talking about the dating in a relationship aspect. I know. Right? I'm gonna I'm I'm yeah, bring it yeah, home yeah, for yeah, Jerome. Dating, Q. Yeah, no, no. I was asking Jr. I know. To see. I'm gonna I'm bring it home for Jerome. I don't yeah. think men. Jerome. Honestly, I don't. Th- I just don't. I don't think men are intimidated by successful women. Most dudes, right? that find themselves in a relationship where the woman, and it, it ain't necessarily that they're more successful. They A lot of times they just out earning them. And a lot of those dudes are finessing those women. I hear dudes all the time. Like those type of dudes, them dudes be on some old, yeah, she bought me this, she bought me that, whoop de woo Like those are the max and the players. Real spill. But there ain't no dude out here running around intimidated by a successful woman. Like, I ain't trying to be funny, man. Like we Men don't care. Like we don't care. We don't care about your accolades. We don't care about your degrees, unless it's building the business. Like we don't. Like even on the blue collar level, dudes don't. We have seen um, people come into this space. I won't name names, but we have seen older people come into this space and say, "Hey, I'm married and married late, and I'm more successful than my husband, and my husband does this, but he doesn't care." Matter of fact, I just heard her say the other day. He retired her. You know, body intimidated by no successful woman. Man, do your thing. Get your, get your, get your, man, do what you do. But can you fall under the program? That's what <laughs> men are concerned with. Yeah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Ain't, ain't nobody concerned uh-uh. about uh-uh. or intimidated uh-uh. by a woman out earning them. They concerned about the fact that, I, I, okay, hold on real quick, Court. What uh-huh. men are concerned about is that for the last 20, 30, 40 years, women have told men, you know, y'all need to level up. You need to get on my level, boo, and da 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 da. All the while, all these incentives that have um, the government has given for women to level up, so on and so forth, and that they've been able to take advantage of, and, uh, uh, you know, they're the most college enrolled and they're the most educated, like all of those things men don't care about because the pandemic really just showed you that really is so wrong on this okay i hear you anton and you're so wrong on this I hear you because yeah. the pandemic listen the on, pandemic on, go to first. the pandemic just showed you that men ain't intimidated by nothing the men that work with their hands the men that are plumbers. What does the pandemic workers? have to do with anything with regard to intimidation? Hey, Anton, please, 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 bro. Because hey, Anton, <laughs> what does that got to do with any? No, what does that have to do with the price of potatoes? Educate us all, Anton. You got it. You, 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 you got it. I you, do. You got all of, I do. Educate hold on, hold on, Anton. I'm I go do. To Courtney first. No, 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 oh, no. I want. No, 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 no. No, nah, go ahead, in. Courtney. No, no, no. I, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be. I got time. I got time. I do too, bro. I close tomorrow. So while he got his red cup and he decided to cut in while I was giving my answer, educate us all, bro. Tell us how tell us how men oh, are intimidated by women. Oh, oh tight, brother. Go ahead, Courtney. Well, I mean, I, I, I'll yield it to Anton. I'll Why do you think that a lot of women say things like, when I'm all dialed up and dressed up and things like that, 
Oh, that yeah. men don't want to come up to me, but then when I'm just looking like anything, that men feel more comfortable approaching me, approaching them. Why do you think that women say that all the time? Why do you think that we have conversations about a man dealing with a woman that make more than them, and then the woman at some point emasculating him in a relationship? Why do you feel? Why do you think that women even care? Because a lot of women that I know that make a lot of money right? They're more concerned with companionship than they are with about earning, right? So what happens is a lot of times they are confused about the idea of how marriage works. And so they'll talk about looking for a partner instead of looking for a husband. But at the same time, their mindset and approaching it is completely different than what it is that you frame in it. Now, when you're talking about a dude that's, you know, finessing a chick, we talk, listen, that's kid talk. We grown, grown over here. We're not talking about none of that. We're talking about men that's moving intentionally when it comes to relationships and getting married. And so when you start to have that conversation, men ultimately are intimidated because they know what they can and can't get overwhelmingly. Of course, you're going to have a dudes that move with a level of confidence that they feel like they can get any woman in the world. But the overwhelming majority of dudes don't even approach women. They shooting their shots in the DMs. Right. It's a certain group of dudes. And a lot of times they may even be around each other. It's a certain group. Matter of fact, I'll even go as far as saying it's a certain age range of men that come from an era where they used to approach women. We used to get numbers. We used to actually get numbers and put them in our phones and all of that other type of stuff. It's not the overwhelming majority of men that's even approaching women. And a lot of times they already assess whether or not guys don't even feel comfortable going up to women in groups. They don't. So why are you telling me about all of this confidence that the overwhelming majority of guys have when I will tell you that most guys are looking to wait till a woman separate herself from her girls before he even walk up to her? Guys do not. Bruh. Do not. Who Most guys, there's usually a group wow. of dudes that move all in the same circle and they comfortable moving that way. But guys get intimidated by more than just a woman that's successful. They get intimidated by a woman that's just hanging with her girls, let alone even having a conversation with a chick that, she, that he already feel like she up there. Come on, man. Hey, man, for somebody that sit up there and say, yo, I'm in these YouTube streets and you can use the Internet to gauge this, gauge that. Like, bro, it's observable. I I never said you can use the internet to gauge this. I said that the internet, what's no, happening said, on the internet, ain't no, happening no, no, in real said, life for most no, people. No, no, last conversation, you talked about leveraging YouTube, internet to get access to information, right? In terms of the conversation that we were just having. So now, with that said, bro, are you sitting up there saying I can't go to YouTube and with the observable eye see all the multiple videos that you of can't. YouTube? No, like picking up chicks. Give me one YouTube video in which you can you can with the observable eye make this assessment. Give me one, uh, anyone. The last one. I mean, give me anyone, and tell me how YouTube is a reflection of what you're dealing with in real life. Please tell me. What with the dudes that run up on chicks and oh, tell me that what on, you man. see on YouTube on, is a reflection of right, what you're dealing me, with in real life. Seconds. I'm gonna drop the link in the chat, and then when I do that, then. Cool. We'll what about that pre we'll see it and I'll... Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> we'll make an assessment hey, based just, off of the link really that you quick, dropped. Kayla, just really quick, because what I'm, what the conversation is around, dudes, men being intimidated by successful women. You went on a whole soliloquy about men who don't approach women, period. We're talking about men who are intimidated by successful women. Why don't men when approach men, women? When a lot of men tend to lead with what? Why men? don't men approach women? I mean, you listen. Why don't, don't men approach men women? Approach How do they know women? if you're successful? I mean, other than like if you're draped in designer, but how do they know you're successful before they come talk to you? How do they wait? Let's get back to the brass text. <laughs> come on, Rilla. Why are they not approaching women? That's my know. thing, bro. That's yeah, your bro. argument. Your argument is that they aren't approaching women. So you saying that dudes is just out here approaching, walking up to women, cold shoulder. I'm just telling you from the observable eye, from these not from the observable eye. Listen, we don't have to finesse it and add a bunch of words to it. Let's just strip it down to his brass tacks. Are you telling me Mm -hmm. 
that you you witnessing dudes just walking up and, and busting up and shooting their shots to the dopest women that mr logic we're not talking to you and we're not talking about your group <laughs> wait, of guys wait, that you wait, hang. Hold on, stop hold on, stop hold on hold on, on. on you're not talking to mr logic about the dudes that he rocked with in atlanta no, 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 hold on, stop, hold on. stop hold on bro let me ask my question i'm not talking to mr logic about the his circle of dudes that he rocked with in atlanta <laughs> no, not talking about i the rock with a certain type of dudes that have the confidence that's out of this world are you telling me rilla that you hanging out or you seeing in an observable eye with re in real life, dudes just walking up and busting their shots to the baddest chick <clears throat> that they see. Bro, we seeing on YouTube. That's not my question. My question is in real life, question. are you watching dudes walking up and busting a shot to the baddest chicks? Bro, it's yes, number one. Number mm -hmm. two, it's the very same reason why women say they don't feel comfortable around certain dudes because when they do shoot they shot, they turn them down and these dudes are, are, are responding indifferent, right? They respond in negative and super aggressive. It's also the same. If these dudes aren't shooting they shot, it's the same reason why we see dudes in New York, a woman turns them down and they biting the cheek off. Oh right? my God! Why really? you taking up one like, crazy incident and, and you making it? Why? Okay, this is very simple. This is very very simple because, no, because the question no 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 no, no. I'm about to make it very easy for you. I'm gonna make it easy women. for you. So tell me what dude is hold on, Brilla. Give me a second. They not, and I say they are. Give me a second. Now give me a second. I'm gonna make it real easy for you. Okay, Kayla. Honestly, you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Are men more more comfortable approaching you when they think that you are at the top, like you dressed down to the nines, or are you just looking regular? In your experience as a woman, I'm willing to concede. I'm willing to concede that I'm wrong. <sighs> Come on, just to be real. No, it's it's honestly hard for me to say because they try to talk to me no matter what. But okay. <laughs> but I will say that. Oh, really? Really, <laughs> really. But I will <laughs> say that when I am um, not dressed as nice, they seem a little less nervous. Hmm. No intimidation. Um, when I'm dressed like nice, they're like more, more like there's less. They're like, like a little more, not speechless, but like, mm. like they seem a little more like, you know. Whereas like, like, just like I put in the chat, like I was literally in sweatpants and a t-shirt going to get Jamaican food and someone trying to talk to me in the laundromat next door where I went to use the bathroom. Like, Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I, I just feel like, I do feel like I can see what you're saying, Anton, that I do agree that they seem more comfortable when I'm looking very regular. Thank you. You Kayla. know what I'm saying? And it, the thing that has nothing to do. You can't easy. do that, Anton. That has nothing I just to said do thank you for stuff. your answer. I can't appreciate her answer. Courtney. No, you cannot, sir. Courtney. Don't be putting me in this. No, 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 no. I'm just curious. We're not talking about what you how you respond to it. We're talking about your general sentiment over a period of time. Same question. Kay? Do you experience similar things to Kayla, or am I completely off on this? What you looking at, Kay? Someone shooting a shot in her DM. That's what she's looking at. But I think, uh, <clears throat> no, I understand what Kayla is saying. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I get approached, I, I guess, period. Now, sometimes I do wonder why am I getting approached and I'm looking like this. Like if I'm at the grocery store, mm. and I said, I put in the chat with my flip flops. I was like, what you want? Oh, nah. I look like I just cutting grass. Like, <laughs> Said a thirst is I'd be so baffled. Like, <laughs> y'all be confused. Well, however, huh? now, okay, now maybe it's different on well, maybe they're not scared to do it online via in person because you can throw out a what? thirst trap and then the DMs is blowing up. Interesting. Q, am I off? I'm just curious. And then when I wear my church dress, don't nobody want to like it. And I'm willing um, to I get approached more regular. <laughs> But I'm more, I, I'm, this is how I am. I'm regular. Wait, 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 you time, get approached like, more regular? Yeah, but I'm, that's how I am mostly. I'm more regular, basic, no makeup, nothing, unless it's like a, for an event. Okay, cool. Okay, I don't know if you care to answer this question. <laughs> Thank um, you for your smile, too. You know, I think that mm, approaching, I think it happens no matter what. Like, I agree with Kayla. Um mm -hmm. Fair enough. 
it's whatever. I would say, I mean, but the the places where you would be looking like really dressed up are different than the places where you would be like wearing sweatpants and your hair is like in a bun. You have no makeup. Like those for me at least, those are two because usually I just look no makeup, hair any kind of way. So like those are two completely different places. And I feel like the people who approach me in like the dressed up places just are different people. But I don't think that it's like people are intimidated. I don't know. I think it has to do with your personality. Like I'm very bubbly all the time when I'm out. Like I'm very like friendly person. So I don't think I'm intimidating to people based on how I am in public. Mm. So like. I don't see a difference, but there are different types of people. I don't see a difference in frequency. Let me say that. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I just wanted to get y'all experience. I think dudes do feel some kind of way like when you're with other girls though. Like yeah. when we're out and it's a lot of girls, like they do, they do like, you know, wait for you to go to the bathroom or wait for like yeah. everyone to start dancing where they can just, about how I just your space. It, how I just described it. Hmm. But that's in a oh, that's like, yeah, but that's I don't a, that's know a particular but environment. But they, are they logic. intimidated? I, 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 I don't know, know, know if they're intimidated. I don't know if it's intimidation. It's not intimidation. It's just like the rejection. Like a dude is approaching a woman based on how she looks. But oh, no, but the majority of communication is body language. How you look, how you dress. You can't yes. tell if somebody yes, is looking man. a little bit more professional Yo, or listen, successful listen. based off of how it is that they look. Listen, is that listen, what you're telling me? Listen. Can we go back to the original question? Because I have yes. oh, like, on like, I'm gonna take it back I wanted to answer that. Yeah, I wanted to answer the question. I have heard, hold on a second. I have heard different men say they did they wouldn't want a woman making more than them. Because mm. they've seen how sometimes when women, if a woman makes more, they kind of will harp on that or use that against them in some in some features. <laughs> and some men might feel like as a provider, as an alpha, it is my job to provide to my wife and to be making X amount of dollars. So I have heard that on certain platforms. Yeah. So both of y'all are right. There are some men that get intimidated, some don't. That's more of an insecure issues, but there has been times when women kind of use it against you. Like, that's why I make more than you. That's why you're a bum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think Both that's what... Like the but thing that's what Rilla is, was saying. We're not talking about the sum, and we're not talking about the minority. When we're we speak on majority. this panel, we're speaking in generalities, right? So we're talking about majority oh, or that. overwhelming majority. So are yeah. the overwhelming majority of men intimidated by successful women? That's the question. We're not talking about how a woman look when she comes out, if she's yeah. dressed to the nines, if she's Rilla. in a club setting, or if she's at a social setting, or if she's at an opera. We're not talking about that. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, really? Rilla, I mean, I so, like, with all due respect, I, I was just curious if some women are. It wasn't the the majority on this one. It was. Yeah. Just, See, it's so. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll agree with you, Rilla. I I do not think men are intimidated by successful women. And when I'm measuring saying success, because success can look different to a lot of people, but I'm just going to assume we're talking about. Um, that career wise and they're going up the corporate ladder and making more money than their counterpart. I don't think men are necessarily intimidated by that. I think they would champion their woman being successful. I think the problem comes is how does she act when she does become successful? So when she does, like you said, what you heard some men say, and even really talking about the masculinity of it all, yeah, they don't want to hear it being thrown in their face. They don't want to hear, I make more than you. And it's like, you know, and unfortunately, when you do go up to, to the, these levels of success, if you're talking about corporate, it as a woman, you do have to take on some masculine roles in corporate America to be successful. You do have to be a little bit more aggressive. You do have to be, you know, not as meek um, or as poised as one might want a woman to be because you're fighting with other men. So you have to be on their level. So success does carry a weight of uh, masculine traits. So, but the thing is, can you take that off when you get home? Can you be that woman that I want you to be when you get home? And sometimes for a lot of women, it's hard to turn it on and off. So it's not the success of the woman. It's the characteristic characteristic traits that you have to have to be successful and then taking that shit back home to your man. 
Mm. Hey, can I get on this? Because, uh, yeah, I, I Rilla bought it up earlier, but he got derailed because um, he bought it up masculine. And mm-hmm. then Courtney kind of spent around and she she did a good job on that, though. But when you're talking about successful <laughs> women, <laughs> it's two <laughs> types of success. You got a feminine type of success. They say they're they taking care of kids. They're taking care of home. I can look at that as a successful woman. Mm-hmm. And the other is masculine success because with masculine come power, right? And you give that woman power, it will become intimidating because they will go above and beyond. I didn't seen it too. If you ever been in the military, the worst leaders in the military is female leaders because they always trying to prove something. They always, because they know they're not the fastest, so they got a lot. They got a chip on their shoulder. So in the aspect of the feminine woman, no. If you have that feminine energy, that feminine success, a man is not intimidated by you. He's attracted to that. But if you have that masculine success, which comes with power, mm-hmm. then guess what? Yes, a man will be intimidated. You know what I'm saying? Especially if he's on your level. If he's above your level, he has no reason to be intimidated. That's it. I kind of want to switch it up a little bit. We stay on the same same topic, but uh, different angle at it. Let's talk about the conversation aspect of it. And uh, I want to start off by asking the women this question. Does a man's job, let's say he's blue collar, determine his his conversations? Does a man's job determine his conversations? So there was, uh, I was speaking with somebody and they were just saying that somebody that's successful, the conversations were different. They was able to engage more and so forth. And I just, just her opinion. But then when she dated blue collar guys, it was like they reached a, a ceiling at some point. They didn't really have too much to really talk about. The job wasn't interesting and so forth. So I'm going to start with the women. Does the job determine, uh, have anything to do with you guys dating him? Um, no. no. To so, me, no, because I've dated both. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. So you dated who? I said bro? no, because I, I, I've dated both, both types. Oh, no that's i don't think that matters like um success looks different in people's eyes so i mean i'm more focused on how he's treating me how he treats what's his goals are and how he is not his job like that's no (laughs) i was gonna say something similar that i think that um his conversation more so is based on like how he was raised and what he's been exposed to since then Um, not necessarily his job, um, because, you know, just because you're a plumber doesn't mean that you, you know, don't have any concept of finance or art or culture, you know, other things like you could be exposed to that. You could have been, you know, artistic as a, as a child and know, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's, I think it's based on your exposure, what you expose yourself to, and it's based on your interest to want to know more and to have those conversations. If you don't have an interest in that, then the likelihood of you having um, like the conversation always kind of growing, maybe, maybe won't be there. But I I don't think it's based on your job. I think it's based on your exposure. Okay. What about you, Kay? Um, I think that it is definitely based on a lot of other things. I don't think your job, like if you're a person (laughs) and I know it's these types of people where the like your personality is your job and that's like all you talk about, then I could see how someone might like measure it that way. But for me, absolutely not. Um, For some people, their job is just their job. And then they have other things that they do that they're interested in that they think about or whatnot. So no, um, I do not think that someone's job determines how interesting they are. I think that people with any type of job can be extremely interesting or not. You could have the most interesting job in the world, but if you're not like easy to talk to, you're not interesting to talk to, people won't care. Okay. Um, I think all the ladies answered that question, right? Y'all did? Everybody? I didn't. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, the question I was having a P right moment. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> a little shaky for a second. A oh shake, yeah, no. Nah. No, nah, the question I asked was uh does the job determine 
does the job have anything to do with uh, who you're dating when it comes to a man being successful? So say he's successful, he's having different type of conversations, you're more interested. Uh, does that matter if he has a blue collar job? Is the same type of conversations happening? Do you get bored? Oh. Well, no, I don't think it necessarily matters um, as far as the type of job that you have and does it dictate maybe your personality and the conversations that we can have per se. Um, but I do think that there are some occupations that a person has to have a particular personality for. So let's just say you have to have a particular personality to be a police officer. And with that personality and what you see and how you're going to bring that home, it does dictate a lot of stuff that might happen, our conversations in the home. He might be a little bit over possessive or overprotective of me because he's been out there in the streets. So it, it can determine, you know, the relationship on how they act towards you. But boring personality. Uh, eh, I don't know. Because I'm thinking about, well, what if he's a librarian and loves just being in a librarian, want to teach you the Dewey Decimal System? That might oh, be boring to me. I don't. I don't think we should just assume <laughs> all blue collar men are the answer, all red collar. So I definitely agree. We shouldn't just assume their conversations. Yeah, are gonna you, be, it, yeah. yeah, you can, you can't assume, but there's a, personalities tend to go to different things. So again, like a politician, you know, they might be really, really interested in in this and. You know, if I'm not and they are, then that would affect our conversation. Like if I'm into computers and you have no idea and I love building them and I want to talk about it and you have not a clue what an SSD drive is. I think a job and a career are also different, like just a job. Just a job. Right. A career that you are building that has a plan, that has a strategy that's going to be over time. It definitely now that I think about it a little bit, it definitely will consume a good part of your life it does. Um, and your conversations. Like when you get home, honey, how was your day? And then I, I can actually recall like someone that was a nurse that they came home and every single day. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The conversation is about something that happened at the hospital. I, I, sw I swear to you. So when you have, but that's, he, he led a department of, of people and like, it's, it's, it's 5 a.m. to, you know what I mean? It's your, when it's your whole life and it's your career. And it's like, that's a little bit different, but you said a job. So it's like, I'm thinking like, oh, you go clock in, you Just clock out. Not, and you like clock in, right. And you but go then, do your hobbies and you go play basketball with your friends after. And you know, you know what I mean? Y'all go get, you know, that's a little maybe different. Yeah, because yeah, especially if you own a business, mm -hmm. then that's not a nine to five. You that's mm -hmm. all day, mm -hmm. every day, babe. I need you to help me, and if I'm not interested in it, and it, it also depends thing. on what type of yeah. It I also feel like y'all thinking out loud right, right now. I think y'all just <laughs> like, thoughts just coming, and y'all like on yeah. another note. Yeah. Now, now that you this said that, tricky, as a matter of fact, <laughs> it's a tricky question because it is very like some people think that nine to five. You made me think when you, boring, you said that that like they're not ambitious. That's not the truth. I, I know people exactly. that are ambitious that have a nine to five, and men and women. And I know entrepreneurs that got boring personalities, but they exactly. make their money. So who who do you like? So it's very who I don't know who came up with. I guess the question is how long is that going to exactly. last? Q, I was about to say the same thing because I think point. that people get like caught up in thinking like just because you're this or that, you're going to be interesting or not. Like there yeah. are people who work any type of job that are the most interesting, like, you know, the deep thinking types of people that you'll ever know. And then people that might work the stereotypically interesting job and then you go hang out and they're just like, yes, no. Yeah, okay. Cause, cause, cause <laughs> and then exactly. Just, you can okay. have a nine to five and still be sorry. Yeah, it just yeah, I, I, I see y'all. I see it ain't gonna stop. It's gonna be like a, I got a I got a question for the, the gentleman. I got a question for the gentleman. Do we prefer a successful woman in her career? Do we prefer a successful woman in her career? Logic. No. I said logic. Stop the cap. Um I say I will because um just like what we're saying, based on conversations. Um, I mean, we're in the same, we, if we're in the same tax bracket, then we have more in common. I mean, like I said, I went on a date with a chick who, uh, got mad at me cause I voted for Donald Trump. And then to me, that was a, that was a deal breaker. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was like this, how you get mad at me 
I ain't mad at you. You voted for Joe Biden. I'm voting for my interest. So they didn't understand that. So if I was dating somebody that was that was within my tax bracket, then they will probably more understand. You know what I'm saying? So, so I can't I can't be doing no quiches with the pickles and the ice. I had to, you know what I'm saying? I gotta kind of leave them alone because they would never understand. Our conversations won't exist or expand past nothing. You know what I'm saying? And to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? You talk to a certain a, a Keisha or whatever you want to call them. They conversation consists of the same thing. Instagram, they conversation consists of some of the basic minute things that when you grow up as a man, it, it get bored. You know what I'm saying? Like a chick just on her phone all day on Instagram, all that kind of stuff. It get boring because they ain't making money and funny. And I like how Kayla, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling my perspective as a man, unless she can stand up and show stuff, then you got to listen to me because this is me coming from a man. But who are you talking to? <laughs> I don't know, man. I look, you all right. say, Kayla. I think you got a little. I didn't say. I, I mean, I got the same thing. All right. But look, I'm but I'm not sure. What, what had happened? I don't know. That doesn't happen. That you was on. You was on pause. But for your neck. To get Mr. to the. Pookie to the, wanted to pay attention to him. He I think that pay attention to him. It's it, it's pros and cons to it with it too. If you dating a successful woman then uh, a lot of times she won't have that that feminine type of success that I was talking about. And then to me, that would be a, a a deal breaker. I rather, even though I prefer to have them conversations with somebody that's in my tax bracket, but I would lose the conversation and I'd rather deal with a woman that's feminine in that energy in her success. You don't think that's a little stereotypical though, Mr. Logic? Just because like, like majority of the women that make the most money make them from home-based online businesses. Mm -hmm. So they're at home doing feminine things and they're very successful with a thriving business. So, yeah. so you said you asked me, was it stereotypical, right? You know, you asked me, was it stereotypical? Yeah. For you to say that, like, yeah. if she's but, successful, uh, okay. then that so she's I'm answer what is stere stereotype based upon? How do you create that you, stereotypes? That you're saying that if, if a woman is successful, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, how do how do stereotypes get created? By something that people notice that a good deal by actions of a majority play. Okay, so yes, I'm talking from a actions of the majority perspective. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, Anton, same question. Do men, do we prefer a successful woman in her career? Um, I don't think it matters at all to a certain type of guy, I guess. To the guys that I'm familiar with, we don't care anything about your career. I don't really care about, I mean, obviously I care about the type of career that you win. I'm not interested in talking or no guy that I know would be interested in talking to a stripper Right. We don't want to talk to a chick that's a rapper or something like that. Right. But in a general sense, no, I don't think that guys care at all. We don't care anything about what you do. I don't. I don't. That has no bearing on me whatsoever. OK. Really? What about you? Do we care about a successful woman in her career? If your career is being a housewife and a mother and taking care of the house, yeah, we definitely care about that career. You know, your personal ambitions. Um, let me let me say this, man. My my girl, I say this on the platform all the time. She's starting to get tired of me talking about her, but <laughs> she was successful in her career before I met her. I'm not asking her to step down from her career. I'm not asking her to be anything less than what she is, but at the end of the day, like, let's keep it a bean, fam. Like, I, I'm still responsible for everything uh, in terms of um, bills, leadership, uh, the vision, this legacy, where this family is going to go, what we trying to build, so on and so forth. Yo, honestly, ladies, you know, you could be, you know, <clears throat> here's the thing. Shout out to Melody Hobson. I think she's one of the dopest people in the financial sector, right? But 
um, as dope, and, and she's super dope. And I, 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 I'm, I wouldn't even cast any type of aspersion on her, or take anything away from her. Well, sorry, I think she's super, 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 super dope. But I don't think George Lucas is looking like, you know what, you were a millionaire before I got with you. George Lucas is a billionaire. He don't care about whatever money she's making. He cares about what value she can add to him. Like, ladies, that's what we care about. We care about our peace. When I come home, do I have peace in the house? And that goes beyond like just having a hot plate or this and a third. You know what I'm saying? Can we have conversation? I mean, like the last conversation, you know, you asked around the ladies, it's like one thing that's important for me when I talk to my girl, can we talk about world affairs? Can we talk about politics? Can we talk about things that's going on, you know, in Rosen? Or can we talk about things that's going on with our alma mater? Like those are things saying? are important. Can we talk about art? Can we talk about fashion? Can we talk about music? Those things are important. I don't care what she makes at work. I don't care how successful, successful she is. I know it's important to her in terms of her self-fulfillment in a sense. It's not important to me though. Like in like if I was going to choose her, I would look at her and say, you're a successful woman. That's what I want. If you think about... um. Yeah, dog. If you go back to think like a lady, act like a man, remember Michael Ely and Taraji P. Henson, their relationship? She was highly successful, right? If you go back to people, if you remember Juice, if you remember who was it, Bishop? Bishop or Q? No, really, you're going to have to start but, citing but that, some real life examples, bro. These yeah. are all <laughs> fictional characters. It's and not that were written by no, no, no. I, and that, and they were written into a script and acted by actors, bro. This is not real life situations, yeah. bro. You're going to no. listen. I'm not I necessarily disagreeing with no, no, you. No, 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 no. Anton, 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 are not. Where good, do you think bro. that stuff comes from? <laughs> but, but like, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. The same, okay, cool. the same wait, wait. place no, so that me, the color me, purple me, came from. Because I love it's the reason why. People say why Kevin Samuels cite color purple when he says that this was written as an agenda in order to emphasize a point or to start to start to market and drive home what it is that we want to see. It doesn't make it make it real. It's not a real story. So yeah, but it's them, like music. Them, it is oh, a real life. None, none of this stuff on, is based yeah. on hold like how on, people are. Hold on. Like hold what on. we watch on hold on. On TV. I hear you, bro. Um I'm just going to respectfully disagree. It's one of the few points that I disagree with Kevin Samuels on. If we finna sit up here and act like women wasn't being handled heavy and wasn't getting slapped seven ways to Sunday and Miss Seeley's experience wasn't a real experience, I mean, you could say, hey, I never seen it. I didn't observe it. Or it doesn't impact me to this day. But, bro, to say during that time that didn't exist. You, are, you watch too many movies, bro, honestly. You really watch too many movies, bro. Your sources, you know I would say for you, Anton? your sources are bad. Bro. You know, you know what I would say for you, Anton. <laughs> you don't watch enough historical movies. That's what I. Would yeah, say let me you. go on rent juice so I can get some history behind that. Man, I don't want to come. What are you talking about, bro? No, I'm Anton, saying stop bro, citing bro, zip bro, juice. Bro, hey, don't he, don't he, cite he, juice. Wait, and, wait, hold on, and Roger. think like a oh, um, let me bro. They made a book made based off a of Steve. We don't even respect Steve. Wait, 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 wait. So where do you think? Wait, wait, wait. And they made a whole. Hold on, bro. They made a whole I mean, book you, based off of what Steve Harvey thing. You think, you think that I'm, I'm about to take We're your not source about ET, bro? We're not talking Star Trek. We're not talking Star Wars. What maybe we should cite. Maybe we should cite Black Panther on how people act. How black people are in real talking, life too. Why don't notice, we go ahead notice, and do that? Notice, while we listen, notice what you're doing. You talking, you're talking black about Panther? I'm talking juice. You talking Black Panther, right? Now you remedy. can do all that all you want, fam. But I'm keeping it a bean. So okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Anton. Was maybe I should quote Steel in Juice? Yes or no? Maybe yes we can no. go Was ahead and get Rodimez's perspective on how he feel about Anton. black women and, and birthing. And Anton. his baby mama. Y'all like Rodimez and Juice? Anton I like Rodimez. Was, I like his, was, his red was hoodie, too. Serious, bro. Was 8 Mile accurate? Yes or no? No. Boy, you was a mother. It's not accurate. I li bro, I live two blocks off of 8 Mile on Green Lawn. 20214 Green Lawn was my address between Livernois and Wyoming. I lived off 8 Mile. That's not that accurate. Not, what are you talking about? Real, right? What are you talking about? Real. The shelter ain't real. 
Jesus you Christ, this boy don't know nothing about that, Detroit. Right? So Bro, are you there visited. no films You don't know TV nothing about the that, city. Are there no films or TV shows you. that right. align with what happens in real life at all? Yes, that's why reality TV is How you gonna go tell me because where I, I grow up is more accurate in your, from your perspective than me living there and growing up in my whole life? Study your city. You talking about? I was in your city. Stay this dude city. is out of was, his mind. I was ten bro. toes down. That's the logic. Do you hear what this dude is doing? Do you hear what this guy's saying? Was, nah, do you I hear what you saying? Two blocks from me. in your city. I went back and bought my own my old house. What are you talking oh, you about? I grew up block. there. How you gonna how tell you me? Gonna sit up out your face and talk about eight? So, okay, so seven, how you gonna tell me? Let me ask you is this. a movie real? And I grew up are there. You serious? Are you? Is this still out of his mind? Serious? But okay, I, I, I mean, I, I, I see what both of you guys are saying. I do. No, he's because saying as if I'm taking it like literal. That's literally what happened. Right. I know he know better than that. Yeah, he knows you're not talking. I know he know better than that. Nothing right? depicted right? right? in that Anton, movie, you, even the rap oh, scene. But Anton, you know what, he's hold on, hold on, hold on. Nothing depicted in that movie, even the rap scenes were real. What are you talking about? He, I think he knows it's not real. It's a depiction. It of wasn't reality. even. It listen. Oh, hold on, hold on. Even the so exaggeration of it. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Even the y'all got to do one at a time so they can hear us, y'all. One at a time. Even so the hear. exaggeration of it. My man's finna tell was me not an accurate depiction of what was going on down there, bro. Do you even wait, know? Wait, wait. So Marv one didn't battle at the show. Battle at the shelter. Right. That's what you finna tell me. You finna tell me all the you great cow walkers that came out of these. Stop Detroit. watching so many movies. You, you have no idea what you're talking about. Royce the five nine. You finna tell me proof. You finna tell me none of D12 battled at the Bro, show. Bro, you know where the majority of these battles took place? They, they at happened at Reese Malone's stop, stop. Uh, hip hop shop. No, Jesus Christ. Okay, I you know, know the whole you history. You, you know the whole history. Okay, real. I'm gonna let you go ahead and do it. I really grew up there, but I'm gonna let you go ahead and tell us because Bro, apparently, like I said, Rilla, I'm gonna call you bro. an eternal because you have been through every hood and every city at the exact same time. You know, and you know everything that you took place. So I'm gonna let you rock. Go ahead and cite your no, movies. No, no, no. Do your no, thing, bro. Your this is, tell, tell this is insane, wrong, bro. Right this is insane. Tell us about your city that I got wrong. Hey, uh, go ahead, Kayla. Oh, yeah, for real, for real. Like, I, I, respectfully, bro. I really want to hear about his city that I got wrong. I really want to hear this. Battles didn't happen at the shelter. Battles didn't happen at the hip hop shop. They didn't. Royce the five nine, Elzai, Marv one. None of them was move, proof wasn't moving through there. Eminem didn't come up through there and move to New Jersey and got on with the outsiders. I'm a student of this shit, man. Don't play with me. The fuck is you talking about? Can you put the topic back? I forgot what the topic was. <laughs> so all hey. I was gonna say I was, that was my yeah. big Well, I, I'll say this. I, this is from Miss Mr. Logic. Uh, the reason why I went to an HBCU. Was because of a different world. Oh Lord! <laughs> That's why I saw a different world, and I wanted to go to an HBCU. So I didn't apply to any other school but HBCU. Now, when I got there, was it like a different world? It was. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm gonna ask you a question. Can I ask you a question, Courtney? Come back here. World. Hey, Courtney, Courtney, can I ask you a question? <laughs> hey, on a different world. Did any of them chicks get pregnant? No. What is pregnancy? Well, it ain't, it ain't <laughs> real. <then. laughs> but, but, HB, hey, but look at the stats. No one I know got pregnant. pregnant. What? All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, I, I, she, asked, she asked a question. I'm asking. Hey, you know what the funniest thing about this whole situation is? Pregnant. You know what the funniest thing about this whole situation is? Is because... When Royce came up, Royce wasn't even from Detroit. Ooh. So funny because he literally hung out around the block from my guy. My guy's name was Bo. His brother, Ronald and Donald, was a twin. 
They actually went to school and played high school ball, and that's how Roy, how we met Royce. Royce used to hang out with my guy, um, Ivory. Ivy was my best friend, and we went to high school together. Stop. We literally was hanging with these dudes every single day and going around the block on Rose Line, literally one block away from 8 Mile, and having these conversations and really living his life with this dude. Real talk. Royce's number one guy is not even in the picture no more. Right? You want to know his name too? Do you really want to know the history of Detroit since you studied this shit so much? Since you know yeah. so much about everything that was happening in the city? Yeah. Do you I really do. even know what you talk? Listen, I, I would never hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop. Yeah, don't do. don't don't try to overtalk me. I would never go to at to to talk to about talk to Mr. Logic and tell him I studied his city and I know what was really happening over there. Do you even know where Black Wall Street, where the game got the name Black Wall Street from? That was Royce's original group. Royce, Eminem wasn't even supposed to be the first one on. It was supposed to be Royce. They, he, Royce wasn't even really battling like that. That wasn't his niche back then. That's not even what happened. You don't know shit about the city, bro. Just because we're sensationalized and what's told as stories on interviews, that's not really what was happening in the streets. You don't know shit about what was happening in Detroit, bro. Real talk. Me right now. I'm not. Mr. Logic, I will never go into your city. Listen, I, 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 I didn't watch oh. interviews and all of this about this, right? It would be crazy for me to tell Mr. Logic about what was really happening in Atlanta when he was growing up. I know. That's insane, in bro. And I was in Detroit. So it'd be insane for me to go to New Orleans and tell somebody from New Orleans what was going on in I'm city. done with this conversation. I, I don't want are. it to get too much far derailed. This is insane. What I this will is say insane, is that, bro. I know. What I will say is that I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> and the a the movie ATL, like okay. Is that accurate so it's, no, it's, it's, it's what you're both saying. While it was not an exact depiction of my experience. There are things in that movie that are accurate to my experience. I didn't go to Cascade because that was on the other side of town, but the, the, <clears throat> the skating rink on our side of town did have right. some similar things that were happening. So, they like, oh, place, I don't know why it's an argument. Yes, it's not an exact Kayla. depiction, but there are some mm -hmm. things that are similar to the actual Kayla. experience. So, why are y'all arguing? I, went, I don't get it. Who wrote I went the to Cascade for Atlanta. Who wrote the and I had been to Cascade, but I, I, growing up, What's I didn't happening? go there. And growing up, I didn't. We growing up, it was just it was like that. It was just different. And 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 based on where you lived, how you lived, you can't just say, "Oh, that's not accurate." Because if you lived on the north side, nothing in that movie is accurate to you. Nothing in that ATL movie is let me, accurate. Let me, to you. let me say this. That's you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Let I don't get the argument. Let me be clear. Okay. Let me let me say this and let me be clear, please. Let me just say this okay. because I want people to understand. You know, and, I, and 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 shout out to the OG Shannon. This, you know, the reason why I will leverage these movies because it's something that we all can coalesce around, and we understand that the movies that I'm using, I'm not saying Star Trek, Star Wars, Black Panther. <laughs> I'm saying movies. If I say Minister Society, Boys in the Hood, right? Those movies resonated with people regardless of if that was an exact story or if they can relate. They can relate to because they they identify similar scenarios. You know who wrote the screenplay for ATL, uh, Kayla? Dallas Austin. And it was it was based on a story of what him and T-Boz experienced at Cascade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, and most people that, that live the Cascade will tell you that they that know. movie is pretty They're accurate. Talking. And Cascade is still because I didn't live there. in Cascade. Cascade I can still. I can get where Anton's saying that like I can't identify a hundred percent because I'm literally from the other side I of town. I, listen, but and it, I'm not trying it was to disrespect that brother. He you know I ain't trying America. to disrespect him on that level. But what yeah. I'm also saying is I don't feel like, disrespected. I'm just saying you I know, know but, but I'm just saying, and I'm not challenging your history because I know you know the depth. You're gonna give us that 16 bars in this uh after hours, but what I'm saying <laughs> is but a time that I was in your city, I did. I, I I acted as a tourist, and I did a deep dive into your city, right? And I'm not saying I never said I know more than you, but you would be hard pressed to get me to believe that Eight Mile wasn't authentic. 
as in terms of a representation of the artistic and battle rap scene. Do I think Eminem lived in a trailer and his mama did all those things and whatever? No, but the, the but the core of what they were talking about, Devil's Night existed in Detroit. Did it not? <clears throat> yes, Devil's Night exists in Detroit, brother. Okay. Battle rap. Hey, go back to the, the original too. point that we was making is okay. Stop always citing fictional movies in order to sub Absolutely in order not. to support Absolutely your not. in order to support your argument. Absolutely, it's a not. bad it's a bad faith move for you because it's not always an accurate representation of what's really Absolutely happening not. in that specific thing. Absolutely not for you. It is, <sighs> but what if it is? Like all movies aren't. But what if we're talking about a movie that is? Like, ATL, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start citing like movies. What I cite, what I cite, what I cite, what I cite. Final thoughts on this. I got you. I got you, Jr. And I, and I, I respect that, and I, and I pipe down respectfully. <laughs> what I cite <laughs> is relevant to the conversation always. And it's always I'm always thinking about how I could tie this back in to 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 the common man and to what the people would be able to relate to. So yes, if I sir. cite Minister Society, if I cite Boys, I ain't out here citing uh, I'm gonna get you sucker <laughs> or don't be a menace in the hood. I'm citing what people relate to, bro. What we talking about? Yeah, I mean it could literally. These are movies but... based on real experiences. We act like biopics don't exist. There are genres. It's it's called like historical fiction or realistic. Oh, fiction. Jesus Christ! These Bro, are real even, things, or like books, based on a true um, even, experience. Or but anything that could be you based, know, like, like you could be adapted. loosely basing anything off of anything. Bro, even books. That's like look. look okay. If you look at um, if you look at <laughs> Malcolm X the movie, and you read this book that was written by his daughter, it's not an accurate depiction of his life. Anton, the, the thing one is, by Alex Haley is the closest that we got. Anton, that movie is, is the closest that we got to Alex Haley's autobiography of Malcolm X, bro. Something can be historical fiction or realistic fiction without actually being something that like happened. So, like to Chicago's point, you know, it can be a movie or a show or whatever that is realistic. Did it actually happen? No but it's realistic based on the time, the place, the situations, whatever, things that could actually happen. These are actual literary things that are true. I'm a teacher, I teach them. Like this is not just a figment of Chicago's imagination. <laughs> it's a real cool. thing. I'm Historical with it. Historical fiction, realistic fiction. These are, these are real. And I'm amazed that you even supporting this narrative, Kay, because you're the one, you're the data queen. As a matter of fact, Kay don't even subject herself to anything that anybody say unless it's a real jerk. Like unless it's see how we're just trying to change something and no, take Kay, the you you conflict that was being said. We the point that I'm making, Kay, you and you know what I'm saying. The it. point that I'm making is that get tired of it. you're there picking you. and choosing okay, when you want to subject yourself to the right information depending the on the subject that we're talking what? about because. You say Anton. cite your sources and is it a scholarly Anton. source and all of this other type of stuff you when you want to subject, you won't even let Amira say oh, look, look, that the majority of women file for divorce and we all know that that's true. You'll tell her to okay, cite Anton. her scholarly source okay, before you even Anton. subject yourself to the idea of it. No, don't try to slow me down now. You will make Anton. her cite her cite her scholarly source and don't go to that one that everybody go to on Google is exactly what it is that you say. You make her cite now, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden it makes sense. Interesting. Okay, but like I said, realistic fiction and historical fiction are real genres. That's what Ooh, I'm saying. I'm Look it. it up. Hold on, hold on. I got a side note. Hey, Courtney, you Look just reckon so Ciroc out the bottle? Why I gotta be so <laughs> was no, that, no, no, was that Ciroc? That's what? a lot of damn nosy. No, no, no. I own this net. Let me see that no, bottle, uh, Miss Gordon. Why do you do this? Let, let me just. Oh, that's a rock. That's a rock. <laughs> like, do y'all talk on the phone? Uh, man, like, I knew. I told you, so HBCU. I'm telling you, you got wow. the bottle. Wow. Wow. Let's go. Logic. <laughs> uh, <sighs> you guys just turning in. Welcome to a lot of people. Let's talk.
Logic the feds, man. Did y'all all have like a group they teach us that to party hard and get them, party get them likes up. Also they subscribe did. to the channel. No, what what you say? Going on it either. Going. Hold on, what's going on? I'm like, what? Like what? Nothing. I don't even know. What, what happened? What's going on? Where where are we even at? I don't even know. I'm sorry, Kay. Go ahead. Did, were you saying something? Let the church say amen. Amen. I'll say amen. amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> just trying to just trying to figure amen. out, you know. Ooh, I haven't even gotten to the sermon yet. <laughs> we went down a path. From the book of Lot Keith, chapter to seven, verses six through ten. Now, but Yo, look at Mr. Logic. Look at Mr. Logic. Mr. I did not do hey. it. Mr. Logic, no, no drinking in the church. It, Mr. Wow. Logic, no drinking in the church. He got his thumb over the what's the name? Well, at least you got Don Julio. Okay. Okay. Well, HBCU too. I drink. At I least you got Don Julio. I am not drinking the rock. Okay, okay. Logic, don't be acting like UGA. Okay, okay, don't be up there wilding right. out, Order. man, up in Athens. Order. They be wilding out at UGA. Let's move on to the next topic, y'all. Let's move on to our final topic. Uh, I need I need eye contact from all from all uh, members of the congregation. Eye contact. N nobody looking down. Nobody uh with the fingers. Just, okay, we wait on you. Why y'all don't want me to talk? Every time I talk, it's a joke that y'all somebody got to say. Like, why what's the joke? What happened? What's going on? I'm just what saying. Like, about? I was talking to Anton about something for real, and it's <laughs> why do you care if I'm looking at the screen or not? What just happened there? I have no idea what's going on. Yo, is it a full moon out here tonight? No, it's not. Something is wrong with y'all. I think it's, it's, a, it's been tonight. weird. It's, it's been right. weird for a while. We should we should have prayed today. Like, what's wrong? <laughs> I agree. I'm better chill. Y'all know Q been trying to put her two weeks in for the longest. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to call HR. This man. is not about me. This is not about Shout me. Shout out to Mr. <laughs> Coleman. Yeah, I think it is a wax and give us. <laughs> Shout out to Mr. Coleman. Okay. What's today? Is it the 13th? <laughs> it's not Friday, though. No, nope. Uh, It starts at the 13th, yeah. Anyhow. It's Friday the 13th? Yeah, anyhow. Uh, appreciate you guys. Hit the like button. See the green game. Moving on to our final topic. We're going to open game up. Game. Open up the lines. So make sure you guys are cammed up. You will not get on the platform if you are not cammed up. And we may have you do some additional things. Nothing that's uh, disrespectful, but may you do some additional things in the back room, like uh, jump on, jump on one foot, wave your hand, things of that nature. Logic, yeah. logic, we need crazy. to share. <laughs> it's crazy. It, it I up. love Don Julio. So hey, like, wait, <laughs> I thought he had the thumb over that joint. He going for real. Now he's looking at for real. And while we're while we're taking a little break, I just want to shout out to Kay Yo, for sending me my gear. Hey man, be, oh, I, I thought so. Okay, I, about oh, to say, I got, got it. it. Got it. Avenue Thank in you. Love Did you. Get you. The multiple packages of different. Yes, and oh. I can just take them with me to work. It's so cute. Thank you. I'm so excited. What is the last question? <laughs> <laughs> trying to damn. We mad. Get it out. We just. I'm happy. <clears throat> he wants some popcorn. Okay, y'all. Like the last question. Um, give you a little context real quick. So you know how you meet somebody in the beginning and you find out things uh, like much later, personality, um, baggage, boundaries, and so forth. So the question is, should boundaries and baggage be discussed more in the beginning when dating? Should boundaries and baggage be discussed more in the beginning when dating? A lot of times people feel like they're just wasting time. So if you just put it all on the table in the beginning, that's something that we should be doing. I'm going to start I with you, so. Island Girl Q. I feel so. I feel like your boundaries and your baggage should be discussed um, early on because let's say it's something that it's a non-negotiable with me. I would rather know it up front than six months down the line. So I'm definitely for that because it's very important. Why waste your time or waste his time? So... I definitely agree because I mean it depends what people are doing if they're dating with attention or dating to marry that's that's where you kind of figure out what you're wanting to do yeah but yeah but like what if you don't consider it being baggage now, give me some examples of what you would consider as baggage um a baggage is um or boundaries bound like I don't want to deal with an uh a baby mama that's really disruptive or anything of that nature. So people's boundaries and baggage is different. 
So that's why I said, just be honest from the get-go, what's going on in your life or what do you think is a problem? And then that person can assess it. Cause I might be like, okay, baby mama, bad uh, how she is, but to another person that might not be a problem. So everybody's different. That's why communication is very important upfront. So, yeah. All right. That's the luggage logic. I'm sorry. Should the boundaries and baggage, <laughs> should boundaries and baggage be discussed more in the beginning when they, um, weird. Yes and no. I think you should discuss boundaries, but this current culture of females, if you discuss baggage, man, she's going to be putting you on IG. It's the social media age. So I, th- I say you, uh, you to discuss your boundaries and then ease in with the baggage. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a, that's not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't expect a woman to do that to me. I wouldn't expect, you know what I'm saying? Um, Kata told me she had uh, titty surgery the first day we go on a date. You know what I'm saying? That's something for a later on. And I'm just using you for example. See, don't be taking it personal, okay? Titty surgery. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just saying, okay. look. You said titty surgery. Not a breast baggage. Not a breast baggage. Like to interrupt me, man. Bill? Do you need a shot? Yeah, all right. Let me finish my at the point, though. Yeah. But no, I mean, certain things should wait. And I think that that I mean, that person got to earn that from you. You just don't put everything out there, especially in this society. But I think you should discuss boundaries and details. You should let them know, hey, look, this is what I don't blase, blase, what I don't like. But everything that's the that might be considered baggage from you, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I think that'll come along with the conversation. But I think you should discuss kids up front. You know what I'm saying? Because that's you're fucking with other people's lives, not only yours. That's it. All right. Miss Courtney Michelle, should boundaries and baggage be discussed more in the beginning? Um, I agree with Mr. Logic. Um, I definitely think, you know, boundaries is definitely something that you should say up front. Um, and then, you know, the baggage, that's a slow process because everybody don't need to know. And it's, it might not even last two, three days before I'm, you don't need to know my baggage if we only dating and it's not serious. So, but not on a first date. <clears throat> like I said, I think it takes time to get that stuff out. I don't think a first date is going to be like, what's going on, Courtney? Nice to meet you. I'm a Capricorn. I got athlete's feet. You know, you don't want to say all that. You got to <laughs> ease it on up, you know? So, yeah, I agree with Mr. Logic. So I have a, I have a question, Courtney. What if a guy had, let's say, five kids and four different baby mamas? Would you want to know that up front? or let you ease into it well maybe maybe because i feel like that's baggage to me i feel like everybody's definition of baggage you you would you consider that baggage before you answer my question yeah i would consider that baggage but i would consider that baggage okay, yes so- but that's also you so that's a you know a conversation usually those are conversations that you have prior to a date unless it's a blind date but I've never been on a date where I don't know the person at all or I haven't looked at their IG no. or Facebook. So some of this stuff I already know before I go on a date with you. So I'm not just going on a date and I don't know, you know, so what's your name? No, some of the stuff I already know beforehand. Yeah. So that'd be something that I would have to know before I even go on a date with you. All right. So isn't that, but, but that's baggage though. That's baggage before the date. So that's stuff that you would want to know prior. So well, that's actually like saying that, that like, you wouldn't like want I, the baggage to be hold held off on. Of. But see, that baggage well, well, is something is, that you well, can't, like you can't change that you have right, kids. I can't, you, and it's gonna affect your life. It's gonna, you know, what I'm no, saying. That's, that's why I said some people's boundaries and their baggage is different. Like I would see that as baggage. Mister Logic, would you date a woman that has five kids and four baby mo- baby daddies? Is that baggage to you? Do you want to? You don't know my answer for real. Yes. Be honest. Yes. Okay, so okay. would you want to know that information prior to going on a date? Uh, yeah, yeah. My, I, 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 I know I said question, I would want to know that though, but is you okay. do you want to know you why I want to? I mean, why would I date somebody well, with five kids? Well, no. hold on, Mister Logic, because I think it's important too. Because before you go on a date or you accept a date from anyone, there's usually some stuff that you're going to know. Period. So, mm-hmm. have you, Islander, ever been on a date which you knew nothing about the person? Not even there. I mean, nothing. No, just popped up. Was like, what's no, up? I'm here. Qu- no, 
No, but the question is, should boundaries and baggage be discussed hold on, when dating. more in the beginning? Yeah, beginning well, when dating. When... So beginning, like when you're going on a date, that's dating, right? I'm, I'm assuming, yeah. I don't know people's definition so, of dating. It's in so order... weird nowadays. So, yeah. so it, I guess in order to... In order to be dating, you have to go on a date. So there's some men that I'm not going to date, period. So when I'm dating, and then that's the process of me getting to know them a little bit more. But a lot of stuff is already set before I even say, yes, I'm going on a date with you. Mm, okay. Kayla. No, I didn't, you didn't get it. <clears throat> no, I yeah, get it. I, mean, I get. On, I get what y'all saying. A, a date, a date on, is on, not Kayla. dating. Though, hold on, come on, Kayla. Me. Let me make sure they're done. Oh, they're mm-hmm. done. I mean, it's rough, okay. y'all. Y'all good? I mean, I mean, I I'm just discussing it as I would want to know the baggage up front. Period. Before talking, I mean, before dating, before actually meeting the person. So it's not actually. Oh, let me know mm-hmm. the baggage when we're going on multiple dates. No, let me know prior before even going on spending time. As men, I feel like y'all men would want to know because you're wasting money on a date with this chick like that you would want to know her baggage but yeah. you know that's so just before me. a date you're gonna like look before i go on a date with you how many kids you got do you own your own home do you got bad credit uh do you have holitosis have you ever had an std um you do are you a felon tell me about your mama what's wrong with her do you got mama daddy issues uh was your daddy there have you ever been touched so- as a child Actually, oh, I had those conversations. All that before a date. I, I, no, no, no. I actually, I, so I've only really been in long distance. So I'm having conversations before I'm actually going on a date and meeting them. So those deep conversations, I feel like it's very important to have because I believe in energy transference. I don't believe that men and women should be going on dates every other day or every once a week with a different person. You want men, men and women, you should be like, okay, let me, I, I, we see interests, we're compatible in certain sectors. She is valuable of a date. He is valuable of date and being around my presence. So I do have those, those conversations prior because why would I want to waste a man's time and vice versa? So I, de- I definitely think it's very important to talk about that because one thing he might not like about me and I'm not thinking that uh, it's a boundary and vice versa. So I think it's very important to have those conversations. But people don't like to have those conversations. They would want to rather have it in person, which is very understandable. But right. I just like to have it all over the phone. And, and see, it's easy for men to see the telltale signs, but it's harder for the women to see it with men. Like I can tell if you got kids. Like I said, you got car seats in the back. You got pacifiers <laughs> everywhere. Like you can tell when a woman got kids. You know what I'm saying? They got the little the play pins in the front yard, toys everywhere. Like you could know it'll be telltale signs about that woman. Where a man, you wouldn't necessarily know that. You know what I'm saying? How will you tell what telltale signs you'll tell that man got kids? His kids probably ain't with him. But I can call you at nine o'clock at night. And you be like, hey, let me go. I got to go put um, little Junior to bed. Damn, how many kids you got? You know what I'm saying? But look, <laughs> it, it's, it's a difference. That's a double standard that come to it, though. It's not a double standard. I think it's just something that women got to vet. And men know these tricks. We vet y'all all the time before y'all even know. We can tell y'all got kids. Sometimes we can tell y'all look, um, y'all jogging pants. You know what I'm saying? It have a little throw up on it. You know what I'm saying? What? what? Men, I don't know why men don't pay attention. Oh, you date you date women with young kids, huh? No, I don't. I'm just saying don't you just look, the the look, look, the a woman with no kids is not running around with a stain on her sweatsuit. Tell me I'm lying. But if a woman got kids, she rushing, she moving, you go, you know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, it might be something simple. She might sit on some twinkies in the car, and then now you're gonna sit, you know what I'm saying? Look. Y'all want people to tell y'all lies and somebody tell y'all the truth. Y'all don't like it. <laughs> I never walked out with no stain or no Twinkie on my ass. I was just about to say, if I got a stain <laughs> on my pants from, that person from, got from Starbucks, problem. I mean, I got kids. Bro, look, look. Hey, all we got to do, I'm I telling kids. you. I, see, look, this how I am. I go to Walmart and I film it and I will prove my points correct. See, I won't. And I see, I send a footage to Jr. He can cut it up, but I guarantee you, <laughs> I must look for certain things, for certain stereotypes, and I say, look, and I have the stereotype going in, and I prove it right. I guarantee you, I'll be over fifty percent. You on the bet? 
Because you can you tell. Go to Walmart and look for as soon as I have no it. idea what's happening right now. As soon as we go to Houston, man, we uh going to a Walmart. We're going, we're going to I'm not survey. going to Houston. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like going to Can't Walmart. Can't cancel me. I know too. But there's a whole website about people in Walmart. So I mean, okay, but I've never you see some interesting things in the Walmart. That's I don't okay. like going in there anymore. <laughs> not the Walmart. <laughs> All right, uh Kayla, go ahead. It's your boundaries and baggage we discussed more in the beginning. Um, I think boundary, I think people say that they discuss boundaries, but I don't think people actually do. I definitely think boundaries should be discussed more. Deal breakers should be discussed more. Um, and they should be acknowledged because sometimes people discuss them and they think, oh, you know, make it work. Let's be for real. You, you just saying that because you lusted for that person, but in reality, mm, probably won't work. Right. Um, as far as baggage there's like levels to baggage i think like kids is like a low level because it's like i don't know how you can have a conversation with kids with someone that has kids and the kids not come up like you don't have to ask them their kids will come up like what are you doing i'm going to pick up my son from from school like it it, it naturally will come up so look like, as far as kids that's on the low end of baggage but then like when you then you then it starts to get more like deeper and heavier and heavier when you start talking about family issues where you abused things like that that is like i think farther into the relationship but i personally would want to know if you early like kids i would want to know like if you have had any struggles with any type of addictions um whether it may be substances gambling anything of that nature i want to know if that's something that you struggle with like just just as soon as people want to know about the kids right but as far as like deep things, like maybe you were abused or like issues and things like that. Um, like, I understand that that's like not something you just tell people. And so I, I understand like why that may take a little bit more time for you to share with me. But those other things like those the, that that, you know, the, that other kind of overarching baggage, like kids, like addiction, because once you're an addict, you're like always, always uh, striving to stay sober. Right. <laughs> So those are things that I want to know early on and I definitely think should be discussed um, early well, on. Well, see, you're not being realistic. That's just like you saying that you'll tell a man you got a train ran on you. You're not going to tell that man that. It's not the same as a drug addiction. I'm just, no, I'm just saying it, it's, it's certain man. things that, that, you know what, men are not going to know. And then even, if, even if that man was to ask you that, I expect you to lie. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't I want expect you to tell me the truth. And but, but well, how's that going to work? Like, like if SD, we start SDT, I mean STD history, all that kind of stuff. That's you, 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 you shoot for the skies. Ain't nobody going to tell you all that. But I'm saying once if you if you lie and you say no, I don't have any issues with addiction, and then y'all been dating six months, and then now it comes out that you do. You think that? I mean, me personally, that's not going to work because now I just see you as a liar. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how are you going to not reveal it if they ask you directly? You're going to lie? Like, how, if, if you really want to be with them, how are you going to lie to their face? And then think that you're going to tell them later, and then it's going to be cool. Would you tell me you got a train ran on you? <laughs> like, no, I, I'm uh, serious. This is insane, bro. I don't see no, how it's no, comparable I'm just saying, to that's something that if somebody's not you won't tell me that though. That works. I, I got it. You I'm want gonna... somebody to tell you on the first date <laughs> that they I'm had a problem out. with drugs. I'm opt out of this. Well, my, <laughs> I, I, per my observation, I have seen where early on my friend's husband told her <laughs> hey, that, she had, that he had an he had a past issue with addiction. She knew early on, before they even was dating long, before they got married, she knew early on that he was a recovering addict. He had been sober six years. She knew. I'm opting out, Rilla. Really. Answer my question, I'm opting out, Rilla. Nah, logic. Yo, I thought you about I to say she had a train. Yeah, no, no, I can't, right I can't here, answer Anton. that question because that is not accurate or true. It had nothing to do with me. I don't want to be involved. Okay, so ask somebody else. Good grief. Can you all hear me? Yeah, we can. Hey, I love is this a Hi, part everyone. is this a part of the headphones or is that a head? It, it, I just added the bond. Yes. Oh, thank you. Black women so creative. I love that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say the show is so funny. Mr. Logic, you are such a comical addition. So thanks for coming on because you're just so funny. Um I yeah. wanted to as an HBCU graduate. Hey, um, I just wanted cool. to say to you specifically, hey, boo. Um, 
I went to Howard. Hey, you yeah. know they call they call it the real HU, the illustrious Howard you know. University. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Um, what? <laughs> Nothing. Is there on. a delay? I think yeah. there's a delay. Um, but yeah, I wanted to say to you, Mr. Logic. Um, mm. It's quite unfortunate that a black man is willing to put down our own universities. I see you have all this UGA paraphernalia in your background, and it's that mentality. We're never going to uplift our own community and our own um, higher education with that kind of mentality. So if you're not willing to send your son and promote these institutions and how can we ever expect to see I don't know who's in the background laughing it's probably you Anton but how can we ever expect to see that growth if we don't uplift our own okay so, can I ask your question then ma'am yes go ahead okay how can we grow if we don't tell the truth so if I sit here and I tell you that you know what yes these historical black colleges is the greatest experience in the world Half of them don't get pregnant before they turn a freshman. And I don't what tell you. The, you you got to stop. Oh, so oh, you got to stop. It went from, I, respect, I, 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 I can feel a passion because y'all went to these schools. So I no, understand that. though. that's not true, though. Where are you okay, getting right, that from? Hey, look, like, look, what, I'm talking what, about how, okay, uh, Ms. Kayla. What, 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 you know what, study, what study are you getting Okay, from? hold up. Well, let me finish, though. Let yeah, me finish. What data that you're getting? What data that shows... The number of women that get pregnant at HBCUs versus the number of women. Hey, but let me finish. Let me let me talk to the lady. Okay. All right, there you go. Because I'm finna give you the bulldog award. Because you know what I'm saying you've been a bulldog this whole show, uh, Kayla. But let me get back to you, ma'am. This show. All right. So, and I'm playing with you, ma'am. Come on, I got you. Got to have sense of humor. But the fact that you have even the extra paraphernalia for your school. It's All just, right, look, you don't even know that's my school or not, but we're not going to talk about that. All right. I can see the bulldog right behind your head. Oh, man. Can I finish asking the lady question? Go ahead. So, ma'am, the thing about when you're dealing with these historical black colleges, I understand that it's a pride thing and I'm with it. Do I want these these historical black colleges to be the top? I do. Well, but that starts not, by saying, okay. But if they're not, Shouldn't we be adults and say, hey, this is where it's not at so we can up that standard? That's a valid point, but you are not acknowledging that starts somewhere. So the fact that you're on this public platform saying that HBCUs are subpar, right? Think about all the people. I don't know your the listenership, but think about the young people that are watching and saying, you know what? Whoever's listening to Mr. Logic. I don't know why, but they might say, you know what? Let me not even entertain HBCUs because he's saying they're subpar. And if I send my daughter to an HBCU, she might end up pregnant. Like you have to speak with that um, reverence for our own schools. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we're not even going to uplift HBCUs, who will? So to say that, like to have such a negative outlook, and I'm not saying that you, I mean, if, everything that you said didn't even come from factual basis. It was just your personal experience at you know, one university and we had two people on here who just gave counter experiences. So, you know, we can't go based on that, but mm. to just completely downplay the, the thing, though, schools. Is I expect them to listen to the context of the discussion. Mm -hmm. As I said, when I was talking about it, I was talking about it in the perspective of finance field. And I said, okay. what, what did I say that I, I did? I did research. Okay. It so didn't see, see, I, thought, see, when, I didn't think I get, you said well, you did, I don't remember you If you that. get so emotional, and whoever didn't hear me say There's research, me. the best finance school, mm -hmm. it's the thing. Somebody can say historical black college is subpar, and then everybody get into their feelings and miss the whole context of what I said. If Miss Courtney can prove me that it's mm -hmm. an HBCU that has the best nursing program, then my daughter want to go to school to be a nurse. I would not consider that. She just put me on to something. So I don't care about if it's a historical black college or not. I want to put my kids to get the best opportunity. I understand that. But so let's take it out of the context of the finance of the nursing. This um, 
the football player from high school who decided to go to Jackson State to work with Deion Sanders. Um, something Hunter. Exactly. What I was gonna say. Everybody was criticizing him. You're supposed to go to like some state, some college of Florida, and decided to instead go to HBCU. Why don't we uplift and talk about how that man's decision is now bringing traction and eyes and dollars into an HBCU where he could have very well went to a different program with, you know, they already have recruits, they already draft into the NFL and have maybe a better pipeline into the NFL, but he made the choice. I'm going to go to HBCU and work with Deion Sanders and put well, on why, for my HBCU. Why, why can't we have that same mentality? Like, like if we're so quick to dismiss and cast out our own schools. How can we ever? But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, to you gotta break up the point. A, make the point valid. Is this is this had nothing to do with the conversation? You just making a point it's right an now. An example of it's not the same thing. But what I if? But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But bro. it's an example of taking you why have an opportunity you, to go somewhere else. That why don't have a you better create football a platform program. and have a conversation about Dion about <laughs> homeboy mm-hmm. going to the college? It's okay if other people don't agree with you or got a completely different preference. You can't. I understand you can't, that. You can't push. You said, "Why don't we?" And ain't no we. Is you, and so you can have a discussion based off of how you feel about historical black colleges. And if you want to, ex- you know, expound on that experience, feel free to. But it's cool for other people to have preferences, and if people ain't trying to rock with that because they don't want their son to go there, based off of the fact that their son is trying to get in a specific program. Why? Why are you butthurt about it? I'm not butthurt. I'm. It's, I'm just giving my opinion because that's what people call in to do. So I was just giving my opinion on it. And I know, I wish but that I'm giving my way. opinion is now based way? off of what you said. And and my opinion you on you is that why are you? Why are you not acknowledging? Because you use that word. You use acknowledge, right? Why did you not acknowledge Mr. Logic's point in that? Historical black colleges don't rank don't rank very high when it comes to finance programs. Why you ain't acknowledge that? That's fine. And no, I asked a specific, specific question. I don't Why remember didn't him you saying that. It? That's okay. That you know, but he didn't say specifically that his son wanted to do finance. I think he just hypothetically brought up the subject. He, of that's exactly finance. what he said. Yeah. Hey, babe, yeah. I'm finna give you the board. That's exactly what he said. Look, yeah. hey, because you too. ain't listening to me. nothing. Like I That's said, exactly you know what he said. You didn't, okay, my like, point, my like, point I said yeah, earlier, one at a time, y'all, one at a time. All you heard was that the historical black college is subpar, and it triggered you. You didn't listen to no, none of the context. Uh, apparently so. If you didn't know that I said that, that's the first thing I told Courtney Michelle. What? Okay. I missed that part. There was a lot in that subject, and that that topic went on for quite some time, so I didn't. Yeah. I don't oh, remember, remember that. But you can stand up for your HBCU girl. No, that's not right. right. Let it let it look, I'm, I'm with you. And right. That's right. Get on him for not doing that to HBCU. Well, Lainey, you can here's say the whatever problem. Here's the, here, here's, here's the let thing. me say this, because he's looking and was comparing it to Ivy League schools. And for us to say that HBCUs are subpar when it comes to financing is not necessarily true either. How many thousands, thousands, thousands of schools that have finance programs in it? Even if an HBC ranks one of top 100 out of 50,000, that's not subpar. So that we is have subpar. <laughs> you have that's to understand. What did you learn about? What, see, this is what an HBCU would teach you. HBCU teaches you what definitions are. So before we use words, we have to understand what they mean. Subpar means below average. If it's in a top 100 out of 50,000, sir, that's not subpar. See, if you went to an HBCU, you, you would know that. Okay. How much how right. that's that's why that's so we have uh, to use words. College is not in the top 100. We got to use, well, I don't know. I haven't researched All right, then. Well, don't, stop, don't, don't talk about it, then. I was just uh, with you. Okay. This, this one at a time, y'all. One at a time. It's a, it's a point, darling. It's a point. And I don't know. I've researched. And I don't know if you can tell me right off the hand uh, the top 100 schools of finance. I doubt you can. Can so I just break what you're trying to say? Time. But let's let's use so terminology weird, in the correct way. So the sorry, part Courtney, part. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, no, go ahead. Since we're bringing up research, I think it would be. I don't know if any of y'all like watch Joe Rogan. How he has like Jamie who like pulls up stats. I think that would be a cool addition to the show, Jr. If you had somebody in the background, like one of your trusted people and uh, your moderators in the chat or something like that. And they would just like pull up facts since um, sometimes we want to bring up stats 
thoughts and fact check them. I know Kay would love that. And I think um, we just found that person, of Lene. Speak- there you oh, go. No, I, I think no, we just found that person. I appreciate the offer. We don't <laughs> listen, no, Lene, you. but the problem but I do Lene. think that would be a good idea just to add more validity to the conversation. I know a lot of the stuff is like opinion, but when we do talk about, we, oh Lord, when y'all do talk about, you know, things and you're bringing up stats and numbers and data and how many marriages are um, filed by women or divorces are filed by women, things like that. It would be a good idea to have someone in the background who can like just pull up on the chat okay. the number okay. is and then okay. a sourced uh, stat or a source. Well, what about what about when we reference movies? Should we use that as a stat also? <laughs> good grief. Yes. And we should reference juice because that is a historical Ah, got you. But, but see, um, shout out to Rodimus. Um, <laughs> st- oh, hey, Miss Quint- no, no, to your point, 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 point Steel. Oh, hey, shout out to Rod- shout out to Bishop. I'm finna be Rodimus. You finna be Bishop. <laughs> and, sh- and shout out to <laughs> Steel's mom. Yards, you got to say it with everybody. Quit. I was just saying, congratulations, Rella, on the engagement. Oh, super happy for you. Hey, can I shoot one more thing at a J? Super upset for me yeah. spreading our business. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, go hey, hey, Miss, 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 um, no. Womack, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I'm totally with you, right? Mm-hmm. But see, when I said that my son is soon going into finance, right? Mm-hmm. And I said that I'm going and looking to select the top schools for my son, right? Mm hmm. So wouldn't you assume that I had the advantage of research in compare to in comparison to you? I never said you had any advantage in research and I didn't speak as if I no, did no, 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 no. I'm saying if I say this is my point I'm making, right? Mm-hmm. And then I bought up my son as an example that he want to go to the finance schools and I'll make sure he want to go to the top finance schools, right? Okay. Wouldn't you just assume a little bit that I did the research and probably you should have did it before you came up? Well, you didn't offer any stats. So if you had done research instead of your reference being, you know, your personal experience at HBCUs so it, 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 so versus I'm, is this the not a other stat? one? This is not Say a stat? No historical black colleges in the top 25. That's not a stat? Okay. Maybe. I don't know. But you, <laughs> oh, you got it. I'm done. <laughs> That, How would she know but off you the didn't top of her head if that was a stat? Like, yeah, she, yeah. How but you're not literally as, what are you, you never about? spoke as if it was a stat. You were saying if I pull oh, up you can't do Google, this. if you pull up Google, Courtney, and tell me there aren't any HPCs in the top 100, you didn't um, pose it as it being factual. So the way you were speaking, giving um, your personal examples about ROTC. And if you research, this is what you'll find. And you didn't speak as if it was um, factual. So I didn't know. And I didn't research. Y'all just either, emotional over but... y'all schools. Just say that, bro. If you That's say really that, I can, I can be emotional down. about it, but I'm not. Y'all just emotional offering. about y'all schools. That's it's not, not emotional. No, not, it's it's just, when not. you use a word out of context or you don't know the definition, and you just, that's correction. That's not emotion. I just think um, ultimately we should not shit on our own institutions that's all but um, i got i got I, i'm just curious well, i know you don't identify as black and you like don't no, no. Whoa, color, whoa, 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 whoa. I, i'm sorry he ma'am that. Rilla, he has said that that wait, he, wait, wait, wait. you said what he said, that again. said you don't but identify as black you don't address. see color is you, black you haven't said is, that you identify as black you a color? And HBCU is a black institution. You a color. And you've said that you don't identify, you don't label things in black and white. So I get that's some, not something that resonates sure about with that? you. I I'm, said things are very black and white. Either you, It's either or. That's literally what I said. However, I don't ident- identify as a color. You're right. Okay. That's my. That's what and I was You went saying. to an HBCU. This is what they taught you? No, they we really doing semantics but... for real. Well, <laughs> Courtney said but... that words mean things. You yeah, ain't do that when Courtney God. said it. Well, that's not what he said. Wait, 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 wait. You ain't check so... Courtney when she said it. Then all of a sudden, when I want to start digging in a little bit with my Black community college, wait, 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 wait. When I want to start digging in with my community college education, a... when I want to start digging in with my community college education, you don't want to have a conversation. Words no, don't mean because you're comparing. No you're comparing Black how we refer to African Americans. That's something we created within this country. 
Courtney's referring to specific <laughs> diction. Like she's reser- res- I'm referring to rhetoric that he's using that is totally different. Like so we her all rhetoric know that, that she's using in order to quote me. It says black slash African American. The, the rhetoric that she's using in order to quote me don't matter though. Yeah, because that's not what he said at all, Kayla. The rhetoric that she's using in order to quote me don't matter, though, right? It matters, Kayla. She's I, quoting that man. I could have sworn How? On he knows he's a black man. He, he knows he's Af- of African descent. So it's like, it's semantics at this? this point because we know black yeah, means African American means black. That's why I said, why you are we doing semantics? That's well, we not fair, time. Kayla. You see the, this? The young lady literally just said, I know you don't identify as black, and he has never said that. So... I, so I no 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 no, no. And you know, but wait wait wait, wait. but words don't mean nothing though. We supposed oh to skip over God. that, but then words mean something when we argue in semantics when it comes to your little college, huh? Right, but then just like you say, Mr. Logic's example, it's okay for him to use his personal example, whatever example he feels like, to make his point. But then when Lene comes on and use an example of Jackson State and and Deion Sanders, it's like, oh, we don't care about your experience. We don't care about the blah blah blah. So you can't you can choose when you want it to be for you or for your your homeboys, and then try to chastise women when they come on the show to speak their oh, opinion no, and give thing. their example to support their opinion. So no, gotta, what I'm telling you is that she no, you gotta she, pick one though. What I'm telling you is that she a grown woman and she don't need you in order to speak for and her. And I don't so care what, what you're so, saying. I so said let what me I said. so let you me have the conversation me, with her and I said because it. I'm sure she don't mean, she don't need no lawyer. Deal. I know That's y'all both graduated from the same you school, can't do but, anything else. but calm Believe. down for a second and let me have the conversation with her and don't get emotional. But I said what I said. Okay, cool. And we don't care what you say now that you said what you said. Let's move on because this ain't got nothing to do with you. Nobody asked your we opinion on this in the first place. We can stay here. If, if Lene wants to stay here, we can stay here. What does that have to do with you speaking Again, for her? Like I I'm said, talking like to I her. Said, I said, I don't always I feel like it. I don't need permission. I'm talking so, to her. She a grown so woman. She don't know how to defend herself. I said herself. about Lene. If she wants to use whatever experience she wants to use to support this her. This don't point, even got nothing to do with you. What are you even talking about? That in regards to anything. What does this have to do with you? But Kayla, it wasn't it's about her. Like she that. misquoted that man. Okay, now that you said interview. it, can you please let me and her Hold have on, the conversation? What did you say, Rilla? I, I, I just real quick. Rilla, answer. no, stop, stop, stop. Don't entertain this shit. <laughs> Why are you even entertaining this? Like, we being too nice and we too courteous. You against Don't entertain this shit, Rilla. Often, so what are you like... talking about? We're not going to keep on entertaining this nonsense. We are, though. We are though. If you don't want to, you can go. Anton, what is who can go on the show? What's stop, the stop. Name? Who can go? Come on, you. You just said you don't feel like entertaining it. Come on. And I'm not leaving. So, what are we gonna do? Kayla, she you misrepresented that right? man, and we're gonna oh, keep talking, for right? Real, for real. I, I need her to admit this. She misrepresented that man's view. Okay. He said he don't identify as black, and he has never said this on this platform. And really, if, if ain't nobody, Rilla, else, Rilla, <laughs> we not, Rilla, 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 we're not Rilla, Rilla, we not talking about two this. Things, Rilla, two just stop. One, I don't need nobody to speak for me. I hear one, you. Just I, I don't respect that, bro. But I'm just telling you. I, okay, Rilla. Hold on, y'all. Can we let the guest talk? Can we let the guest, guest, talk? Let the guest, guest talk? talk? She got something to say. She got something to say. Go ahead. Two things. So just how Rilla stepped in for Anton and was defending Anton's point. That's what Kayla was doing. So if we're gonna like, let's not interrupt, then let's keep that same energy across, that's all. Secondly, I could have sworn on several streams that Anton, back when um, like we were talking, y'all were talking about like, I think when Amir had like first came on the platform and there was like, um, not, uh, putting out, you know, the on code situation, all that stuff. I could have sworn on several occasions around that time, Anton, you had said things along the line of you not um, identifying as black, you not um, resonating with like black culture, you don't see race, you don't see color, you only identify with people based on character. So, based on that phrasing, maybe you did not verbatim say, I do not identify as a black man. Maybe you didn't. I thought you did. And if you did not say those words, then okay. But in totality, all of the things that you did say around that time, to me, interpreted as I don't um, identify as a Black man. And that's why I said that 
in this context of this conversation. Okay. Just just let me, pardon me real quick, and I'm I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a actually I'm a law I'm a, I'm gonna go black on my camera real quick. No, no, don't do that, Rilla. No, nah, because I think this is important because I think that's this is the second time there's a mischaracterization, and mm -hmm. I, I noticed the lady by me specifically. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma and, and and respectfully, because I noticed the lady. Hey, Rilla, 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 Rilla. No, 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 no. I don't need nobody. No, Can no. I, please, I, 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 do would, I would like to don't hear that. Speak. One, at time, has... one at a time. Right, don't speak right. for me. That's, that's my point. And that's just let it be. Hold on, hold on, hold Rilla. on, Rilla. That's really, not what be. I was doing. Okay, really, that's but just, I mean, just I okay, real. Just let them have a conversation, and then you can come in. No, nah, this conversation is hey, over. Hey, listen, if they gonna have a conversation, I don't over. need to come in. But this that's is over. Not what I was doing, and that's not what happened. And that's the second mischaracterization. And I just think it's interesting that the ladies nodded because I said I'm trying to set the 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 foundation. Like, yo, you misquoting the brother. I didn't come in and captain save him or try and speak for him Rilla, you even hey, entertaining hey, this conversation, conversation is is not necessary we're not going to explain hey. it. Gonna hey, is that a, what kind of mic Let's, is that can i ask you something really quick <laughs> look at the mic so you do identify as a black man jay came in looking like rick james <laughs> super not free. rick james super free. Free. what's going on jay yeah. Yeah, Lene, I don't yeah. think he wants hold to answer. Hold on, hold on, He's in hold his feelings, okay. so we're gonna hold move on. on. All right, I respect. We appreciate you. Kayla, you hear me? Hold on, hold on. Be careful. Hold Just on. relax. Just chill. What's on. good, Jay? Hold on. That was it. Yeah, it seems but, like you need to relax. Bye, Lene. Appreciate you. Thank you. Been a great show. Right, Have a good night. You. you too. Bye, Lene. And that's why I won't date nobody that went to him school from black college. We don't want you. Dreads, you know, no fam. This hey, I want to say, I want to say, uh, this is crazy. Uh, Anton, me. Kayla, I want y'all to chill out, y'all. This is my guys. I love y'all to death. Hey, boo. And, uh, I, I love everybody on the panel. I know sometimes topics can get out, make you feel some type of way, but in the moment. But I'd rather see you, you smile, Anton. You look real mad. <laughs> And, uh, I don't no, think she I'm, means I'm too much of a heart. You know when women be, well, you know when women be in a little state, they sometimes they say stuff that they don't recognize what they're doing at the moment. But I no, want to talk, you, you know, no, Jay, 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 Jay. The thing that <laughs> the thing that we gonna have to start doing as men <laughs> is not fucking entertaining this shit, bro. Real talk, because the more that you continue to have these conversations, like for me, I'm not. I'm not going to continue to entertain this unruly shit. Like, you know, either we going to do something or we going to, or we not. So, you know, we going to move accordingly and then however it play out is however it play out. And we just going right, to let, let the chips good. fall where they may, but ain't no need in going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. It's we, we move accordingly and that's, that's that. So, you know, let's keep it moving. <laughs> like Rick James. Yeah, you got that light on in the background. You got that light. Yeah, I do. You know, I got my light in, and got I got that. my light on. Uh, Wait, you know what? He looks oh, like my God. He kind of looks like Marshawn Lynch a little bit. Like I'm kind of getting some Marshawn vibes. All right, all right, all right. All right. Going, going what you Before got for y'all? Just roasting me. I thought I was looking good, and I come over and get roasted. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk about uh, when y'all say uh. When approaching women, do men think uh, is is men intimidated by women, especially successful women, and especially like in dating, like trying to approach them if they looking all good and stuff in designers. My thing is, I think when you dress, particularly women, because that's all who I date. No offense to the people that don't, uh, to the men that don't. Um, a lot of times, I think a lot of times women dress on trying to seek the men that they're looking for. So if they ran those type of designers. They want a man that's able to afford that. And I think that send a message to a lot of men. That I don't think the men uh, be intimidated by the women, but it's sending the message like, okay, she want that nigga with that bag. Opposed to a woman that's dressing normal. Me personally, I like a normal type of woman, no matter if she got the bag or not, because it, it, it exhibits a lot of confidence. Um, flashiness, is, to me, when you super flashy, you, you seeking approval. 
And when you when a lot of times when uh because I, I know a lot of rich people, when you think of rich white people, Bill Gates and all that, they don't dress like that. And they they rich and he rich and everybody. He don't dress like that. He wear old t shirt and busted up shoes. Majority of people I know got money, they don't dress like that. They wear you you when you look at them, if you don't know them, you think they bums. Um but when it comes to like men, if men is intimidated by women with success, I don't necessarily think is that's the case. I think a lot of times, particularly black people, I think a lot of times uh, when we think about black men and black women, when black women get become successful, a lot of times black women so used to being looked at, looked at, don't get me mistaken, looked at as powerless. So when they do get some money, they can't wait to use that money as a weapon. And what I mean by use that money as a weapon, when they do uh, date they black men, they can't wait to say, "How long, nigga? I don't need your broke ass. Uh, you just a you just a want, not a need." They want to put themselves on a pedestal. Anytime people got to put themselves on a pedestal when nobody else putting them on that pedestal, that's a self. That's they fighting demons within themselves. That's like self-esteem issues. You money shouldn't change. I understand money enhances who you are, but money shouldn't change your position. It, money shouldn't make you feel like you masculine because you got money. Even though money is a a, a resemble of money, a masculine money is resemble of masculinity. But as a woman. Instead of looking at your man like, okay, if this your man, this was who you chose. Instead of like, okay, bae, well, I got this money. You've been talking about owning your business. How about let's put this money on this business so you could blossom in and you can make more money than me. Put your man in the position. But I, a lot of times our women, they don't they don't think like that. They don't think. You can put your man in position if 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 you making three hundred thousand a year and he making fifty thousand a year, I'm quite sure you can you can teach that man to make six hundred thousand instead of why wouldn't you? Would you just want to just beat him down or you you want to feel powerful over him? You can put him on top. A man do it all the time. Men been black men been doing that. A lot of times the men I knew drug dealers and regular men that's working. You know, they meet a woman that's not really doing too well, and they everybody in the hood know oh, I could I could make her I could turn her to a boss. That's what goes on through our mind. Even though, you know, we when we first met you, you was wearing Walmart slippers gas station uh t shirts. Mm -hmm. But in our mind, we was like, Okay, I got the bread, I could put her in a position where she be shining. How come black women can't do the same thing for us? That's my question. Because once you give them that masculine role, you can't expect for them to get it back unless you take it back. So everything you said, you, you said drug dealers is working. That's hustling. So that's not no, 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 Mister Lies. I said, I said drug dealers or working men. They both had that uh, concept of putting when they look at a woman that don't really got much. Because you got to think before women start making money, black men always took care of busted women. Women that wasn't doing nothing, women that didn't really have much, and all this other stuff. See, this is the thing, though, bro. See, I, I look at it like, you know what? Don't nobody deserve nothing. Like, if, if right now we're in a situation where our women, that mean, like I said, they they control a masculine energy. And guess what? And guess what? Instead of, instead of uh, somebody uh, echoed. Somebody. Was that on me? All right. Instead of you know what I'm saying, us complaining about it, man, just let's take it back. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm pretty sure, like, I mean, it's just a double edged sword. And I heard everything that you said, and um I'm partially with it, but the big scheme of things is like these women are they the way they are is because of the system, but you gotta say it's because of black men too. And if we wanna if we wanna make any change besides just complaining, then guess what we'll do? We'll we'll 
we'll raise our masculine energy and then people don't consider masculine being a form of power. You know what I'm saying? Masculine is a form of power and power, money is a form of power also. Okay, do you believe, because what I've been witnessing in, in, in these modern times, nowadays, I think when you talk about masculinity, I think that was for the women from back in the day. You know, where men, where women didn't didn't have a problem with being at home, being feminine and stuff like that. Nowadays, w these women will push back on that. These women won't go get that bag. These women do not do not want you to control them. These women do not uh, find that, you know, they are said, but I know a lot of successful women, they purposely go choose men they won't go choose no men like y'all that's making, you know, making legitimate money. It's a lot of them that will, but it's a lot of them that, that won't. We we keep ignoring those women that want a man that, that got to depend on them so they can feel in control. A lot of times these women like to feel needed. And when they was dealing with men, when a lot of these women, when they was dealing with men that was um, uh, paying for everything, that's how the controlling started. So a lot of those women didn't did not want do not want to be under a man's control. They want to feel in control and in, in, uh, empowerment. They was conditioned from the society to tell them, "Girl, get your education to feel empowerment of yourself. You don't need no man. Girls rule the world and all this other stuff." So now they they, they adopted that mindset. So now, even though we do your thing, black man, you know, build yourself up and all this other stuff. But don't be surprised because I realized when I started making, I got more money. I got more black women when I was broke than I ever oh, did. Really? Making money. Like when I start, I wasn't rich or nothing. But when I start making a good amount of money every every year and taking care of my business and stuff, in my mind, when in a process of me uh, going through those stages, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be getting way more women than I. Talk used to them, Jay. I was I was thinking like I was like yeah I'm gonna get way more money than I was used to, but realistically I was getting more women when I was a street guy, when I had to depend on a woman, uh, when I had to ask a woman hey let me sleep on your couch for a couple of days, or you know ask them for a couple they feel like they a lot of these women when you know, when a man asks them for them, stuff Jay, they ain't ready for it Jay yeah they ain't ready man, they ain't but ready this. Like but this is, this is what this is what really be happening in the hoods that we do not that we just completely ignore. We gloss over like this don't exist. But this is what usually be happening in the hoods. And um, these women prefer a man that kind of need them. Like when I was doing good and stuff, and in my city, I, go ahead, my hey, go ahead, bring it home. Go ahead, bring it home. Okay. For us, my good home. not compared to y'all's. My good not compared to y'all's. But when I was doing good, as far as like I was one of the guys, like you know, people used to look up to and stuff like that. And women used to come over there and like they kind of didn't. They didn't know how. They didn't know how to deal with that. They so used to men that need them because you got to think. Women like to talk shit to men. Women like to cuss men out and to say all this other stuff. So. Women can't put me out. They love putting niggas out. They love to say, I'm not giving you this, give me my money back. I don't want to bought you this, I bought you that. They can do that with me. I got my own house, my own car, my own money, my own women. What else can you do for me? I pay my own bills. I can read my own goddamn book. So now what? what? So a lot of times, real a lot of times, real men, uh, a lot of these women, they don't want to be challenged by men like how y'all exhibiting with y'all character traits. Ain't nobody got time for that. Am I wrong on that, or because I see a lot of people quiet on here? Nah, I think up. I think I think we just uh, <laughs> mesmerized by that mic you got, man. <laughs> oh, for, drop the mic for us. Drop the mic for us one time. We we'll drop the mic for us. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that mic. I really I do. Know, you don't. Don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't like it because it's it was a karaoke <laughs> mic. Y'all don't like this. It's a karaoke mic. It's a karaoke mic. Well, mic. I just thought because it looks like you got it at a carnival. No, I you didn't get it. Echo. There you go again, Q. 
You can't like, just. You get asked her opinion. <laughs> you asked her opinion. I gave you. You throw the biggest shot. Why yeah. you gonna get up for karaoke? <laughs> no, you know the cars where they have those toys, the teddy bears, and the cutting mics. She means like Christmas. the fair. Right? Yeah, no, I had actually the, at the island yeah. carnival. At the state fair. I thought you were talking about like no, no, no. No, carnival. No, she's talking no, about no, like no, the no, state no, fair. fair. Like I'm a state fair or something yeah. like that. You always yeah. got something. Anton, what you what you got? You got a smoothie over there, bro? Yeah, he's drinking that smoothie. Anton, what's your thoughts on what I was saying? Uh, everybody's too quiet. I ain't never heard that. Before. You said a whole you said a whole bunch, Jay Prince. You was talking for a good 20 minutes Bars. straight. What's your heart? <laughs> And you actually, uh, you don't got no pushback on that cue. I honestly, I'm, I'm not about to lie to you. I kind of toned out after like three minutes. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm really exhausted. I'm really tired. I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm tired. Y'all can tell. Q, you ain't yeah. man. I'm, I'm over you. I'm really tired, and I've been I'm drinking water you. on this diet. Thank you. I'm done I'm with you, you too. Q. Good night, Q. <laughs> and Kayla, I want to let you know you. Uh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's the prettiest. Kayla is, uh, Kayla is uh, my cup of tea. That's who oh, I wow. use. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see Mr. Lodge. I'm coming to uh, clock blocking what we call clock blocking. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a, a whole other cock that's blocking, but it's okay. Hey, yeah, she's yeah, she's 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 single. <laughs> She's yeah, single. Shoot your shot. I appreciate that. I like Yo, Mr. Logic funny as hell. <laughs> so I said, I'll let this say. No, I'm just mellow. I'm just mellow with you, Kayla. Nah, no, Jay, he's Jay's cool. Jay, you know, Jay be messing around. Yeah. So what is y'all talking about right there? Damn, damn, you don't got no pushback from me? You, you really upset, huh? I'm not. <laughs> Kayla, I really upset that, your first you part. You are probably one of the most amazing people that we found on the internet. And I'm just thankful to have met you. Every single time you jump on the screen, you make my day. Man, I, I think, think that I you think are I'm amazing, bro. I think you're amazing. So I have no pushback for you whatsoever. <laughs> you think you've been, uh, wait, I don't know, Anton. You know, you got the person, I don't know if you've been sarcastic or you just been one. No, you are literally like, one of the most entertaining, real. You know what make you unique, Jay? Is because I know that you truly believe what you say. And you really live this life. And so when you're speaking, you're not just speaking in theory. You're speaking because you're really, really living, you know, what it is you say or you got the experiences to back it up. So, I am I mean, you know, I think that <laughs> the mentality might be a little bit off, but listen, bro, I rock with you. Now, that was an intellectual you. diss. You know that was a smart right? intellectual diss in time. I rock with you. I the shade. You are a ray of sunshine. So what is your thoughts on what I was saying? Do y'all believe that a lot of these women, they don't do I think play? that you are attracting, if you are dealing with those type of women, I think you're attracting the wrong group of women. That's my point. Like, I think it's levels to the type of women that you should be dealing with. And if you're dealing with a woman that's, that look, that's looking to take care of you as a grown man, I think that you probably should rock with a different type of woman. Maybe, maybe you can, you should consider that because you now got your own money and because you leveled up and all of that other type of stuff, maybe you should consider that now you've leveled up and you should start rocking with a different type of woman, Right. And you right at time, but when y'all be saying like twenty thousand or forty thousand is um, you know, is, is low. In my city, that's what people go to school to get a bachelor's degree I don't to think make. That it's and thirty thousand hours okay. is like forty thousand a year. I think that men should always aspire to do more. I think that that's too low to raise a child with. Right. I think that children is incredibly incredibly expensive. I think when you start talking about the cost of life and, and retirement and pouring into your, you know, what are you going to do when you get, you know, 69 or 59 and a half and you don't want to work no more, you know, like, yeah, yeah. we li we live in for now, but, you know, I want to be able to put my kids through college without having them to take out a school student loan. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's very difficult to do on $40,000 a year. And so, you know, when I say that that's too low, 
I'm basing that off of the fact that I think that we should aspire to do more than just that instead of just settling for it. But I don't knock anybody that's making it because we all had to start somewhere. We all came up. We continuing to grow. We continue to evolve. I'm just saying, don't stop there. Don't hey, base you right. your don't base your status off of what it is that you're seeing in your city. Continue to level up. Continue to push. Continue to surround yourself with people that's that's moving in a certain direction. And I, you know, I rock with you, Jay. I got your back. So. Oh yeah, it, I just want to say you're part of the me. Patreon. What are we talking about, bro? Oh yeah, for sure, always. Yeah, I just want to say for the women right? that talk, for the women that talking about they wouldn't uh, date a man that's making that type of money. Do you, you do realize those be the men that's nurses and doctors making forty thousand a year? You got to well, think well, about wait, who, who else been paid twenty to what? I mean twenty five to when you when you do nurses, the when you do the nurses when you do the calculations when you do the, no when you do the calculations when you do the calculations at twenty eight dollars or thirty dollars an hour right. And you add that up at 40 hours a week. And we ain't talking about overtime. So 30 times 30 times 40, that's twelve hundred dollars a week. Multiply hey, that Jay, by you, you you miss code scans, bro. The only doctors that make um 40 k a year is it that's probably about that. 50 some thousand, that's about 50, 60 thousand a year. Yeah, they didn't have only, when they took my shit. Not, not in the United States. States. What no, what I, was, what I was saying, Mr. Logic, what I was saying is. Most most of those doctors and stuff ain't really making Man, six figures. <laughs> and I'm just saying, like a nurses usually be. I, 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 I shouldn't say doctors. I should say nurses. A lot of these women would date a nurse, thinking and will feel like they got somebody good. Yeah. Yo, Jay. Jay All the know. nurses that I know, Jay, is uh, making over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Every Jay, last one of them. That depends all on of the them, city. all maybe, maybe because they travel and nurses or whatever. But every, yeah, they, 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 the, you seen the videos? They did their whole uh -huh. thing in the Patreon and all of that. Every nurse that I personally know and coach makes uh -huh. over a quarter million dollars a year. Now, and, hey, now I got a question to ask you. Hold on, Rilla. Okay. Uh, when I looked oh, up yeah, California, yeah. when I was planning on moving yeah. to, to hey, California really got with my CNA <laughs> license, I'm getting paid between fifteen and eighteen here. But with my CNA license there in California, they pay me 30 some. But you got to also calculate the, the cost of living, the cost of everything, the taxes, everything. They willing to pay me damn near double of what they pay me here. Listen, every nurse I know. Are you laughing, cracking up so hard? Every traveling damn. nurse I know. The videos is up. They in there. They show I'm they. Sorry, it's not me. It's you. They break traveling it down. Nurse, traveling nurse, of Every course, we'll get traveling paid, nurse we... I know and coach are making over a quarter million dollars a year. Yeah, but that but and, uh, you, this is what you fact. mentioned. Well, this, this is what you missing from that from that point though. I, Jay, true, point. traveling nurse. Okay, true, traveling nurses and and traveling CNAs make a tons of money, but you not count that a lot of those traveling nurses and CNAs that's traveling, they taking out. Dispenses to live at these places. No, they're not. As a matter of fact, listen, it's in the Patreon, Jay. You in there. They break it down. They get housing expenses paid for. That is tax free. Like they kill it. They absolutely destroy everything, bro. If y'all don't know, I'm not gonna do that because this I'm is gonna check that. I'm gonna have to check that out. If y'all don't know, y'all need to y'all need to I was really talking about the nurses that, that live in they, that they that not only that, to travel. Not only that, they break down exactly how you can get into it and how they did it. Where Courtney they go to. Be lying. <laughs> <laughs> Who lying, Courtney? I seen they check subs in real life. <laughs> oh, I'm lying. You you did you not read what I put Courtney in the chat. I don't, I don't think he can read the wait, chat. We got, wait, hold, hold on, hold on, real quick. Can read the chat. Yeah, you see how us. you just did that, right? Right. I'm going to log off in a second. I don't let y'all cook for the rest of the show. Y'all is bugging right now. Where you going? I just did a whole deep dive on the salary of a nurse. When Jay, I had a real question to ask you, and then you segue. You no, no, Rilla, and then you segue into something else. We well, go ahead with the person, Gordon. Uh, with, really. No, I ain't taking the person. I'm just messing with you. We want to know our men from the people that you hang with in your cipher, your sector, are they intimidated by successful women? 
No, that question was asked. Most minutes. men, and, and, and by surprisingly, no. A lot. Of, I guess a lot of these women, they be getting fitted that these men not intimidated by them. Um, a lot of women, they be putting themselves on a the pedestal because they got money. But one thing women still fairly realize, they just they just can't grasp this, that men do not see your money. That's, when we think of a woman, we do, we do not think about how much money in your bank account. That's not what we think about. We think about for one how she looked. That's our first approach. Is she got a good conversation? Is she feminine? Is she nourishing? Is she all of this other stuff outside of money? We, money will not pop up in the conversation at all. And now, if she do have money, it'd be like a plus. That's that's like a like a benefit, but not. I wouldn't necessarily call it a benefit. It would be like a you know some extra, but it's not a, a priority. When we think of a woman, we do not care about your money. A lot of times, most men, like if I was making three hundred thousand a year, and let's say Kayla making three hundred thousand and Q making twenty thousand, but Q turned me on more, I would rather be with Q. What? I wouldn't care about uh, Kayla making no three hundred thousand. That that I think cheap. you would like I, Kayla. I, I think you would. Uh, like hold on, I would a lot of times these women, these women be thinking they status make them wifey. For some reason, y'all be a lot of women be thinking that their status, their uh, financial status, make them a wife. Nope, and that's just nope. completely false. Nope. And you nope. know what, Jay? You know what, Jay? I don't think women think that. I, I, I yeah, think women that, do think that by their actions. I they think be it's thinking a generational that. thing because when the you, more that I'm in different spaces and I'm hearing young men speak, like 20 year olds, 22 year olds, they say stuff like that. But I don't really see like people our age. Like I feel like pe like our age, it, you're spot on. But like the more I'm in these spaces with these younger people and younger dudes are always talking about that. I, I think like I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but with the young people, it is important to them for some reason. Young, younger guys. I guess that's how because we was they was we raised our kids like that. But a lot of times when you ask women a woman what make them a good woman, they first thing they bring up they got degrees. Well, I got a degree. I'm making this much. No, that don't make you a good woman because you can make all that and still be a horrible chick. And a lot of times, like if, if I. If you get with a woman that's got degrees and making all kinds of money and I cheat on you with somebody that was busted, and you go tell your friends, I don't know why he cheated on me. I'm making all this. I got degrees. I'm a good woman. No, you're not a good woman. It was other stuff that you you, you was lacking of a woman and you thought those degrees and that money was a replacement of the stuff that what men really naturally look desire out of a woman. Jay. Okay. Jay. Okay. Hey, Jay. Okay. okay. Um, okay. So, Jay, in your real life, how often do you hear a woman telling you, Jay Prince, the thing that makes uh -huh. me a woman is my degrees? Like, just ballpark. <laughs> thing. How hey, often? Hey, hey, do you do hey, Kate, Somebody, you want me to ask you? Wait, 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 wait. Where you're trying to, you know, out dating or whatever, and she's uh -huh. like, you know what, Jay, I hope you want me. I have a PhD. Like, how often, realistically, like uh -huh. once a month, once a year, three times in your life? I'm just trying to see how often this is a thing. That but you see, why are you trying to bag on this man live like that? Oh, my goodness. No, you're, oh, your God. Oh, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Me and oh, okay. have Goodness. an understanding. Okay. He's been on our show multiple times. Okay. I respect hey. him, and I can ask him questions. You don't have to jump in, Logic. But yeah, I got, I got this. I just want to know. Okay. Well, and I'm not saying that like I have a. Me. I'm saying I don't think that that is the case for most people. Period. Well, well, I, like I'm me, I always, I, 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 I always want to use myself and the, the stuff. I'm gonna keep it real. If it's if it, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. But I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm just gonna break up women in my family and the women that I know, and I I got a lot. What about women that you're trying to date? The women I'm trying to date usually, uh, okay, because I like I I came on here before and I talked to women that was, was very successful, mm -hmm. and the reason why I didn't get the chance to explain the reason why I left her, but 
you know, she thought she could talk to me any kind of way because she was doing, she was buying me things and she thought she was very, well, she was very financially successful, mm -hmm. but she quickly realized I wasn't that type of guy that you could just push over. And, and that money didn't mean nothing to me. I showed her my, my own independency. Uh, it wasn't making more than her, but I showed her that I had to depend on her. And whereas after me, she was finding men that was depending on her, but she kept calling me, blowing up my phone. But oh, really, to get back to your question, to get back to your question, yes, I meet a lot of women that when you, when you ask them, because I used to ask women, I, well, if I'm on a date, I just got. A, I just came from a date, and I asked a woman this. Okay, we. I just see came. You from, <laughs> from, hey, we finna go out tonight. That's why I couldn't wait to get back on here so I could hurry up and go out. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. We see you. you know, I got that swag. You know, okay, that's what actually see the deal, baby. No, uh, <laughs> how often, how often they love this cookie, but no. Uh, how often? When I asked her, I asked her, I asked her, "What make you a good woman?" and Surprisingly, so she brung up feminine. She brung up cooking and stuff. I was shocked, but she had to slip in that she got a little degree in nursing. But we didn't see the stick on that. She didn't. She didn't use her nursing degree as okay as so leverage. Like okay, this will make, make me a good woman. Negating your own point. You no, I'm keeping it real with you. No, I'm keeping it real with you. Like I just came from okay, the base. Okay, let's let's rewind. <laughs> What, how often does a woman say, you know, what I bring to the table is my degree? That's the question. That's it. Okay. If, if you asking that, if, if, asking if I wish to ask, you. Oh, 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 let me answer, Kay. Okay. If I, if I wish to ask a woman, if I go on a date with a woman and I ask, and most men could agree with me. No, and, you, I'm just asking I, you. Oh, okay. Come on. Okay. Let me get to the point. If, if if I ask a woman, if, if I ask a woman, what do you have to bring to the table? The first, if they do got degrees or whatever, the first thing they're going to do is talk about their degrees. Okay, they're not going to bring up anything the feminine. They're not going to bring up nothing else but their degrees first. Okay, how, okay I get it. How right, yeah, often we gotta, we gotta bring this, we gotta bring this dialogue month, to a close. Once a week, close. once a year. How often this happened a lot happen? because I go on a lot of dates now, Kayla. Do you okay. talking to a guy that goes on a lot of dates? The fact that you... Keeps calling me Kayla and Kayla K. I mean, K, I don't know why I'd be doing that, K. No, nah, you know why. Because we know why you be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Kayla be on my mind, I guess. Okay, so Jay. Yeah. You dump me. You, you, you just be scrolling. Scrolling. Yeah, you just dump me. Okay, so Jay. She dumped me in the comments okay. session. She thought I didn't see it, but uh, I was going to hurt about it. All right, all right, y'all. Hey, hey, you know what? You know, Jay. Hold on. Are you saying something? Because you won't answer, or what's going on? I asked you a very specific question. How often does it happen that a woman tell? Like, if you said, how often does a man hit? It's the last you? question. We gotta go on to the another guess. I can give you like a amount per month. If I ask you, how often does a woman tell you that um, her degree is what she brings to the table? How often? You said you go on a lot of dates. So how often does this happen, Jay? I say about five times a month. There you go. Okay. All right. Thank you for answering. I appreciate you, Jay Prince. Thanks for calling in, sir. So oh, yeah. Like the the show. Show. Love the channel, <laughs> Pete. All right. Thank you, bro. <laughs> have fun tonight. Yeah, have fun, Jay. See, that's why we that's why we having pookies. Y'all be just amping up the pookies. It's funny. Hi, Black Dawn. Hey, how you doing? How y'all doing? Man, I thought that was gonna go on forever. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I was from the catch some Z's or something because oof, it could just go forever on that. But uh, yeah, so I want to like circle back around to like the HBCU topic that y'all was talking about uh earlier. And I actually went to go look up some actual statistics. I, I know I see Kayla's face, she's like, ah, oh, this man. But no, um, I, that wasn't directed towards you. I was talking to logic in the chat but go on oh, oh okay well uh um so back in the night okay this oh by the way before i say this i won't press by saying like this study was done by mit and the american um what was it american you, you hear that, k what oh <laughs> okay you're talking stats 
Yeah, this was done. Not granted, this was done like <laughs> the bird man. Yeah, it, this was done like they back are, I'm so tired right. of you today. Like, what? <laughs> but yeah, but, HR. yeah, this was done back in 2017, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was done by MIT and in the 90s. Yeah, going to an HBCU would have been a better financial choice. However, in the past 20 years, you're going to be making 20% less than traditional schools and colleges. So, sorry, y'all. <laughs> going to an HBCU is not a financially good idea. Statistically proven. So, no, sorry. Okay. I well, I've, never, I've never heard someone ask me what school do you go to because that's going to determine how much you make. In my well, 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 the thing about it is, is that if you're black, if you go to HBCU, you're more you're more likely to graduate to become a college graduate. But the flip side of that is you're going to be making less money than non-traditional schools. So, yeah. so that OK, sorry. So. I, I've never heard. Well, I'll put it in the chat. For you yeah, put it, put it in the chat, boo. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, sorry. Because uh, I had a brother yes, that was with you and he loved that shit. And, you know, it's, it is a great experience, but it ain't going to be great for your wallet in like 20 years down the road. Hey, Corey, yes, do, you, do you think that whether or not you go to college is going to determine, is a good litmus to determine whether or not you're going to make more money? No. Well, it depends. Not. I don't. No, depends I, quite frankly, if I, uh, what I'm doing now, I don't even need a degree. And majority of people that have degrees are not even in their field of degree. Interesting. Would you would you happen to know that? Question? Would you ha would you happen to know that on average, people that get a college degree make well over a million dollars, and people that don't, on average, it's literally ask that. I'm sorry, ask that again, Anton. No, I I was saying no. that it's it's a fact that, mm -hmm. and it might be more now. Okay. But that people that go to college on average make well over a million dollars in their lifetime more than people that don't. I've never seen that stat, but okay. but my point is, is that what he's saying is the same thing. It's, and I'm not sure what how accurate what he's saying is what he's saying, mm -hmm. whatever. But his argument is the same. If if we have a time period by which we can glean from in order to use data in order to extrapolate how you're going to be successful based off of past experiences, it's similar to saying that you're more likely to be successful. Now we can go in and we can do the nuances and what degrees you got and all that, but in a general sense, it's the same thing. If people that go to college on average wind up making over a million dollars in their lifetime, and you're gonna have people on a very low end and people that's not successful and people on a high end, but okay. if people are making more than a million dollars in their lifetime on average as a result of going to college and graduating, okay. then I think that that's a meaningful stat that we need to lean into. Well, I agree, but he's not saying that. He's saying that if you go to an HBCU, that you're going to be let, making less than someone that goes to a PWI. Right. It's a, it's a similar argument, though, is what Well, I'm I've never heard that at all before in my life, and he said he's going to put in the stat, so that's fine, and we can take a look at that, but... It, it also takes into account like mm -hmm. how much you're like paying into that school and like the like takes into account what like, how much you're like paying into the school like loans and things like that and on top of that like and this is of, from night twenty okay so this is old this is an old article yeah it's twenty seventeen that's what I'm saying it's kind of January twenty ten no no the article oh no it says twenty ten no the stress is from twenty ten yeah they right twenty ten so. So let's go back to the drawing board. I mean, it's known that salary incre increases with education. Like, I don't think that's even a secret. I don't think that people have to even research that. Like, if you have a high school di diploma, you're likely going to be making less than a bachelor's degree. If you have a bachelor's, you're probably making less than a master's. If you have a master's, you're probably making less than a doctorate. Like, People don't know these. I don't. I don't not, that's not always yeah. the case, Kayla. Because some people I, will take I can tell you, I, I, over. I mean, Kay Kayla, we done became the same person. Do I say Kayla? Did I say Kayla? I'm sorry. Say Kayla. I don't know what to do about this. This is my no, real name. Hugh, we understand. <laughs> I think everyone understands that somebody can be a high school dropout 
and be a multimillionaire, right? We know this. Yes, it can happen. But on average, I just put a thing from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I just put something in the chat. On average, the more education you have, the more money you make. Like, are people really arguing this? That's not the argument, Kay. The mm -hmm. argument, that's he can't. That's what I just said. Yeah, that's not what I was saying. That's not what he was saying. That's not what he was saying. He was trying to make the argument that you're going to make less money if you go to an HBCU. Oh, no, no, no. The PWI. The whole right. So that's the argument that he said. And yeah. then he's tried to cite something, but it was from 2010. And let me finish reading it because it was very small. Yeah, Black Dawn. I mean, I even if you, point that even wasn't if it's from 2010, like these schools have been open for a very long time. And I think that you can't, entirely dismiss data even if it's from 2010 in order to be able to make the argument you but you I don't have know how you can just completely we dismiss read it the data though and what he i agree but my point is we can't dismiss it just from his 2010 his well i agree with it, you it was a, it was a 20 year like long stint though like it started from like 19 well, right because if it's 2010 then it's based on the years prior to 2010 not 2010 yeah, but it's, it's not even, it's not even more like 20 yeah. years old. But probably. it's based from the No, 1970s. it's not 20 years old. It's using 20 years worth of data from prior to 2010. So it's correct. So it's, but it's not, like Don's but it's using 2009, 2008, 2007, 2006. It's using all of those years included not, in the data. If you read it, it's not. Oh, it's not? No. So it's, it it's starts, from the well, I don't have time to go over his particular right. argument. Well, well, well that's what I'm saying. It started from 1970 and then 1990. 1990. And then okay. they took that data okay. and it was like, okay. Like done. Like done. So it's 30 years ago. It's from the 70s ago. to the yeah. 90s. Oh, okay. Black Black Dawn. Hey, hey, hey. One at a time, yo. Black Dawn, I just want to know, because I didn't mm -hmm. read it. I just want to know. The okay. link that you put in the chat, you read that, that little paragraph of an abstract and that was no 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 that's it not a knockout it comes to what, knockout what you mean like a, a download link to the actual so you read the entire thing the entire yeah. no that that's way too long i didn't read it. i read the well, what the what, so what, what, what i don't like people right. try, they google something and they just send it they don't even read it themselves. Yeah, but you can read the conclusion oh, and you can also read oh, my goodness. the guy's but article the about they actually read some thought of it that gives you a TLDR. I mean, Black Dawn. Well, I guess I'm trying to figure out what better. was the point of you trying to do? Was it trying to discredit HBCUs? No, no, no. What, no, no, what, was, the what was the purpose of he Googled putting the first that link? Thing he could find and put hey, Black Dawn, I just want to ask you this question. I don't hold know on, what hold it on, is. Black Dawn, I'm going to save you. I got you. I just want to ask you this Black question. Black don't do it. Did you survive, K? Oh, yeah. I, Black Dawn. Hold on, I'm asking Black Dawn. Did you? Uh, yeah. Black Dawn, you didn't even read. Let me give you a piece of advice. I love reading. As a person, if you're trying to bring up some research about something and use like an article and you share a link and it's just the abstract, anyone that knows anything is going to know that okay, you didn't even read it. You're not, you're not listening, though. I, I didn't just read the I didn't, I didn't just read the I've been listening abstract, the whole though. time. Black Dawn. But, like but like I didn't just read the abstract though. Like, oh, hold on, okay. You just said it was too long. You just said when well, I how many, how many pages are actually in the study? I Black Dawn. You well, said no, no, how, many, how many pages are actually in the I study? I just Black Dawn. Uh-huh. Black Dawn, I just told yeah. you that uh -huh. I didn't read it. And I said, Did you? You said no, it's way too long. Play the tape back. You just said that. You no, know, I said I didn't read the entire study. I said I, I okay, it. you're proving my point. You're but if you read the conclusion, it'll give you the PLDR <laughs> of what the study is. Like, well, a piece of advice for the you, do you know like studies have conclusions at the end of it, so you don't have to actually. I do like, know that. Black Don, she's do never that. wrong, Black Don. Like, what are you talking about? They have abstract. Black Don, she's never wrong. They have, I'm not gonna win this um, one. The charts and data. They have all type studies. Have a lot of things. I know, but I'm just saying, Black Don. Also, conclusion in, give you a good. Wait, I'm just saying for the future. I, it's no problem. I know that a lot of people just aren't into this. I am though. When you bring up something, a study, and you try to use it to stand on, you can't come in and you haven't even read it. That's just, I mean, come on. 
That's the lowest level of, if you're trying to bring a study, I'm not talking about you're just bringing like a chart from a you know place that already got the data from the study and just like put it in a small palatable type of package for people. But you're trying to bring up an actual peer reviewed article. You didn't even read it, <laughs> but you're trying to tell us about it. So <laughs> if if I quote it like one for one, the, the exact same just conclusion just that they have, just stop. And then like just I tell you what it is, it's like just you do better next study. time. Like what do you just do better next time? So yeah. Black Dunn, are you trying to make the point that let's say two people went into an interview for a high figure job, right? They both have the same type of um, experience. One is from Harvard, and one is from an HBCU. Are you trying to prove the point that? Due to the fact he went to Harvard, he will get the job if they're all on equal terms. Um, Is that what you're trying to kind of point that in that way? It it also took this, by the way, this also only took into account like people who actually like earned their bachelor's degrees, not anything like higher than master's or doctors or anything like that. But it, it takes into account like if you take two people working the exact same field, going to the exact same um line of study, the exact same degree, all of that. There is a certain decline of wage gains comparison to someone who's in a traditional who goes to a traditional college, basically. So. That's not that's not what you didn't even read the paragraph you sent. All right, all right, Black Don, we gotta. <laughs> you didn't even bro. say that, bro. And it's better, better next time. time. Okay, I'm a, I'm asking yeah, I'm asking this, this last question. Did you survive K? Yes or no? Yeah, I survived. I didn't. Okay, I'm, I'm okay, I got you. All right. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. All right. I don't think so, bro. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, survive, how can you be so <laughs> confident posting something that you didn't even take the time? What's going Did on? We, hold on, y'all. We got guests. Let's, let's go ahead so we can uh, get people back to their to their regular lives. What's going on? Nah, I'm good. How y'all doing? How y'all doing, panel? What's up? What's up? What's up? I'm doing fine. How you doing? Um, good. Uh, so I was going to say, as far as for the question that you posed to the um, chat, you know, do men... Speak up, man. You got, your, you got your radio voice on and shit, man. <laughs> but yeah, dude. I just want to see. Uh, are, are men intim- intimidated by women's uh, degrees or education or their money? Um, yes. All of that. <laughs> it's not... It's not like you can say, you know what, I can approach the same woman uh, who doesn't have that, who doesn't have any money, the same way as someone with a higher status or with, you know, who's obviously better off or well off. Um, Because, you know, you got to adjust your game to, you know, that woman, however you approach that woman is is based on her. It's it's not, um, it's based on what you see. So um, yeah, what you see can be intimidating. And as far as for if you you know she got LV, she got red bottoms on, things like that, you're not going to go up to the same way as somebody who got the uh, fur slippers, but uh, that's uh, eating a pickle with the uh, ice and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, and as far as for, uh, you know, I think the any any study you use, I feel like you have to kind of also think about the uh, Error, some you know what I'm saying. Adjust for for some of the error that's going to be in. So like, you, you hey, can't, hey, I I, I got to stop you real quick. I just want to I just want to ask this question. When you guys call in, like, do you guys hear that? Like how it sounds. Is it just me? Are you guys? Is he coming in funny? Mm-hmm. No, he's coming in perfectly fine. I can't hear him. It he's not very very low. So, no, nah, he's coming in funny to me. Okay. It's not fine to me. Yeah, I often hear people when they doing it from their cell phones. I just don't know because some people just keep talking, and it's not no disrespect to you. E. I'm just saying some people keep. No, talking. No, you good. I, uh, I had. Oh, you sound much better now. Okay, oh, well, he had that's what it is. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jr. I'm just trying to figure. Cause I mean, I think uh, what's the other guy? Emmanuel. It's the same way. Uh, he'll be talking. Okay. I had the uh the uh head pods and they they ain't air pods, they head pods, but oh. yeah, let me um I took those out, you know what I mean? <laughs> wait, wait, you didn't hear the difference, okay? No, not mm-mm. Oh. but yeah, <laughs> what I was saying Chicago. 
Did y'all hear any of that? Any of that I said or not? Nah? I'm gonna repeat it real quick. It wasn't that much. Oh, okay. So pretty Just, much, uh, uh, fly through it. Do a brief synopsis. Yeah, flash so through real quick. Here. Yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah, men are intimidated by a woman's money, how much she makes. You know what I mean because it will be outwardly known. Um, because you know, a woman who makes more is going to dress different. Is going to have her hair different. All of those things is going to be able to be evident before you even approach her. You'll you're going to have to adjust your approach based on, you know, what you see. And so it can be intimidating if, you know, she got red bottoms, she got LV, you know, all that type of stuff. It's, it's something that you you see visually before you even approach. Um, so, yeah, it can be intimidating. See, see, anecdotally. Or or maybe you got maybe you got something else to, to, to give us an example of this. You know. uh, other than the example I use, so... Like uh, my well, man, no, no, no. Said, you said a hypothetical. Saying, um, what's, what's if it's somebody, they got interested. a slushy, they got a pickle. You know, they eat right. ice. So that's so that's you, so, so that's approach them different than somebody who's. So that's saying? hypothetical. That's why I asked. That's why I asked Jay that exact same question because I know for a fact there are dudes in Jay's circle that would approach a woman regardless of what she looked like and what she wearing. It's the same reason why we we seen the woman get deleted in Atlanta where she was a doctor, but she was accused of dating a what? A Ray Ray and a Pookie, da 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 It's the yeah. same reason why we see which I was using a movie reference, which apparently is not permissible, where a woman is dating down, right? Mm -hmm. Because the man is not afraid to approach her, which is the point that I was making. Men and are not ready. afraid or intimidated by <laughs> Successful or what's the so, yeah, I get what you're saying. You saying not all men. Hold on, hold on, hold on, E. Because what I'm asking you for now, sir, specifically, is an example in your real life where you can lay it out for all of us that you have seen a man intimidated by a successful woman. Yeah, I, I could definitely give you an example. So, say for instance, with me, I'm not intimidated by any of that, but I have friends who they're not going to approach a woman because of, oh, you know, you see you see her earrings or you see that watch she got or you see that bag she got on. You know what I mean? Like, you know. It's dudes in your cypher telling you I'm not finna approach this woman and they ain't scared to get roasted by the other niggas in your cypher because they gonna tell you I'm afraid to approach this woman because of what she got on? No, they're not going to say that. They're not going to approach her. It's not something that you say. It's not something that you got to be like, oh, I ain't going to approach. It's, hey, go ahead, holler at her, uh, you know, and let her walk by. You get what I'm saying? It's not going to be where you're going to say, oh, I'm not approaching her because look what she got on or what, look what she's doing. No, I'm saying as far as for you, we we both visually see the same woman. You get what I'm saying? And instead of you saying something to her, you're like, damn, she was bad. You get what, what I mean? It's not what Kayla was saying is like, how do you know that that woman is successful if you don't approach her first? Like, you can't sit up there and say because she got on Louboutins that she's successful. She might have a man that paid for some Louboutins. The bag costs more than they rent. <laughs> right. Yeah, I get I mean, that. Louboutin. Well, how do you determine that she's successful? You, you, you saying you can't see it? It's not something that's evident? What I'm saying is, bro, if, if, there, if there are men that you know of that are just, I, mean, I guess you're saying that, the men that you know of, not you, but men that you know of that's scared to approach women based on how they look. I get it. Okay. All right. I'll let it ride. You good, bro. About the Louboutins. Did I pronounce it right? I, I, I'm big on pronouncing, pronunciation. Kayla? It was close. Wait, how you pronounce it, Kayla? Louboutin. Oh, my God. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you... Sometimes you can tell, I mean, maybe from a woman's perspective, you can tell how a man is. If he's like, you can tell by his presence, how he walks into a room, like the confidence that he upholds, I think sometimes. So then he might be kind of right. You know, we, as us women, if we can kind of kind of figure it out and get, huh? Jeremy Meeks got a billionaire. Who oh, that is, sir. Sorry. Yeah, uh, that's the, the five. He's on prison bay. He's yeah. on prison bay. Prison bay. They not together anymore, though. He looked good, though. He looked like a model. He got he a, is a model. He, listen, he wasn't intimidated by a successful woman. Is my point. 
I'm so sure. I mean, he was in jail. Everybody, he was in jail. I think she shot her shot. If he was in jail, everybody would be a come on. Yeah, she approached him. Right? Would it, I mean, if he was in jail, would yeah, anybody there's, there's be certain guys out here that get, listen, a different, listen, listen, listen. get a different response from women? Not, well, this is a fact. If you're listen. attractive, it doesn't. It, it yeah. matters less. The more the matter attractive you are. The question was, are <laughs> men intimidated by successful women? Don't matter who shooting they shot at who. Because he could easily say, oh, no, 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 no. I ain't good enough for you, babe. Oh, I ain't do, 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 do. It goes well, both what ways. What are you talking about, really? But he was in jail. And I think that, right? That's what y'all he was in jail. Real quick. Because you're creating an unrealistic narrative, bro. So what, E, e what are you saying? Are you... Wait, wait. So, Anton, let me, let me ask you this, Anton. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, specifically. Are there men in your sight that are intimidated by successful women? No, because they overly successful men. No, I, I mean, I don't. It's either yes or no. I don't need the necessary context. But you're saying no, that they're not. No, you're saying that there are not. There are men in your cipher and men that you know that are not intimidated by successful women. So no, there's a difference between men that's in my cipher and men that I know because I coach a lot of men. Oh, okay. And you know that here. Let me let me show you my calendar really quickly. No, I coach guys all day, every so day. When I'm telling you, hold on, 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 hold on. Anything blue, anything blue or green is is a coaching session. Cool. This is just Friday. No, no, no. This is Friday alone. You. Almost all men. Anything blue or green is a coaching session. Are they intimidated anything, by success? Hold on, women? hold on. When I'm talking to you, when I'm having these conversations, Rilla, it's a difference between men that are in my cipher and men that I coach. When I'm talking to these guys, I'm not speaking to you based off of anecdotal experiences. I'm telling you men that I coach on a regular basis and they span all spectrums. Some of them are successful. Some of them is just getting their legs up under them. They 20 all the way up until 60. I've coached them as young as 18. The overwhelming majority of men are intimidated by Women that are successful. Yeah, I would disagree. If you see logic shaking okay, his head. Cool. I would disagree. I would. Cool. Di I, I'm, I'm just saying. I disagree. I know dudes that shooting they shot seven ways to Sunday. I don't cool. know what dudes you coaching. I don't know what dudes you hang around. I'm not discrediting none of that. Bro. So why did you ask me the question about men in my cipher? Because you speak and then you want to authority on something, bro. No, I'm giving you my experiences oh, and I'm supporting it time. with and evidence. Bro. All right, cool. I got See, it. you don't want to real have a real conversation in truth. <laughs> you just want you just want to spit a certain type of way. And so when I, I answered your question, when you asked me, I answered it directly. I, and then you asked the follow-up question and I gave the context. A, it does not matter I'm how you feel that. about it, bro. I'm telling you the real life experiences. Sure and I literally coach thousands of guys every yeah, single year. I know more. what the and, piss I'm talking about. Damn time. I, I got you on that. And what I'm telling you is <laughs> even when I when I say something and I look at Mr. Logic, because I you know, I could I could reference, you know, who I'm around, who I associate with. Uh I don't I won't necessarily say like I've mentored numbers and thousands like how you do, so I would never say that. But my experience is that men are not intimidated by successful women. They gonna shoot their shot. Period. I don't care what you look like, what you dress like, how much money you make, right? And then we see that corroborated in these stories that often come out about all these women who, uh, for all intents and purposes, we talk about hypergamy, but these women dated down. We've had the exact same conversation on this show. And but see, use an example. Use an example, though. Look, use Jay Prince for example, right? The bro just Jay said Prince he was, had a woman he, buy him a a, a yeah. condo or something like that. No, well, I don't know nothing about all that. But you can tell, you can you can tell say Jay Prince about a level of confidence about himself. So, like I said, would he be around certain type of women? Probably not. But all the women that he's around, I guarantee you he wouldn't stop. He would you know what I'm saying? He'll shoot his shot. I see him all the time. You know what I'm saying? They just, they, they, like I said, they everywhere. I'm telling you. And you would even see it though. Well, they'll get shot at three times in the same gas station. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And it, it's about you. You know what I'm saying? Which one got the stronger game? 
So hey, that that just that's my world. Hey, so man, conversation rules nation, man. I, I get you what he's what? saying. I get what both of y'all are saying. What I'm saying is that there, there's right. gonna be those guys one more thing, right? Can, yeah, just this last one. Yeah. It's gonna be those guys who don't, and that's what I'm saying. It, we can't say, yeah, oh man, we can't say that. You're right. Um, and we can't say, you know, I, I guess really you saying in your circle, you know, all y'all guys is, is dating a millionaire women. That's tight. I mean, that's what's up. But what I'm saying is when you do have those women who are okay with approaching a man, you know what I'm saying? They are making their own money. They're not tripping about how much you making. And it, it, they're not intimidated by any man. So it's like on the other end, a man who is confident in itself is going to approach whoever. But that's here's not the to irony. say that Here's are. the irony, E. Here's the irony. We sit on these platforms and we talk about, you know, the small majority or the loud majority, uh, the, the loud minority. There's a small number of men who aren't getting the results and they're making the most noise, right? Most men, I don't know. I, listen, man, I ain't trying to be funny. I don't know. But, what but really, that's your circle. But, but really, I'm of course, like about, we've all this over dude, and over. I'm not even talking and about that. Okay. So wait, so, wait, 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 wait. Have we not had shows? Can we just be real? Have we not yeah, had shows? Yeah. Have we not had shows where we said that the majority of men are not having sex? Uh, Come on, Rilla. 80, 80, 20. I think no. we've, we've Okay, no, 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 no. Let's be real. That we've had whole is- shows on here where we've literally had conversations about the majority of men are not having sex. The majority of men do not get these women pregnant. The majority of men oh, that, only okay. make 40 something thousand dollars a year on yeah. average. We know all of this insight based of all of these conversations that we have regularly on the platform and you're going to sit here and tell me that these guys is getting the results that's not what we talking about we, we also it, know that the majority of men women we literally just saw mr lee sit up there on saturday and say yo i approach women the first time i got rejected by a woman that I, that was based on my height right and he went through the whole soliloquy of, of how he got rejected, how he came to the realization that there was a deficiency and something he couldn't control. Up until that point, he didn't even know he had a deficiency, so he was shooting his shot every way to Sunday. What are we talking about? We're talking man? about one man. <laughs> oh my, now we're talking about woman. Right. One man. Right, bro. You're it's citing it's one it's man it's in, in order to support you your argument, bro. Right. Really? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Gonna eat this liver, hold man. on, yeah. hold on, bro. That needs to be right is everything, bro. You I hate to even bring these guys up. I hate to even bring. I hate to even bring these guys up. But let's be real. Fresh and fit has a movement. There is a ton of guys following fresh from fresh and fit for dating advice. You're telling me that these young gentlemen. Are getting the results? Is that what you're telling me, Jr? Please pull that question they, up again, bro. So I mean, you said that they're getting the, the results. Like, the majority of men are getting none results. Of results. Anton, the question was: Are you men said out of your mouth by success? You said out of your no, mouth, the majority of, of men mouth, are getting the, men the results. Intimidated by successful women. That was the question. What I'm saying: Are if men you intimidated? Now, this guy said, I don't understand what I so hard to understand. If you keep getting shot down, right? And you are you going to keep going at the same type? No, you're going to go where you get better results. <laughs> Who told you that? What Is you mean? Who told me that? You could look, you could get shot down a million times, right? And you're going to keep going at the same a million women, or you're going to switch it up. I mean, yeah, gonna there are guys who are going to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Like you know what I'm saying, like, hey, but oh, at the man, same time, it, man. you are not getting nothing. We talk, we if you keep doing generality. that, you're not getting any. Okay, so, All right, so hold on, hold on, hold on. We gotta move on to polo bear. We gotta right? move on to polo bear. I got you. We talking generalities, right? So you saying polar not majority? Polo. Of- <laughs> <laughs> I'll be saying uh, shout out to polo bear. <laughs> Polo Bear, you gotta, you, that, you gotta lose the AR and put the A, the, put the O on that man. Polo Bear, what's going on, Polo? Hey, good to see everybody. Uh-huh. 
Say, so, hey, JR. So, yeah, you know, answer your question real quick. Get some of my wife's sunglasses just so I can fit in with the ladies right now. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I went to go see if I could find my sunglasses. You got to get the pink Versace, dog. Mm -mm. So, so, I'm not uh, intimidated by long? a successful do woman. Do my hair like K. Wearing robes. You do my beard like K. Yes, do it. You said do a beard. You said do my beard. Yes, do my beard like K's. Yes, because clearly I have a beard. Let's all do it together. Also, Anton, if you're getting your robe, let me know. I'll get mine. Oh, Rilla has been <laughs> on one all day. <laughs> Rilla, come back. Uh, what's going on, uh, no. Polar Bear? Hey, I'm here. I'm eating the year. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I, I think I think the. The crew was having a moment. Oh, that's my, okay. Yeah, okay. my apologies. Yeah, I can't find yeah. my sunglasses. I, was I gotta find. Proud. I gotta get the Xanax uh, ready, locked and loaded. What? Yeah. So, what does intimidate me? Hey, I got a door that was in the uh, the T Shanley commercial at the table. My apologies again. again. I'm, I'm sorry. I I know that. Jr., this is your fault. <laughs> I'm trying to see what intimidates you, Polar Bear. I, I couldn't hear. Oh, I said it was that uh, masked character in the Tease Hanley commercial. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was, was waiting for the that big axe to come out with blood on it. <laughs> Who is that person, JR? I think uh, Polar Bear is talking right it's now. Go ahead, Polar Bear. That was his son, probably. <laughs> That's the character out of Saul. <laughs> I think his name, what is it, Jinx or something? Start with a J. Jigsaw? Mm -hmm. I think it's J Jigsaw. Jigsaw, that's it. Oh, yeah. Jigsaw, okay. Okay. He said Jinx. He said Jinx. <laughs> All right, I'm, oh, I'm, it was pretty creepy. Go ahead, go ahead, Polar Bear. My apologies <laughs> again. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, no they, apologies. Can't, they can't control themselves. No. I'm sorry. Hey, it's a party. So, But uh, I guess for the main question for tonight on are men intimidated by successful women, I can't speak speak for other men but generally speaking i am not you know uh i'd say if i had to put numbers to it roughly 50 percent of the women i've dated uh i was more successful about 20 30 percent were at or about my level and then the other 20 percent or whatever were above my level either in income or position or education and I really had not had problems with that in regard to the relationships. And I guess the two things that I wasn't sure what you're getting at is when you're talking about intimidate, are you talking about actually approaching them from the beginning or actually sustaining a relationship with mm. them? Those are two different things. You can talk about all of it, all of it in its entirety. Okay. So uh, as for approaching. The majority of men can't uh, handle women making more money than them. That's a fact. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't care if a woman a makes form more, of intimidation. Less, more money than me, you know. I will say this, if I'm dating a woman that's 30 plus, she better have her own money because uh, I'm not going to waste a lot of money on a woman, <laughs> period. What? Yeah, why, why should I? She has a career. She can take care of things herself. Oh, but I don't think Polar Bear wants to get married again. So I don't think he wants to get married again, right, Polar Bear? I ain't going to call that out on that top. But Polar Bear, let me ask you a question. Was there a difference on how the women acted, the ones that, I guess, financially didn't make as much, and then the women that did make as much? Could you tell the difference of maybe their personality? Uh, Not too much correlation. Usually ones that didn't make much money was expecting me to take care of everything, which I won't. I'll do mm. incidentals, but anything of major expenses, no, I can put that money into my own accounts. You know, the, the why should I waste it on somebody more. else and then carry So you basically money. dating to have sex? No, dating, it may or may, it may or may not include sex, but it's just a relationship. So. Um, so, but you're dating, because I think I remember you said that you don't want to get married, right? So you're- That is correct. Date. Okay, so you're just dating to date. You don't want, do you want something long term, but not in a marriage way? 
Not in a legal sense. Correct. Okay, so cool. So the women that has made that have you been in a relationship with someone that made more money than you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did that dynamic work out? Like, were y'all doing like 50 50 roommates? Like, were you like, was it a far big difference? Or is like, like 10 grand, 20 grand difference in salary? Uh, I've had it where they made up to uh, somewhere 30 to 50% more than what I did. Okay. You, so you dated multiple women. Like, what's the number? Um, I don't know. More than a handful, but less than two handfuls that made more money than me. Had you been in a relationship? Where do you meet these oh. women? Do you, like, do you, like approach them in real say. life and stuff like that? Yeah, I would say earlier. Um, you know, because I'm in my 50s, so you, you got to think. I was around before all this online crap uh, was occurring. So back then, yeah, I'd meet them in person. Even now, sometimes I can meet a woman in person, you know. But sometimes, you know, you can do the online dating. And the thing is, so sometimes I am at more what you call professional settings. You know, you're dealing with people that, you know, you're in a some sort of professional society group. And you meet people there. <laughs> And then after you get acquainted a few times, you know, just chatting, sometimes it doesn't start out as anything, but you get that familiarity with someone and then it builds from there. And then you start, you know, going beyond. So. Hey, Paul the Bear, are you a pookie? Depends <laughs> on the day. There you go. Let's be honest. You know, I've, I've tried to, I know people, hey. Bruh. <laughs> Y'all be having pookies in you, just no, no. Him. I don't consider myself a pookie. It's just a matter of whatever you, you say. Every you man be a right, right, bro. In him. I don't care what nobody say. Say what now? Every man got a little bit of pook in. I don't have it. I don't have it, Mister. I, I, I hear you. I hear you, logic. I hear you. I don't think you got a little pookie in him because when you get in these arguments on the panel, them that's that's pookie behavior. Pookies, pookies is a behavior, bro. It's a Thing that you do in real life is having kids out of wedlock with multiple women, just shooting up the club, running around with no protection. Is come on, man, stop it, bro. See, now I got a question though, because I had <laughs> asked this question the other day, nobody answered. What's the worst attribute of a pookie? Oh man, I would say using Anton's definition, if you got a man going out there and having kids that uh, he has no intention to uh, care care for or is enabled unable to care for okay you said a lot the worst thing. Now, let me unpack i think it. the worst thing a worst thing may work worst attribute i don't yes. know bro. i just think that they're more or less a cancer on the communities in which they exist give, give me one bad attribute about a pookie one bad attribute yes that they depend on women they depend on women yes okay so a lot of attributes that people be naming about pookies, you got to realize they actually have no control over it. Depending on a woman? No. I said, it's just think about these pookie attributes that everybody like to talk about. They have no so control. So you have no control over where you put your dick? That's the problem. No, that. no, no, no. I ain't saying they got no control where they put their dick, but do they That's have control attribute. over if the woman had a baby or not? But you, but no, I got, yes, I do. You know how yeah, I got control you over it? About you know how I got control over it? I do. Six. You say you know how I got control uh, over it? By not participating with her in the first place. All right, well, let me let me, let me finish. Because you said, that, that I thought the concept that, that Pook is having these kids, right? Yes, I don't have to okay. have unprotected sex or put my dick in a woman in the first place. Okay, so I ain't talk about you. We talk about pookies. You just said you. No, let's pookie. assume that I, you said that I'm a pookie. So let's I talk about everybody it. got a little pookie in them. Okay, so I got some pookie in me. So let's. Yeah, let's I, use I, me that's what I said. What, Every time logic, you what, what, talk, what's you, talk me up, you got a little pookie. In you. So yeah, let's use me as an example. You telling me I don't have control over who I put my dick in? No, I say you don't have control over letting somebody have a conversation without jumping on them. That's called that's being on a panel and, and, and just rocking out and doing what we do. Like, you know, in person, anybody, anybody that know me in person know that I don't even raise my voice at all. Well, well, well. Okay, but I'm just saying you do it. They're just like a woman saying <laughs> that she just act these okay. women say that they just act like this online and they don't do it in real life. We'll okay, but fair, fair enough, though. But the point that you're making is 
that we don't have control. And so no, me as I, you didn't let me tell me that I don't have control over still, whether or not I, I was, can I was elaborating on right? you, you was talking about the kids, right? Yes. By Pookie having kids. So okay. Yes. So now you gotta let me finish though. Now, by Pookies having kids, do Pookies have control? Yes, they, they control their dick, but do that Pookie control whether or not that chick child going to be born or not? This is crazy, Mr. Logic. I can't even believe I'm just you're even no trying question, to bro. make this just argument. Just you, I can't believe it. A Pookie doesn't <laughs> consider so that no That's the trouble. Well, it's a it's a question in bad faith because I still yes. got control over whether or not she have the baby by never nothing in her in the first place. Exactly. I agree. The point you. is, is that when I when you talking about the Pookies, right, and you name that attribute that Pookies having these these kids, okay, I understand that Pookies are part of the problem, but that behavior is just not with the Pookies. It's with the Keisha too. How yes. on it? How ain't it? We're not talking about the Renishas right now. No, well, we talking. We talking about a collective because the thing is, do that Pookie have control if she's gonna have that child or not? Yeah. Nope. Yes. How? He has. Well, he he to he head 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 gonna have it. Or are you gonna pull a gun to her head and tell her they have an abortion? He has no control. Well, did she put a gun to your head and say, "Did you put? Can you put your dick in me?" If he never punched, hold on. Bruh, you, you, you sit, wait, wait, hold, hold, hold on one minute. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna back out because I, I, I ain't finna do it like you know what I'm saying too long. I'm saying nope. this. Nope. Pookies don't have control. If you said that's an attribute of a pookie, he had no control over that. But just say if you said that female, she decided, she decided that. So if you don't see that, I don't know what to say. He had no control because if you ask Pookies, hey, did you want that baby Pookie? He was like, hell no, I told him not to but have the it. point is, is that when did we start considering what women want or at all what it is that's going to happen as men, we control the narrative. What? I'm not sitting here and talking about a woman. Control, no, no, no. The whole point is that control the, hey, if, if you got a child right now, if you got a child right now, your wife can leave you and then you have to fight for that kid. And then she damn near got to be a crackhead. She got to be a bank robber. She got to be all these different things for you to even get access to that kid that, that the state will give that woman. We're moving the goalposts. What does that oh, have to do with the goal argument? Goal. You yeah, said down. that most pookies... <laughs> Bro, when? listen. Listen. At, at, the, at, the, at the very core of this, I can choose to never have kids ever in my life. I never have to ever subject myself to anything I don't want to. When I go into this, I understood the risk. My point is that you control the narrative as a man as far as every single aspect of your life. What are you talking about? You, you don't have to go to work tomorrow. You can choose not to go there. You can choose not to be on the panel. You can choose to cut your microphone off. You can choose not to deal with the chick that you ran into at sex the other day that you felt like, you know, was a certain type of chick. You have control over every aspect of your life. Why did you start giving away your power? Why are you snitching on my life? <laughs> you said that online. You it, said it, it publicly. It, you, you, I think you told it, Mr. Point, and I ain't going to... No, gonna, I didn't. It's like, it's, I ain't going to drag it on. But I think there's a disconnect. Day, if you think a man have a choice, if you, if that's one of your attributes of a pookie, if you think in any situation that a man have a choice whether or not to bring a child in this world, yes. you're delusional because that woman can sit here and say, guess what? A man can say, I want that baby. And if a woman want to have an abortion, guess what's going to happen? A man can say, I don't want that baby. A woman say, I want it. Guess what's going to happen? That doesn't alleviate your choice. I can't have a baby without your sperm. But we're not alleviating so the choice. When you, you lay down, when you lay down with pookie. me, I, okay, Pookie, Ray, can I, Ray, Tyrone, can I clear something up? doesn't matter. Here's the thing. When you lay down with a woman, on, unprotected, you're consenting to, hey, I'm doing an act that you, can result in a baby. So you're in agreement when, when you do that. Once you so see, you say when somebody lay her, down, they they agree with a baby. woman and you put your penis in her, that's and not you a skeet in her, 
unprotected. That's a fact, Logic. You can't. You are putting yourself know. in a situation where hold you are on. consenting to have a child. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, brother. I gotta get to sway before you start talking. But how how are we? How no, is you, this not? Lo- how how, how are good. we not? How how are you not seeing that? I think the disconnect is is that he's missing the point that he's saying like once the semen's in her, he doesn't have any control. But what they're saying is is like I think there's a difference. Like the disconnect is is that. Pookies and F boys are two different things. F boys just have a bunch of sex with a bunch of girls. Pookies are loose with a seed. When they're saying they could wear a condom, but they choose it not to, they get in in there raw and then they just pump in and leave and they don't care about the consequences. They can move like a certified lover boy like Drake, where they wear a condom and put hot sauce in it and making sure ain't nothing happening. That's a choice too. That's what they're saying. You don't have to not. Then the other choice is you don't have to have sex with this woman if you think okay. she's going to be And then you know what? Man. It sounds like the crazy women that telling men to have vasectomies and shit like that. See, no. it, y'all get to the same point. See, you're arguing oh, two wait, different. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Just one. I'm just asking one question. Other right? than poopy, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Other women, they're men. Hey, 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 y'all. Come on. It's one question, right? Who make baby daddies? Two people, a man and a woman. Okay, you're delusional. Women make baby daddies. No, All right, but I'm, gonna go ahead. Baby I'm not gonna stay on this because y'all, y'all, y'all not okay, gonna be wait, real. Wait, 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 hold on, Mr. Logic. Logic, you're going off emotion. Hold on, hold on. Mr. Oh, Logic, that's fine. No, don't because disappear, he's thinking, bro, because we can't hold be on, Rilla. Listen. Nah, Why do men disappear tonight? Young bloods. Right. We cannot do this, fam. We can't. You're literally sitting up there saying, okay. I'm going to absolve you of your responsibility as a man where you put your dick. Dick. That's what we saying? Dick. Real <laughs> question, Mr. Logic. <laughs> or are you saying, because I think what you're saying is, well, you know, she's a consenting adult. I'm a consenting adult. And once I put my dick in her, it's you know what I'm saying? Stop saying once, that word. Okay, relax, please. Penis. This is important to me. <laughs> a lot of stuff. You know, I get it. This important to me. Okay. I got sons. <laughs> okay, I Chicago. Got sons. This is not an argument with me. I was just saying. <laughs> hey, I got sons. Please. Yo, oh, yo, sir, please. Find a way to attack me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> this is insane. No, I'm go ahead, you, Rilla. Rilla, Rilla please finish. Cool. Hold because on. I'm, I'm please trying to finish. have a conversation with a grown man. Okay. <laughs> Please I don't finish. need anything else or anybody else right now because what Sway just relayed to you is the logic that we've been teaching these young bloods. Good. Sway literally just told you that Drake's strategy for busting allegedly busting off in a woman and then taking the comment and putting hot sauce in it that's a legitimate strategy. The fuck is we talking about? You said he bust off in her and then took the condom. He and used put the hot condom. Sauce in it. He used the condom, busting the condom, and made sure that she she went back in there, got the condom out the trash, and tried to use it and put it in her. She, and she yelled, "Burning!" Because oh, it was so he didn't bust off in it. Then he bust no, off the condom. Why, why would he do oh, cookies why don't not, use condoms. They don't care my, where they bust. They, they don't care if they well, inside, well, outside, well, wait, anywhere. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, they don't hold matter. On, hold on, hold okay, on. so watch this. So if by you breaking up with Drake analogy, hold on, hold on, hold on. By you breaking up with Drake analogy, you're you're come on, y'all. Let's go. Let's go, y'all. Hold on. Let's reset. Let's reset. Let me hit them titties, baby. Let me suck them titties. Okay. Uh, Here, here's right, the thing, and we can't. We have to stop this damn Pookie and Ray Ray. This lot that that term is is so 2021. It's terrible. Normal it's terrible. men, no, men, 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 men exactly. don't use condoms and come in women. Men do. It's not a Pookie and Ray Ray. Right. Men do All it. All types. All types of men yep. do it. It's not a pokey exactly. ray ray thing. It's men. Mm-hmm. men what do a, yeah, we, but sometimes. I thought that term was for all different types of men from all I, different. I'm just, uh, it's men that what? do it, right? right. Like, I think yeah, but I thought that was for every everybody. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I, I, I say this respectfully, ray ray, ladies. Y'all don't get. Wait, wait, hold on. Just the same way women use pick me and mammies, y'all do not get to decide how we define. A particular group of men and a subset of men, how we're gonna how we're gonna categorize them. 
Island, do you use oh, those? I, I, well, oh, listen, I, wait, wait. Uh, wait we, we, we do no. have a safe zone Why? because no. you put him on oh, us. Oh my gosh, are y'all serious right now? Yes. yes. Okay, just because you don't listen, Court, you have yes. you are on record as people and not men. There's not yes. been one man that I know of that has lobbied the, the, a pick me or a mammy towards you, right? Uh, they call me chameleon. The men call me chameleon. I got you on that. I got you on that. Courtney a pick me. They call everything. Damn, I can't do this. Y'all, y'all right. Y'all got it. Let me let y'all have at it. Go ahead, Jr. After hours or what we doing? Hey, uh, stay on okay, camera, really. I can't. I can't do it. My, I'm stay in frame. Stay in frame. Anyway. You got it. You got it. Okay, blood pressure is up. I can't it. take it. I this grew up with Pookies and Ray Rays. Yeah, yeah, my understanding of a Pookie and Ray Ray was a hood. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. It was loose with his seat. Men, wait, wait, wait. Because <laughs> women, wait, 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 wait. that's what I thought that women was. Women ask for men to leave, and when men get in the cipher and we say, "Hold stud, punk ass." Uh, excuse me, Paulo Bear. You you might have to cam off. No, go ahead. I'm about, to <laughs> some, I'm about to use some real explicit words, but when men get off and say, "Punk, bitch." Whole stud, this, that, and third. When we describing men, where do women get to come in and say, "Oh, you can't describe another man as that"? The same way you got to come in when you I was a bullshit lie, okay? You was a bullshit lie. You was a bullshit lie. I ain't stop. never told no a, woman how to describe no, another woman. No, no. no well, I have a. I have okay, a, pull the tape up. Show me where I described and where I told you Rilla, how to describe another woman. Rilla, the same Rilla. way I, you can jump in while women. Rilla has been going super saiyan in 2020. Y'all crazy. Y'all okay, crazy. Rilla, hey, this hey, is Hold on, hold I'll on, hold on, it. Court. Hold okay. on, let me deal with this with Kay real quick. Okay. Kay, you crazy as fuck. No, please don't curse at me. Now I can't curse at you. <laughs> <laughs> now I can't curse at you. Now I'm I've done. I've never I'm cursed at you, ever. Yo, Kay, real talk, for you to sit up there and make that accusation and say, Y'all get to come in and say, and then you say, I've what defined, wait, you said, I have defined how women can address other women? Like, no, I, I, I can tell you. That. What are you talking about? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Now you're rewind going to the tape. Okay. Hey, rewind the tape. I Put your glasses back on and rewind the tape. I the said the same way. I'm going to let you have it, man. Come in. I'm going to let you have it. I got you, Kay. I hear you. You All keep right. saying that, but then you keep talking. You said you were done, and then Sway started talking, and you were like, but wait a minute. Like what? <laughs> really gets super. This is y'all show. I was, gonna, show. I was gonna answer him. I don't have no really. pants on no more. Rilla, are you still there? Why? Yes. Y'all men okay? And Tom okay. about to get uh, what's it? Uh, man, cute. You know, what's going on? That comedian. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Jerry C K. Louis C K. And Tom about to Louis C K. This Rilla, I was gonna answer you. And I, I don't think it should be a gender when we when we're saying let's not label people, because I think a lot of these labels are derogatory. So when I say don't label women mammies because it's a derogatory term, I'm saying don't label men pookie and ray rays because I understand what you're trying to say. But all men do fucked up shit. Exactly. All men make mistakes. And exactly. to label someone off a mistake. Or to label someone that you that's redeemable. Oh, so, so it's cool for women to say you a fuck boy? No, it's not. I don't agree hey, with sweat, that either. Sweat. Sweat. I'm, I'm going to drop you down real quick. I'll bring it right back up. Is no, that's, that's a thing of shame. Some what, people what call I'm, anyone. Well, with women can say you a fuck boy. But well, men didn't didn't say Pookie and Ray Ray. I just, I just need to be I didn't, clear. I didn't, I didn't say that either, Rilla. I said all, all these terms that we perpetually use in this space is getting old, tired, and let's just talk about how men and women act. Exactly. I'm so, I don't, I don't even. I'm say the most I'm positive Sunday. person on the panel. This is what? true right now. What exactly, Courtney? I'm the most positive person on the panel. Hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a guess. I'm doing the whole marriage series. I'm the advocate for marriage. We got a guess. You are absolutely right. Well, I think that's guess. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Go ahead. Hi, Wallace. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Wallace. Um, few things, y'all. Do a great show. Um, I love y'all's network. Um, you guys are doing wonderful things. And uh, just wanted to say, um, I really appreciate the way that you guys bring people on and let them, you know, air their point of view. Um, to one of the questions earlier that you asked, um, the, the discussion that you guys got into about HBCUs, 
Um, I, I don't think you guys brought up a relevant point when you were bringing up the young gentleman that signed there. Um, to most of these young men that are going to college right now, um, athletics is more of a business than going to college. And this gentleman was one of the top recruits at cornerback. Um, and if you're going to make a business decision, which I think that this young man did, he's going to learn from the best cornerback, um, arguably in NFL history. So, um, the, the, the context of it being HBCU actually I don't think has any relevance to it. Um, I actually had the opportunity to go to Jackson State where this young gentleman's going, and I chose not to go there. I went up the road um, to the University of Mississippi, which is the PWI. Um, I went there specifically because the program that I was interested in was in the top in the country at that time. Um, I'm not currently in my field, but that's by choice. I did use my degrees. I opened up a business, um, made a lot of connections, met a lot of wonderful people. I also did have the experience of going right back home, you know, and hanging out with my friends that were going to Jackson State. So don't take anything away from that. Um, that's on that subject. I, I, I just didn't think you guys were coming at it from the right approach on that part. Well, we weren't the ones that brought up the young gentleman went to Jackson State, the lady – um did so i'm not no 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 yes you did uh i did no no the young lady did i said no, yes, I, did. Did. I, I, said, yes I, she I didn't bring it up i i i know i know that but nobody nobody else oh, in the I'm panel gonna... nobody in the panel took the initiative to actually think of it from that perspective yeah. because these young okay. gentlemen are, are are now you know putting themselves in positions to elevate themselves and th that that wasn't a that wasn't a college decision du duplicitously based on the educational value of it. That was, I do believe everybody in, in that, that actually studies the way that sports is changing and college entrance is changing for these young men um, is understanding that. And, um, and that's, that's all I wanted to point out on that subject. On, on another point that you guys were talking about just recently, um, that you guys were saying that men aren't, are or are not intimidated by um, successful women. Um, I've worked um, I don't want to put too much business out, but I've worked in environments with very successful men and women. Um, I was a, well, I'll just put it out there. I was a bartender and a high limit dealer in Las Vegas. So I dealt with people with millions and millions of dollars, men and women. Um, so I've seen these people up close in different atmospheres and whatnot. So I understand the way that the hypergamous atmosphere at its finest works. Like I've seen it for up close and personal for probably 15, 20 years. So yeah, there are men out there that are intimidated by successful women. And I've seen, you know, open relationships where women come out to Vegas because they're, their husband and them have, a, a, you know, a separate vacation schedule. These are very successful women and they've come out there and they do their own thing because men are more likely to shoot their shot out there. They're peacocking and stuff. And on the other hand, I've seen, you know, successful men out there that are terrified of women. I mean, absolutely terrified of women. So, I mean, Wait, successful or at? not. Where's real at? Because maybe he's, my anecdotal he's, experience he's is in the not chat. enough. Chat. He's in I'm the chat. He's in the chat. Anti, ain't nobody paying attention to you, man. Are you paying <laughs> attention to Wallace? Wallace gave some really interesting points. Nah, I ain't, I'm, I'm paying attention to the chat. He's really in the chat. A really? You can't concede that you might be off on this one? I'm li hey listen hold on let's be clear I'm on the record as someone that's hold on let me get on cam for y'all <laughs> I am on the one that wow as someone that's willing to concede I'm I could one thousand percent be wrong and willing to make the adjustment okay. I'm waiting for everybody else on this panel who's never I'm been about wrong. to get on camera with my shape I've been wrong. wait 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 I'm, I'm waiting for everyone with my else. shape out let me go I'm get my get some on pants on. Panel. To concede the same thing. I'm about to go get some pants on and get back on camera. I'm sick of this. Look, I'm <laughs> some pants. Pants for camera. I mean, I just, I, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt y'all, but um, I, I just think no, it's, you could, it's value to, to to see things like this, um, because, like, I, 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 I was one of those kind of people that, you know, I, I I've rolled in different circles based on wait a minute, a lot, wait a minute, a lot hold of on, different on. things. Wallace, 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 Wallace. Hold on one second, Jr. <laughs> Got a whole picture of himself up behind himself. <laughs> I just turn the, the other way. You got to turn your head the other way. It's perfect. <laughs> they are got a picture of himself there looking like there himself. It is. Are you holding too? Are you holding uh, oh, JR is the king. Talk, right? you don't king talk. 
JR is the king. Well, JR does. And he's holding sneakers. Why are you in the closet? JR, are you in your closet? Is that shoes and blankets? Trapped in the closet. Shoes and blankets. Blanket. 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 <laughs> JR up in the closet. JR, JR, JR got a whole NFT behind him. That's a photo. Bro. That's Photoshop. Hey, man, don't let them do that to you, man. They say you trapped in a closet. He over there trapped in the closet. Come on now. I like how your light like subtly goes lower and lower oh as the night gosh, goes on. Man. I noticed. Y'all didn't peep Mr. Light. You all went out too. And he switched his name again on y'all. Mr. Pookie, yeah. You know a dude is a legend if he got a picture I, of himself up. He got Anton. Uh Mr. Anton. <laughs> Mr. Anton. Yes, sir. Um, I was just wondering if uh, what did you think about the young man's decision? Um I mean, I don't know if you knew anything about what I just yeah, I know tried about to, it. like. Okay, I, I didn't know. Like, if you, you knew about it, I, I was Sanders. Yeah, I mean that's that's the best way to do it. You, I mean, to go and study under one yeah, of the he's best marketing himself effectively. Exactly, and that's the that's the thing. Like, it, I, I thought that was a, a brilliant decision for the young man. Um, I, I would have made it myself if I was him personally, but he was smart as um, piss. But I don't think it had anything to do. Listen, if Deion Sanders was over at. The University of Michigan, I think he would have went over. He would have went there. Exactly. That's my that was my that's my whole point. At all. <laughs> but I, I, I think if like I really do believe that um <laughs> those kind of things are were prevalent in that decision for him. Um also like with the with the gentleman that you coach, um the, do you find that the the more successful men that you are around, um <laughs> that they have problems? <laughs> Problems with, um, uh, I think that a lot of the guys that have the problems, <laughs> I, I, think, I don't think it has anything to do with money. I don't think, I don't think it has anything to do with money at all. I think that in a lot of instances, the money money helps with confidence. Um, but I think that once you get to a certain level and a lot of these instances, especially if they single, I think that they try to use money in order to continue to make their case for it. But listen, I don't care who you are. There is some guys that's going to just be super duper intimidated no matter what. They've never learned how to be able to move with confidence in a room full of people, let alone amongst women. And I mean, you know, for us to act like that, that's not real. Like it be dude. Listen, you go to any bar. Go to any bar in the United States of America, and I'm talking about low end to top end, all the way across the board. There is going to be guys there who just stare at the girls, and they will not walk up to them chicks to save their life. The chick can give them all kind of choosing signals, and they are going to sit there nervous, trying to work their way up to have that conversation, and they not going to walk up to them. Oh yeah, I've seen it. Any bar all the time way again. across the, and uh, all the way across the United States, it happened every single day. Jared, didn't you say in Houston so when you asked the men that? Didn't they? Some of them say they don't go up to women at the Houston meetup, or no? Anton, never mind. Oh, you talk. I didn't know if you said Jr. or me. No, about, you remember at the Houston meetup? Yeah, I, I know. Like, they didn't say some of them were like they wouldn't go up to women or something like that. Yeah, come on, Q. Listen, yeah. we have too many of these conversations in person. And yeah. coaching online, all of that, man, ain't nobody just coming up with this out of our, yeah. out of the top of our head. We see this happen every day. Ain't nobody got time for that. Y'all men scary. I, mean, I grew up in a different era, man. Q, as a matter of fact, Q, hold on, hold on, Q. It is. I, I, was at, hey, Q, I Q, 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 Q. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Wallace. Q, when we was at the Houston meetup. It was dudes. They was they waited till one, two in the morning. We was there, and they were sitting there talking to me, talking about, uh, Anton. I'm why you walk her out, and then another dude was like, "Yeah, man, I want to shoot my shot at Q, but I don't think it can happen." Like, what? Yes, you never bro. Told me that yes, bro. It's just like, and I'm like, "Oh man, I didn't know you wanted to holler at her. Why you wait all night? Why you ain't say something to her?" Dudes all day long be intimidated by women. That's dope. Real talk. But Anton, you was around Q. Him said some suckers. That's all. <laughs> yeah, I, it's no way. Cause guess what? I would have shot my shot off the airplane. I would have shot my shot everywhere. And guess what? If I would have missed, I would have shot my shot somewhere else. Hey, just hey. because it's the dudes you was with don't do that. I just don't see them type of dudes. That's all and I'm logic, saying. Logic. Hey, Anton, but that's the thing. Like you, 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 wolves don't run with sheep. 
Wolves don't yeah. run with sheep. You, you're no, running no, with a, no, a, a no, pack no. that does that. Hold on. I don't think that Mr. Logic is a running pack at all. Stop wait, 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 wait. We ain't used to go to the mall just to holler at chicks and shoot your shots seven ways. Rilla, we, we don't even know how old you are. 30 years ago, Rilla. It's different now. Yeah. Yeah. I okay. said Logic. I said logic. Okay. What up, Kay? I said some of y'all. I said logic. What up, Kay? Uh, you know what? I'm starting. With, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to be with Rilla though. I'm thinking that it's maybe Atlanta thing. You think it's Jesus Christ? Man. Man. I, I'm just saying. Look, Rilla's right. Like we used to, it was never That's a problem for us to holler chicks. So yeah, I mean, we used to go to the mall. We used to go to the underground. Like I never met a dude that didn't shoot a shot. What dog? We don't want to talk about these Atlanta. Come on, man, please. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please stop putting that Atlanta on the pedestal. Right now, bro. My niggas is crazy. Stop putting that Atlanta on the pedestal. Right now, the, pedestal. The, same, the same way that they be shooting the shots at the women, they turn around and shoot the shots at the men, too. They're like, you know, they shooting the shots. That's the point. You're right. They, 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 they shooting shots, and then they taking, and then they taking back shots. So right after intimidated by successful men or women. they shooting shots That's and then they crazy. taking the back shots okay, too. Cool. So hey, what you got to say? What you, what you about to they say? They ain't intimidated by successful men or women. That's what it's right. Like. No, you got that right. They ain't intimidated by the men at all. So, Antenna Hop said, about? and I get what you're saying, but I just like want to differentiate or just ask a little bit about the difference. Um, do you think that only certain men? have that issue or do you think that in general men are like that nope i think that um i think that in general the majority of men are like that okay i, I think asking. that in general the majority and i don't think it even have anything to do with race i don't think it got nothing to do with culture i think overwhelm even if you go all the way back to high school it was a small Group of dudes that got the majority of chicks, and the rest of the dudes usually are timid. Pretty okay, much. so you just think that's just a general, yeah, thing. that's just a general yeah. sentiment amongst men in general. Okay, and, I was just and when is the last time Rilla shot his shot? Rilla, haven't you been with your girl for years? Have been you been actually for, been? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, let's be clear. I've been with my girl for five years, it'd be six years this year, right? Okay, so let's be clear. We sitting up here acting like now maybe maybe y'all didn't go to the malls maybe y'all didn't go to skating rinks maybe y'all ain't never went to a club or a dance party or something like that and the dudes used to sit around and used to challenge you hey man go holler at her go pull her and the whole thing was how many numbers you could bag and My most bag. of them dudes were scary no I got you I got you that's can, can I right. can I right can I interject for a second I, I'm confused can I can I interject I'm for a second and undecided yeah yeah we got you Wallace. My bad. I'm I'm confused. Oh tight. All right. All right go ahead, Wally. <laughs> so <laughs> so in the environment in the environments that I used to work in, I, I used to set up a lot of bachelor bachelorette parties. Uh, and that's exact that's how I actually wound up finding myself in Pennsylvania is through one of those groups. Um but during that time with those group of guys, usually it's the guy that's getting married, maybe one or two of his best friends, and these would be groups of 10, 15. And maybe three of them had enough confidence and ability to go up and talk to women. These are bad looking guys, average looking guys. And this is years and years and years of seeing it. Guy go work behind bars, high, high limit bars, dealing, dealing cards to high limit people, you know, the women, but, but at the same time, women in those packs with the bachelorette parties, the, the baddies know they're bad. And then the ones that are there that, that, have low self-esteem or stuff like that. They don't even know how to carry a conversation. There are socially awkward women out there that turn guys off, you know, and it was one of those things where you, you can see it both ways, but I think there's girls, there are women out there that are just, they're intimidated by good looking guys, you know, and people don't really speak to that because I, I, I've seen it myself. It makes them more insecure. And then they think you're cheating on them or, or stuff like that. I've had a couple of guys because, when, when I was working in those areas, most of those areas are women. It's all the girls, the girls in the bikinis, and, you know, the bustiers doing all that stuff. So it's very rare that you get a guy to, to have, the, have that position. While I was doing it, you know, it made my, made my, my former fiance very insecure. And, you know, it, it caused a rift between us. And then when I was dating other women after we separated, it, it made those relationships hard. So I, I can understand that coming from, from both ways about, 
you know, just social status or whatever it is, success, success or status, because those are things that jealousy and insecurity run deep in, in both men and women. Hold on, I got a question now, because y'all y'all really bugging me out with this one. So y'all telling me y'all go out somewhere and y'all see a chick that y'all want to holler at and y'all don't do it? There, there are guys that do it. I, I, I've got a buddy of mine that I never. No, no, no I'm, talking, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Oh, oh no, not, not me. I'm, I'm, I'm getting married in a couple of weeks. I've never had a, I've never had a problem with, with talking to women that oh. way because I, I got involved with, you know. Uh, and see, and but, but, but this is the crazy part about it. Like, you would literally see, as the the waitress go to each table. She's gonna hit it, and then, so I don't know. Maybe that's my world. Not, not I, each. Hold on, not each table. She'll get hit on by one guy at a group of four. So that means that the other three, they, they, they could all take their shot. I ain't talking about that. I, I'm just saying she getting shot at. Yeah. So like I, I'm telling you, like if if if, if, if she was a silhouette, you know what I'm saying it'd be at an M16 range. That means she's constantly getting <laughs> shot at. So my whole point is saying. Is I don't I never seen a world like that that I never had one of my friends say I want to holler at her, but I'm scared or I want to holler at her, but I'm scared of rejection. No, because I mean I got friends that will holler at her if she well, don't. Well, what, 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 what else? What, what, what else would you be scared of? I mean, she's not going to beat you up. That's some what men I'm saying. To be, no, don't so, say no. I'm scared some, of rejection. Some, some men need to be, just be told that they're scared of rejection. Yeah. No, I don't know some, why. Some, some well, women, she, some women, jump, some women, some women need will. to be told that too, because at the same point that, you know, there, there's people that say that women uh, don't ask for raises. Like I've had to tell even my mother and my sister, you know, you need to, you know, ask for this promotion. You're, you're qualified for it. But the fear of rejection is one of the reasons that stop them or insecurities about maybe not getting that job. OK, I'm, so, I'm, I'm going to draw some game on y'all. Right. And my yeah. friends he watching this tonight. So he probably going to get mad at me. I'll tell you how we do it. Right. If we see a chick and we meet a chick, we're friends on her because we want to get access to her other friends. So we don't really, really try to holler at her. And that's how all everybody do it. We want access to the whole crew. So yeah, I've, I've seen always work. So I never seen nobody they they scared. Okay. This is the same to me that Mom, men are scared to talk to chicks. Mr. Pookie, you're in Atlanta and you're in, like in Houston, is they hopping from one chick. That's the thing. If you get denied, I think it's the same thing in Atlanta. If you get denied, they go into the next chick back to back. Right. So right. I kind of get it. Like in Houston, that's how these men are out here, what I've seen in the past. So that's kind of how it is in, in kind of Atlanta, I think. So are they intimidated think, OQ? I don't know, but I've heard men say that. Oh, I don't think she would like me. I don't think I'm her type, because we can tell. Like, oh, like, and that's how I'll be like, wait, why do you think so? Like, we can see, we can see the type of woman she is. Like, you can, I mean, that's the way to talk. I'm not about to be naive, like. Hey, Q, Q, you go to my neighborhood, you'll be shot up more than Captain America. You no, know what I'm saying? I'm telling you. Let me let me yes, reiterate you something. something. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that's how it is. Let me reiterate something. Exactly. Mr. That's, Lee that's how Houston is. is. I got you. I'm dead, Let me yeah. reiterate something for the young bloods that may still be in the chat because my I, I feel like I'm about to get an aneurysm. Um, Your head's kind of poking. Yes, sir. That very right. Oh, so one thing Mr. Lee said that I thought was poignant. Young bloods, go at these ladies. He was saying that one thing. Uh, if I remember, Jr. and you can correct me. Yes, he was saying one thing that they did when he worked on Wall Street is that. Uh, they would pull up to a restaurant or whatever, a social spot or whatever, and they would have uh, the 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 managers mm -hmm. of the firm would have the 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 younger ones go in and like go pull a chick, go pull a chick. Yeah, because if you could bring a bad and this is a bad chick, if you could bring her back to the fold, if you could bring her back to the crew, or whatever, right? Then it's nothing. For you to make that call and say, "Hey, I need you to transfer eighty million dollars to this firm," but but at the same time, it also makes you not fear rejection. Correct. Because if, because if you can't, then if you can't pull it. That's yeah, the point exactly. That he was making you. But a lot of guys, a lot of guys fear the that initial rejection. They don't have that initial push to get out there, and then they never build that. It, listen, man, and that's why I say I'm willing to concede. Because that's not my experience. And I, and I will admit, maybe mine is anecdotal because 
I grew up with an uncle that was a Mac that told me conversation rule the nation. So they see that's the thing. Me. You you grew up with an uncle yeah. or a male but figure that told you that. Rules. A lot of a lot of my friends didn't have a, a older dude to tell them that and give them game. Like, mm -mm. So that's why that's why these dudes. Hold are on, Mr. Wallace, Mr. Wallace. I've never been around dudes where see, listen, this is what I just said. We used to go to the mall. We used to go to the skating rink. We used to go to clubs. The whole thing was to cut who could get the most numbers. Mm -hmm. And you actually had to call people and talk to them on the phone. Yeah. So, right? so you're probably around my age. I'm 40. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't nah, texting. Nah, he about 60. About 60. <laughs> this ain't texting, right? This is you calling them on the rotary phone. You got to. Yeah. You know, on that and I had dudes, I had dudes in my crew. That like I literally had to build their like help them out, you know, tell them not to be scared. These were good yeah, dudes on the football that. team, you know, you know, educated dudes, but they were just you know awkward with women, you know. And I was I was that dude you would take, you know, everybody's coming with me. So if I'm going out, you know, I'm gonna you know have that kind of experience with me. So when I would go out, I would take them with me. And uh, I remember being in the club with my boy, and he don't know how to dance, and he wants to, he he wants to talk to these girls. I'm like, dude, you can do pull ups and squats, do it on beat. And, and that that's he was dancing, you know, an hour later with two girls. But that's a lot of dudes don't have those kind of crews. You guys got solid crews. Exactly. But you know what? I, I want to I say something because I'm going to go. I ain't know it was two o'clock. God damn. Hey, yes. look, <laughs> look, real quick, though. I mean, and y'all might be right because I can't do no Internet day to save my life. Like, I can't. I don't know how to do that. Like, I don't really do a lot of texting. I don't know how to do that, right? But I see it's dudes out here that's masters on that sh shit. So, yeah. I, hey, maybe y'all is right. Maybe I'm, I'm the last of a dying breed. So maybe, Anton, I apologize. These niggas out here can't talk to chicks. We it. Fucking thumbs burning from all, we, all the DMs and the fucking day naps. Thank so you. guess what? You know what? That's uh, their fault. Because I'm shooting my shot. Let me see it. Brother, you're next. You're South you South the cab. Can, can I say one more thing before I bounce out? You your West End, bro. Who? <laughs> West End Mall. <laughs> I'm shooting my shot all way, bro. I'm telling you, matter of fact, hey, look, I got a machine gun. I'm getting yeah, everything. Hey, hey, you mm -hmm. want that green bar? I got the flip phone, so. <laughs> nah, I still have ghetto. That green bar ghetto, a different ghetto. No, stop the cash straight now. Russell Simmons tried to buy that. It was nicer in 2010. Oh no, no. Gosh, it was Kayla. nice. It was nice in 2005. Kayla. Okay. That was the last so time it was bougie, nice. Kayla. 2005. Okay. And barely. <laughs> but that was the last time it was nice. Look. That's where you get all the dope sneakers from. You get all the dope sneakers from South Dakota and Greenbrier and West End. Now you get the dope. Yeah, I was gonna say you could get the dope dope sneakers from Greenbrier. They got World Foot Locker. Yeah, premium. <clears throat> well, family. Uh, let me see, Sway. I know you're back there, brother. I'm gonna go ahead and end this broadcast. I, I see. You. We definitely appreciate you guys for tuning in to La Peef Let's Talk. I know y'all ready to get back to your families and uh, y'all need y'all need to go to bed. Hey, don't nobody, don't nobody need to be going doing no late night uh, food run. <laughs> hey, you know I just ate, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, I, I see. For, uh, for the yeah, churches, church of chicken. Tell me this ain't the craziest show we've had so far. Man, like, you know, KFC hey, got them. You're uh, such a father. You're like y'all need to go to bed. Yeah, do I don't to go eat to bed. garbage logic. So I got go a question. Oh, before y'all go to bed. Oh, y'all go to bed. event down here in Atlanta. Hey, ATL, shout it. Hey, Polo Bear in the A. It's on the calendar, right? I didn't right know he was in Atlanta. Polo Bear huh? in the A. Hey, I didn't know you were uh, in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. It's being scheduled, right, right JR? Huh? Oh, it's snap. Atlanta. It's being scheduled. Yeah, Atlanta going to be the second city we drop in. So you got to make sure you uh, pop in on a live show, Polo Bear. Okay. Do you, I mean, you got like. Is it gonna be summer, fall, spring? Um we're gonna do it at Apache. The ATL Apache is closed. Who? No, yeah, ATL moved. gonna probably be over the summer. Moved. Yeah, it's gonna be over the summer. Polar bear, you might as well they just moved. come to the they they moved. Moved. It's gonna be on the summer. It's gonna probably be like June or July. What's in April? They're I'm nice. sorry. Q. April is the Houston one, so you might as well come to that one. Atlanta and Houston Houston's sucks. like the cheap too. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 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 
Who you know? I might get too. Hey, uh, Polar Bear. Like sucks. Hey, fit. Hey, Polar Bear. Courtney's going to be at the show in Houston. Huh? Who? Courtney. Who All right. Is it gonna be a Nashville or a Memphis show? I don't know, but that might be that don't, might be that might be 2023. Don't do that. <laughs> well, I have right, to so. keep in touch definitely to make sure I hit the oh, uh, yeah, man. the Atlanta one that you have in the summer. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. But thank you, uh Polo Bear. Appreciate you, sir. You're welcome, and to Bye. all of you, good night. And be safe. Right. And hey, one last thing: we're going to have snow this Sunday in Atlanta, so the polar bears going to be extremely happy. I can roll around. Oh Lord! <laughs> anyway, good night. Uh, that's for the snow. Night. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to have snow here too. I'm surprised Anton stayed the whole night. Uh, no, that's because I was. I wanted to shout out my zesty men down in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> zesty? No, zesty. Anton, Anton always. Oh, zesty. No, no zesty. Ze- zesty. 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 Oh, zesty. 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 Oh, no. You're a certain type of dude when you're zesty. <laughs> Anton oh, always a 16 for the after hours. He trying to um skate out on that. Hey, uh, Vintage and Mike Dub, uh, who might, I might stick around for another 15 minutes. We'll see. But, uh, Regular crew, man. Appreciate you guys. Wish you guys hit the like button on the way out. Um, let these people get their rest and get ready for tomorrow. It's been a great show. I appreciate everybody. I look at you thirsty, ready to leave. Man, you ready for me to throw that thumbnail up, huh? I hope y'all men feel better. I hope y'all men feel better. Anton, Rilla, Logic. My blood pressure. I was at it today. Y'all was at it. No, my blood pressure up. Y'all left a a couple times. There's ocean going on from the three of them today, you know? Y'all left. Came back, left again. Left, came back, left, came back. Left, came back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Courtney, bring that out of us. Like <laughs> <That's> accountability. <laughs>
My favorite part about Teach Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. They really make the process of achieving and maintaining an amazing skin easy. Shout out to Teach Hanley. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and not only will you get Teach Hanley for the best possible price, but they'll also give you a free gift with your first box. Click that link and get started today for just $30. Feel the teach. Let the teach force be with you. Look who decided to stick around by accident. <laughs> I had to bring him back for well, just like, like you is. Well, I'm getting the same type of ass that you get. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about the guitar. What's going on here? <laughs> I'm getting the same type of ass that you rich niggas get. What? <laughs> is he on the phone? Right. What? I think I Shit. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. <laughs> <laughs> what up? What up? Hey. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be okay. Hey. Hey. I'm getting the phone, same. Man. I'm getting the same type of ass y'all get. <laughs> right. And I was talking. Hey, I was talking to my guy then, right. And uh, he's trying to clean it up now. We was talking, we was talking, we was talking about this type of stuff, right? And I was telling him, I was telling him, I was like, Look, I understand what Anton's saying, like, choose a different woman and stuff of a different caliber. But we all been saying, no matter who was broke saying it or we successful saying it, a woman, main our main focus when we see a woman, we look at their looks and stuff like that. So clearly. We still dating the same type of women, no matter we got money or not. So it don't matter when we. I'm kind of confused when we say levels of the woman, because then I'm like, what's the difference if they if they do you want a woman that got money or do yeah, is they looks is the key? If the looks is the like answer, because I'm I'm I've been dating women that look like a rich man would have. I'm gonna just and my say thing this. is, and my thing is, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm on, I'm only be on here for ten minutes, so don't don't think All it's right. gonna be one of them long ass shows. And y'all, you, yeah, you better get yeah, your I bag right it. now. To I gotta get, I gotta get my rest. I got a long day tomorrow. All right, can I finish? Oh, wait, hold Go on. Ahead. You gotta get uh, Trent, okay, Vintage, and uh, Jedi Mike in here. Hold on, and Kay gotta finish wiping her hair or something. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Vintage. I know you've been back there waiting for a little bit, man. What's what's going on, brother? You know, appreciate yeah. it. Well, first, I got to say, uh, JR, pause on staring at the skin because that was crazy. Like, uh, I didn't expect that, but... What you yeah. talking about? Like, the... the, 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 the yeah, the promotion thing. Right, That's that what you were saying. That wasn't me. <laughs> all right, my bad, my bad. No, it's all good. Appreciate it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I've been watching you guys for for some time, and appreciate the show. Appreciate everybody. And I don't know, I got a little bit confused with the whole uh, getting intimidated because for me, like, I feel like you don't really get intimidated. It doesn't matter like how much the the, the girl makes. But uh, there were some pretty cool points at the end that uh, maybe it's a minority. Like for me, I didn't get those experiences, but. When you really think about like the club and stuff like that, when you go out, I feel like maybe it's not most people, especially like when you got an advantage, whether you're okay looking or you're tall, maybe sometimes you forget that not everybody is in the same situation. So sometimes 
I, I don't know. Maybe uh, so. Those were pretty good points at the end. Um, should boundaries and baggage be discussed more in the beginning? I mean, I'm in sales, so I feel like you know you you got to be able to read people because everybody's gonna put their best foot, like their their best like look the best at the beginning, but you got to be able to read people and uh, to see for yourself and not only hear what they're saying, but see the action. So that was my point on that. So not only listen to what people are saying, but be able to read people and see uh, what type of person you're dealing with, basically. Yeah, that was pretty much my two cents. I, I I wanted to get a shout out to Anton because I find the show thanks to him. Like I was looking for a watch last year, and I was looking at his vid one of his videos, and it's crazy that now I found this whole word, and it's pretty amazing. And I've been watching you guys for a while, so I'm not gonna take too much of your time. Appreciate everybody, and I love what you guys are doing. We Thank definitely you. appreciate it, man. You can still hang out for about another seven minutes. Um, uh, we're still gonna be yeah, another seven minutes. Oh. Also, shout out to you know, Teddy Riley right here, man. You see Teddy Riley? Yeah, let me, let me tell yeah you we got Teddy Riley, we got J. Cole. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, Mike? What's going on, man? Not much. How you oh, you feeling, got brother? two mics. You got two mics. Oh, wait, what other mic at? You got Mike Dub Hello? and then you got a uh, Jedi Mike. Oh, I mean, he, he got Ray Charles up there. Yeah, it's te- he's still Teddy. Oh, Jedi Mike, you changed this shit quick as hell. Yep, yeah, yep. You guys got that logic shit, man. I don't know what y'all. Mm-hmm. What's going yeah. on, Mike Dub? Talk to us. What you got for us? Uh, yeah. I just want to say on the whole um, intimidation oh. thing, it varies from man to man, really. But me personally, uh, I'm not intimidated. I could really care less. Only time I care is when you throw is when you throw your success in my face, thinking that it's gonna do something. But you know, again, and I may be missing it, man. I think it goes back to what Kayla was saying. How would a man know? Because we, we framed it as based on what a woman looks like, how she's dressed, how she presents herself. And what Kayla was saying, well, how would you know if you don't step to her? There's plenty of spaces that we go into where a woman may look like a certain way, but you don't know if she's successful. But there's a difference between looks and success. I agree. So how would you know if a woman is successful to be intimidated by if you don't step to her first? And that seems like that's been the conversation the whole night. I even brought up the fact um, to Jay point, and I, I thank you for being vulnerable and open, Jay. Um, but, you know, that was the name. That story that you gave about that woman buying you a duplex is just, hey, man, that's master game right there, bro. <laughs> that's master game. That sounds like a man that's not intimidated. He said he shot his shot right. at, the, at the landlord. You know how I learned. You know how I learned, really. That don't. But look, that don't sound like a man that's intimidated by a successful woman. But you know what? You, oh, but really, ahead, here's the thing, though. You don't really know the success until you get to know the woman. You're first going off her looks first. You're muted. I can't hear you. I agree. I, I'm saying I agree. You. Uh-huh. Think, that's what Kayla's point was. Is that you don't know until you approach that woman and get to know her first. Like you can't be intimidated by a woman's success because the way we was framing it initially is based on how she looked. Now, once a man gets to know a woman, is he intimidated by her success? You know, I get it. If a woman throwing her, I guess, her education and accolades in your face. But again, like I said, most men that's in those situations, they finesse in those women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the whole... They, I remember the on the panel. There's a whole thing about men not wanting to approach a group of women. From my experience, it's if you go talk to that one, the rest of them are gonna feel some type of way because they you pick the you pick that one out of the group, and so uh, they're gonna say anything to try and throw your game off to get you to react to make you say something stupid, and then you the bad guy. 
But how you work around it, Mike Dove? Because I know you done pulled two or three of them. That was another one calling. <laughs> another one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> so you can't make this shit up, huh? <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, uh, come on, man, give us that pimpology. You went up in there, talk, talk. You told her either you choosing or you losing. Come on. Either. Yeah, you told her. Yeah, I told her. <laughs> <laughs> but one time you go up. But either or, you go end up talking to all of them. Wait, so you wasn't the paymaster? You ain't buy drinks for all of them, did you? I've done it. I've walked out with seven numbers before. Look at, look at Kayla. <laughs> Kayla said, "Yeah, you gonna pay? You gonna pay like you weigh?" Kayla, I'm not paying for drinks for all y'all. I I walk, it's not I even. Walk. It's not even that. It's just like if you come talk to me, you feel me, and I'm with my two friends, and you offer me a drink, but you don't offer them. I'm like, absolutely mm. not. Cause I'm only trying to talk to you now, nah. but uh, I <laughs> you said know, absolutely not. Is, is 14 more dollars like, really gonna make a difference? You said how much? 14, 14, 20 more dollars really gonna make a difference? You, but I've also been sitting in my pockets, like my money don't matter. I've also been in a situation where I've gotten free drinks. You got I didn't free think drinks? it was that much, but okay, this uniform goes a long way. Oh. Oh man, going. Oh, uh, salute. Thank you for your service, bro. Let me say that off top. Thank you for your service, man. We appreciate you for real, for real. The only way, really, <laughs> that that will work is if you pulled me away from my friends. Yes. Thank but you. If Kayla. me and my friends are at the bar and you come up to us at the bar, yeah, like, you're what, like what happened, drinks. like what happened in, in Hitch, the movie. He pulled something like that. Wait, I don't remember. What part of the movie? I ain't watch it. Well, you sit there and said, hey, uh, I'll take, uh, let's say, a Jack and a Coke. And he says, excuse me, I don't work here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the guys were around her. He just went straight to her and it's like, excuse me, ma'am, I got a drink here. And then she walked away from the guy straight to him. Yeah. He's like, you know, I didn't work here. It's like, yeah. Oh, so I was supposed to get him away from you. Oh, I don't remember that part. I'm sorry. So the first. Yeah, that means that was after the whole, you know. Can I say something before you uh, pack up, Jay? Hold on, uh, hold on, Jay. I'm gonna come back to you. I promise. Let me get to Trent real quick because he haven't spoken yet. How you doing, sir? Welcome to the show. What you got for us, brother? I appreciate you letting me on. Um, I just wanted to hit like two topics real quick. Uh, first, with the men being intimidated by women uh, being successful. I I just don't really see it. I, I what I do see a lot of. Uh, of men <clears throat> who just don't know how to approach women. Uh, while I was in the chat, I was trying to explain the. Uh, what I was saying was that the um, it's it's like art. You know, either you got it or you don't. Uh, some artists are great at doing what they do, and some aren't. So I keep saying the uh, the Russell Westbrook movement. If anybody watched basketball, we all know that Russell Westbrook is not great at what he does, but he keeps shooting his shot. He keeps shooting his shot. And when you keep shooting your shot, it doesn't matter if a woman denies you. The next woman to come up and you keep moving and you keep moving. I think a lot of things, a, a lot of problems with men are they're just afraid to do it. Now, I've noticed on the uh, on the chat that a lot of the men from Rilla to Anton, you know, they were button heads. But I, I was agreeing with both of them. The reason I say that is because uh, when I used to go to the clubs, to the bars, it was easy for me to walk up to a woman and approach her and speak to her. But I've seen a lot of men that were holding on to the wall, wouldn't move off of the wall. Uh, sometimes it's just I think they don't know what to say to a woman. Uh, the only way you're going to know is by approaching her. So you just got to keep shooting your shot, keep shooting your shot. If you're scared, scared money don't make no money. And that's the same thing with women. If you're scared to get a woman, you will never find a good woman. Uh, the other thing that I really wanted to speak on was uh the lady uh spiritual whatever her name was uh speaking on her yes, mom sir. you know speaking on um the mom name was spiritual ghostbuster yeah 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 speaking don't, don't say her name uh, there, <laughs> narcissist <clears throat> yeah. 
when you're speaking on the mom situation, uh, I, I, I was more so with Anton. Uh, and the reason I was more so with Anton, uh, for two reasons. Um, I was raised by my pops. Uh, I love my mom to death, but um, they split when I was five and I, I, I moved in with my dad and I was raised by him. Brought me up around a lot of women. And he showed me that, like, you don't have to be scared to to approach women and, um, you know, try your, you know, do your one, too. And what you have to do is you just you just got to kind of move forward. Um, uh, my mom, I love her to death. Right. But she comes second to the woman that I'm with. And she really comes third to the woman I with because I, I I I put my woman first. I don't have any kids, so then it's my father. And the reason it's my father is because he understands what I'm going through and what I'm approaching in life. So <clears throat> I think that where people get it wrong is a lot of a, a lot of people put too much stock into their family. I love my family. I love what they do, but we all got our own things going on in life. And what I do with uh, my family is I keep them at bay. They don't need to know what's going on in my life. Uh, yeah, I, I bring my woman around, but at the end of the day, it's our life together. It's what we do together. Uh, my family can't really um, break that up or bring it together. It's all upon us. And I think a lot of things is, is that people put too much stock in what their family thinks. I think if we get outside of that, uh, we'll start to learn a difference. Um, I know they always say blood is thicker than water, but I don't believe that. The reason I don't believe blood is thicker than water is because you walk away from your blood to mix with water to make more blood. So when you think of that perspective, you start to really realize like, hey, yep, that's family. Yep, you love them. Yep, you put them on a pedestal. But this woman that is going to be walking with you from the till the end of your life that is your go-to person and no one should ever get in between that and i think too many people let family friends uh, associates get in between that and i think if we learn from that we can actually move forward but the problem is we keep getting that stock and letting people adjust my family already know you don't have anything to say if you have if the only thing that you can say is good things and if you don't like this woman this has nothing to do with you. You aren't with that person. My uh, soon to be fiance, she does not know I'm about to uh, ask her to marry me. Um, <clears throat> She's been there day one. Successful woman, uh, becoming the director of a school. Uh, and uh, we have an event space where we have a program for young men and young women. And uh, one thing that we, we, we have been doing since day one is just sticking hand in hand. Yep, our family's there. Yes, our family's there to work with us, but it's our life. It's our movement. I've traveled around the world. I have family that's in the military. Uh, I've been to a hundred different countries and just noticing the way that people live and the way that the people adjust to life. It's either you're going to move forward with the person that you're with, or you're going to let your family and your friends hinder you. So which one are you going to do? And um, my family and friends already, well, I don't even have friends. I have family. Either you a family member or you not. And that's just the okay, bottom Dominic line. Toretto. Uh, and I just think that if people just start moving a, a according to that, they can move forward and to let uh, your mother or your father or your sisters or your brothers dictate who you're going to be with, you'll never be happy. So I just think that people have to start adjusting accordingly. And this is the person that you love, then you guys are going to go to war with each other, not your mom, not your dad. So on one end, yeah, I get it. The mom is a very important person. But if you have the, the structure of a mom and a father, usually your dad is will trump your mom. I, I love moms, but usually your dad will trump moms. Um, and until people get to that point, it's just there's just nothing to do. And they'll always ruin that relationship. So with me, it's more so let's do this. Let's move forward. And then let's make these moves. But I just don't think that people really can, they can't take away the family aspect of it. Again, yes, their blood, but you have to mix with water to make more blood. And until but people trans. get that concept, I'm, I'm, I'm about to listen. Go ahead, really. Yeah, because I'm, I'm curious, bro. Um, yeah. That's your government name right there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so what does your last name mean to you? Okay, so my last name it, it, it it's 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 two folds, you know what I mean? Um 
first it's a lineage of my people um granted to to every viewer that look like me they view me as a, a black american but in actuality my my name is an indigenous name right my, my grandmother was cherokee right so i'm more indigenous to this land than most black people or whatever but the look wise i'm black right um, so my name and lineage will always go on. I'm Trent Davis Jr. Actually, I'm named after my father. I move according just like my father. Like people Correct. say, you know what I'm saying? People be like, damn, you act just like your father. And Correct. if you know anything about my pops, my pops, he, he was the breadwinner. He was the patriarch. You know what I mean? Like, yep, I have my grandmother, but my dad was the godfather. Let's put it in those terms. He was the, the person that everybody went to for any situation. And now they're bringing that upon me. And with that, I'm the head. I'm the leader. I'm the next movement. And with my mom and my sisters and everything, they move according to how I move. You know what I mean? Correct. And that's okay. how I view it. Go ahead, brother. That's the, that's. I wanted you to add that additional. I was hoping you would peel that back because family is important. And one of the things that I didn't get a chance to touch on on this topic that I think is you know really important you know uh you know anton kind of speak about it i don't mean to you know steal his thunder or piggyback off his point but shit, when he's talking about you know courting as opposed to dating right my girl told me she said yo as soon as you went and talked to my father we could have been got married and i was like what like we could have been did this and she like yeah but we didn't talk about it right because i didn't I just I just assumed that okay, this is how she wanted done, da, 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 as opposed to saying, like, okay, this is how it's gonna be, right? But one of the key points that I will say is I definitely needed to go to her father and get permission to have his daughter. I would never I'm say, I would never say their his opinion of me didn't count, nor would I say my grandmother's approval or opinion of her didn't count my grandmother's approval of her counted very much that was important to me I, 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 let you cook. yeah i'm gonna let you cook but i just want to be clear for the young bloods because the bible is specific when it talks about leave and cleave so you write but here's the proper order <laughs> the first part is god over man man over woman woman over child right but here's the most here's the most important thing. You come, you and your purpose come before that woman. Then your woman. Then, you know, if y'all have children together, so on and so forth. But then family after that. But Correct. we can never lose sight of family. And I don't want to minimize that because it kind of sounded like, and I could be wrong, but it kind of sounded like, Family may be rubbing their nose in business and it's like, nah, this is me and mine and we cooking over here. It's like, for me, it's never that. Like, I take all of that into account um, because it is important um, for that approval, for me to preserve my legacy and what I'm building. All the while understanding what I'm building here, my last name is Woods. So I'm building on top of Woods. You understand what I'm saying? Right. I'm building no. on top of that. That means everything. When Dame Dash talks about I'm hustling for my last name, that's right. what we as men are doing. Correct. So family does count. It's not me leaving, separating from blood to go get water. No, it's me separating from blood to go get blood to co-mingle with blood to Correct. build on top of blood. Correct. That's no, no. I, so I just wanted to be clear, bro. That's all that is. I'm no, no, brother. I, I, I appreciate your, your, your input. No, I, I totally agree. Um, it's not that. It's more so like, um, prime example with, 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 the, with the woman I'm with right now, right? Uh, she, I, I made an emphasis on meeting her parents. You know what I mean? Like, I took we, we, we spoke about marriage. We spoke about you know moving to the next floor, but her parents are out of state. Uh, we are, we're in Ohio. Her, her parents are in North Carolina. So I made an emphasis on like, look, we not going to move forward talking about no marriage, no nothing until I actually meet your parents. You know what I mean? Um, I have to meet your parents. The reason I have to meet your parents is your parents are married and I could never not approach you the same way that your parents approached each other. You know what I mean? I believe family is very important. 
Uh, but one thing I can say is that my mother, like my mother is not a person that interferes in my life. Right. And I know that 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 happens a lot with some men. My mother has never been a person that interfered in anything that I did, nor has my father. They are more so. Is this the best interest? Is this the best thing for you? And then that's it. It's you up to you for you to make your life uh, the best of your capability. So the reason why I say, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't really pay attention to my family is because they stay out of the way. As long as they know I'm happy, as long as they know that I'm reaching the goal that I'm trying to reach and they, they know me like I, I, I'm a stubborn guy. I'm just like my pops. Right. No one's going to get in the way of my success. You know, what I mean? I'm the only one that's going to get in my way and I refuse to get in my way. So since no one's going to get in my way, they won't step anywhere inside of my relationship with a woman because they know that I'll make the uh, best decision. Long story short, let me pin you on to something, right? With, with me, just this just, just my personal life. Uh, I was married before. Uh, we, we lost our twins about two days after they were born. And it, it kind of like it, it, it broke up the relationship in the, in the long haul. You understand what I'm saying? And I learned from that. You know, I could have been a better man and I could have made a better step forward to not in that relationship. But at the time I didn't get it and I didn't understand it, but I learned from that. You understand what I'm saying? So me learning from that and moving forward, I understood that I had to stand 10 toes down. I had to stand on my square. And as me standing on my square, I understood where I where I stand as a man and the woman that I want to be with. Um, the reason I bring that up is because. I've noticed that a, a, a lot of men don't have, uh, I guess, red flags, right? One of my biggest red flags is um, how did you grow up? Did you grow up in a single family home? Did you grow up with a, a, a mother and a father? Were they married? What's the education level like? I look into all that. And the reason I look into all that is because I want to make sure that the woman that I decide to marry we both have an understanding of what marriage is and who is at the head and then so on and so on. Well, the woman that I'm with right now, and just like my ex-wife, both parents, both of their parents were married. Both of their parents, it was the man at the top and the woman here, but they were together. You understand what I'm saying? So those were the things that I was looking for. And when I found this young woman, I knew from day one I wanted to be with her, but it was just steps that we had to take. And those steps was understanding who we were as uh, as a person and then together. And with her, it's, it, I'm telling you, uh, I, I, I'm stubborn, but she take it. She she take it to another place. This is the most feminine woman I've ever met. I, 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 I kid you not. And I love it. You understand what I'm saying? So my thing is with with, with women and, and, and family. Yep. Family's there. Family is important because I want my lineage. I want a third. I'm a junior. I wanted Trent Davis the third, and I wanted to keep going on and on. I want my name to go on. I, I grew up in one of the worst neighborhoods in Ohio. It's called East Cleveland, Ohio. You can check it out on YouTube. They will tell you it's the worst city to live in. Trust me when I tell you this. Um, but if I can get out of it, anybody can get out of it. You understand what I'm saying? So with that, since I got out of it and she understands where I'm going, I know that this is the person I want to be with. And then my family understands that. And they won't step in that. They won't step in the way. And to me, if a if a, if a son lets his mother step in the way, he's a mama's boy and he does not understand how life goes. Yes, your mom is important. Yes, your dad is important. Yes, your siblings are important. But this woman that you about to bring your lineage in, that you about to bring a, a, another uh, a being into this world, you you you. That is the most important person. And once you realize that, then you can move forward. But if you let people step in your way, oh, man, it's, it's just all bad. You you two will never be one. And right now, I can say for sure, she and I are one. That's why I'm moving forward with the engagement and then marriage. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 just, it, and that's it. Man, I, love, I love my family. I love being around my family. But at the same token... I'm okay with not being around my family and starting a family. You know what I mean? I've, I've owned my house since I was 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? I've owned some other properties since I was 20 years old. So like I have been established for quite some time um, and, and just meeting a woman that has established herself. And then we established a business together and it's about growing 
children because that's what it's all about. Like our, our, we have an outreach program. I have an outreach program for young men. She has an outreach program for young women. And it's, that's what it's about. It's about building a community and family in general. You have blood family and then you have family that you create. And sometimes the family you create can be more important than the family that is blood. And that's how I look at it. I, I agree 1000%, bro. The woman that you marry is the woman that you 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 create family with. And that's the thing we got to start saying in these ciphers, in these circles, man. It's not the woman that you get with. It's not the woman that you impregnate. It's the woman that you marry. The woman that you marry, right? You and I both on record, you know, about engagements, but the woman that you marry, right? That's right. what we got to start saying openly, honestly, and, and push that agenda forward, man. We need to restore the nuclear family. Correct. Correct. And I, I totally agree with you, brother. I, I, I um, my, my, my dad pushed marriage. You know what I'm saying? And, and I got to tell you, he was a, a rolling stone. And I, and, and trust me, I was with my pops every step of the way, meeting plenty of women that he was with. But he, the, the one, the two things he always told me was the reason that he, he never got married was the woman that he loved that he was truly in what love with passed away you feel me so he has always been looking for that love that he couldn't find but he told me not to never look that way he told me to look for a woman to love look for a woman that you could take care of and you make a family and you make a home so my dad has always pushed me to not do what he did you know what i mean to not be like okay woman after woman or this or that it was find you a good woman that's going to stand side by side with you and you guys can have the world. And that's what I plan on giving this young lady is the world. And the world doesn't have to be the actual world. It's what we deem as the world. Yeah. Cause you'd be surprised how many people are not even married to someone they really even love like that. Sometimes they do it out of obligation because uh, they got the shotgun weddings the, That's where it get messy, Mike. That's where it get messy because, again, we and we've had this conversation on this platform, and I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, as much as I want companionship, my situation that I'm in right now is about legacy. It has nothing to do with my happiness. No, I'm yeah, I get that. Well, but... because, and and I think I I just want to be clear because we get into this. You know, love and happiness. This is not an Al Green record, man. Correct. This is I, this I, is this is about duty. This is about legacy. Correct. That's correct. what this is about. Yeah, I'm, it maybe about something right. else for 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 you know. I mean, I'm I'm tapped out. I'm I'm retired from making babies, so I'm not I'm not bringing no more kids into the world. I'm tapped out, right? I'm, so for me, I'm saying for me, this is about preservation of legacy then companionship this has nothing to do with happiness love is cool i will say and I, listen man go back check the tapes on you know earlier tapes and even you know i'll be quick to say i'm a sucker for love nigga i'm still am but let's be clear what? let's be clear i say that all day seven ways to sunday but let's be clear this is about duty and leg for me i'm saying for me legacy and even if men translate that and say, okay, well, really, what does that look like for you? My legacy for me looks a little bit different because from a legal perspective, I need to have certain things in place. There are certain things I want to have happen in these next however many years I got left on this earth, and I need her to be in a legal position to execute that. I need to be in a, a, a different type of position to generate wealth, right, for, for, for my legacy. However, for some men, you know, you guys' age, that may look like, you know, I want kids up out of her. And if that's the case, then that has nothing to do with love. No, I, I'm, I'm not talking. I'm not really talking about love. I'm talking about like just a connection. I get you. That's why I said companionship. I'm with you on that. I, I'm with you, Rilla. Um, uh, the way I, you know, uh, when I when I first met, you know, when I first met what my woman, you know, I, I spoke to her. And one of my things about uh, when I spoke to her about was. You know, I look at marriage as a, a business, you know what I mean? And I, I know some people don't like looking at it like that, but it's a business. It's a business transaction. Uh, and if you do it through the government, it literally is a business transaction between you, that woman and the government. 
Um, you know, and, and as long as we understand that this is a business and, and we're moving forward as a business, then it is. Love is great, but you can be in love with somebody one day and then you can be in hate with them the next day. That won't do anything. That won't take care of anything. Uh, my woman, she's my business partner, right? And uh, we had a little incident at, you know, at, at our business or whatever. And she was feeling some type of way. And when we got home, you know, because I told her we'd talk about it when we get home because this is business right now. When we got home, we spoke about it. And I told her flat out, I was like, business trend and relations trend, uh, relationship trend is two different things. You know what I mean? Whatever we got going on that business, that's business. But when we at home, that's a different thing. So if you're upset with me about something, whether it's in the business or it's in the relationship wise, those are two different things at two different times. And when she understood it, she was like, OK, I get it. And the reason we had got into it was because she wanted to wear her superwoman uh, hat. You know what I mean? She wanted to do everything. And I told her, like, look, I'll let you be superwoman, but I'm going to let you be superwoman alone. I ain't Superman. I ain't trying to be Superman. We, we, we got to do this thing together. You know what I'm saying? And when you try to be superwoman, sometimes that kryptonite, it'll come hit you when you when you least expect it. And when she understood that we had got so much closer you know what I mean? It, it just it, it moved us even more closer together. So I just think that if people come from that perspective, hey, yep, love is great. Being in love is great. But it's a business. You might hate me tomorrow, but we still together and we still in a business together, whether it's an actual physical LLC, S Corp, whatever, or it's a relationship. This is a business. And we have to take this and move forward. And when she understood that, I knew. Right there. Yep. That's the woman I'm marrying flat out. I don't care what she's talking about. Oh, she's taking this ring and we get married. I, I want to say something right quick, Trent Davis. I appreciate everything you said. I've just learned a lot from you and Mike Dub, everybody on the panel. Um, the stuff I, I that I'm about to come up with, um, you pretty much gonna squash your know, what you just said, pretty much squash that. But when we um uh, when we talk about uh, men, particularly black men, don't have the uh, capability, that confidence to talk to women. I really, I like to say that a lot of us black men didn't have dads, and uh, to teach us uh, about how to approach women and stuff like that. So basically, we just doing stuff on our own. We just learning as we go, and a lot of us didn't have that guidance. So. Uh, one thing my guys, my my guys taught me uh, when when approaching women, the reason why I got the confidence that I got now is I start off by approaching women who I didn't find too much attractive, to where I didn't care if she told me yes or no, and if she did say yes, it was like okay, cool. But I start practicing on that's like anything, you know, when you become a bosser. You don't be boxing heavyweight championships in the beginning. You got to build yourself up first. And that's what I did with uh, women that's, that I didn't find attractive. And then after that, then, you know, when, another thing, uh, women, they don't too much care. Even, even if they got money and stuff, a lot of women is more attracted to your masculinity and your confidence. And, um, uh, you know, that's what actually, and then if you got a personality to go with it and you handsome at the same time, because any I think an ugly man can find him, can make himself handsome. I see a lot of uh, women that you be looking like, damn, how the fuck did he end up with her? You know, I had people telling me the same thing. So, man, I ain't the best looking man in the world. Because they were like, I, I, you know, I, I've been in situations where I thought I ain't never would end up in this. I'm like, damn, I'm actually in this woman right now. I can't believe this. This me, you know. Uh, and I'm in. Oh, I'm like, you say I can't believe hey. I'm in this woman Jay. right now. Okay. I'm gonna have right. to challenge, man. Jay, I'm, I'm gonna have to on, challenge right that. How, I'm gonna have on, to challenge that. I'm gonna have to challenge okay. it. Man, how long? And this, I wanted to ask the women on the panel before they left. Uh, a lot of times, uh, men got a lot of stressors when it comes to picking up women. This is what we ain't saying. Like, I asked a lot of women, in the first, if you want to get a man, in the first three minutes, for, for the first three minutes, you got to make us smile. You got to make us want you. You got to say the right stuff and all this. So I had them do an activity. 
to see what they would do and see what they would say if they're approaching us. And a lot of them, and every last one of them flunked. A lot of them came out creepy. A lot of them didn't know what to say. A lot of them was doing the same stuff that we do. So I was like, man, so when you when you do get men that's in this situation, don't be putting us down like because y'all don't y'all can't even do it. Y'all expecting us to do this great thing, come up with the the best thing to say, everything to win you over. And a lot of times we be putting women on a pedestal that we shouldn't have to. The first that was the first mistake. You let you see a beautiful woman, you automatically put her up above you, and that's where you messed up at. She just a woman. Yeah, she might be looking good today and all this other stuff, but she's just a woman. You don't have to put her on no pedestal. And that's where you flop. Go ahead, my dude. Like I said, I don't have to challenge that about the whole having a dad teach you. Because even though I had a dad, he really didn't teach me nothing about women. Everything I did was self-taught, and I learned it through trial and error. Well, for the most part, you know, I, I'm not saying hey, every single got Two minutes, every, two minutes. I'm not saying every single man that's going to teach you because there's a lot of men that got kids didn't have game about themselves, didn't yeah. have, didn't really know women by themselves. It's just that they just a woman gave up in them and boom, you hear. But uh, for the most part, uh, I don't know. It's just that you needed we needed some more guidance. So. Jay, can I say this to you? So uh I, I got the same last name, name as you too, uh Trent. Okay, okay. Davis, that's what I'm talking about. So let me yeah. let me say this, Jay. Uh I got a lot of homeboys that didn't have their fathers in their lives, right? So they looked at my father as a father figure. But at the same token, you know, I, we was out here. We we was out here. I'm telling y'all. If y'all look up, I'm, I'm gonna say it again. If y'all look up my city, East Cleveland, where I grew up at, y'all know it's the slums. I'm gonna keep it 100. Um, but one thing that my, a lot of my homeboys learned a lot of their game, I'm gonna be honest with you for me. And the reason I say that is because I was the first to have a car. I was the first to get off the porch. You know what I'm saying? I was the first to do a lot of things that my homeboys just didn't know how to do or didn't do. And it was because I just had confidence in myself. It is what it is. You either going you're going to holler at me or you ain't going to holler at me. It, it, it just is what it is. And so I would actually take my homeboys with me. If I'm driving in the car, my homeboy with me, and they see a chick, and they like, damn, she nice looking. I pull over and I holler at her and I just let them see what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. And if they take my number, cool. If they don't, they don't. I literally heard at least five to ten of my homeboys use all the lines that I was using because they had kept up on it. They paid attention to what I was saying because the, the women were, they, they were, they were feeling it. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it, it takes for you to be with your homeboys or men that's a little bit older to get the game. And ain't nothing wrong with to watching other men and seeing how they approach people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, sometimes we got to get our own ways and look for a mentor or they don't have to be a mentor. Just look at what's, a, you know, what's in front of you, see what they doing and just emulate it. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. And that's just it. Hey, hey, ahead, hey, hey Trent, before we get off the panel, yeah. when you say uh, being around somebody older, now I got uncles that's around really in JR and them age, and they still be trying to check for women my age and younger. And I be pulling women more than they do. Hey, Jay, I don't know how old you are, man, but I'm, I'm 58. <laughs> He's 36. How old are you? He's 36. I'm 36. Oh, you 36? I'm 32, yeah. man. What the hell wrong with you? I'm, Look, I'm, I'm much older than you. Yeah, so I mean, hey, I, 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 you say I, got, I got uncles around y'all age. Oh, you talking 58? Yep. Okay. I'm 32. You ain't no 32, really. <laughs> but no, Trent, what, I, what, what I'm saying is, you know, it's all about you. Uh, you'd be surprised what women will see in you. Yeah. It's all about how you it's it's all about but a lot of times these men feel this way. I'm gonna be honest. They was told they was ugly all their life from probably their mamas, their aunties, their sisters, and stuff. So and then too, they never those men never was complimented about good stuff about them. They probably was always was rejected and everything they did wrong, they people usually would call out the bad stuff that they did. Like me, I, I went through that. You know they they always focus on the bad stuff and they never concentrate on the good stuff that i did so 
I didn't for a while. I didn't think I was deserving of nothing because all I heard was the bad stuff that J Prince do instead of the good stuff. So of course that won't build my confidence up. That brought my self esteem down. I had to find my confidence within myself of just dating women and stuff like that. I'm like, damn, I'm actually, and when I'm talking to these women, I'm actually because you. You can't fight nature. I let nature take its course. When you're talking to women, you can't force it. Just let nature take its course. And before you know it, I'm like, damn, I'm talking some slick shit. You know what I'm saying? And you can, you can tell when a woman vibing with you because she be all into you and stuff. Then I can start fingering with her, with her ponytail or her hair and stuff. She just a cheesing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You can tell. You know, oh, y'all grinning, man. Jay, what we doing all this for, man? You doing all this to this woman for what? What you trying to do? No, it's just that you know. Um, I'm not. I'm not saying this game. I'm not really, I'll be really feeling these women that I'll be talking like, to. Like he said, he's trying to get in her. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, Jay, Jay I'm with you, though. Bro, uh, my, my pops, I'm super wanted. Like, my pops used to be like, boy, you ugly. But, but he used to say it to kind of keep my head down because I was getting the other way. You know what I mean? A lot of women, oh, you're a handsome guy, blah, blah, blah. So my, my dad tried to kind of even that shit out so I wouldn't get a big head, right? But it kind of trained me to say, you know what? All right, even if I am ugly, I'm still going to shoot my shot. And it is what it is because... I'm not for every woman. Some women don't like the beer. Some women don't like the locks. And that's okay. I ain't mad at it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna keep shooting my shots to that woman that I that I like is gonna get with. You know what I'm saying? I hear y'all. Hey, y'all about to end the stream, y'all. I can't uh can't hang with the big dogs, you know. I'm about to be 60 in a couple years, so. Hey, Jerry, I thought you were part of like 49, 45 around there. Man, no, I'm 58, you man. You've been <laughs> dying that beer, huh? That's, you been yeah, dying you know, that I'm, beer. I'm, I'm all in my hair. Yep, I'm all great. Man, y'all better not be listening to JR, man. Yeah, man, I gotta <laughs> get my cane. Y'all be in the gym doing two a days, man. That joker. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one out here working. I'm like, wait a minute, JR. You, you said, you, you said, said man, you, man, I don't want to hear it. I can't go to sleep till nine o'clock tomorrow. You thought I was older than that, Jr. Huh? You thought I was older than thirty six? <laughs> no, I didn't know who you was, man. I don't be checking for guys how old they are, man. I just going on what you told yeah, me. Yeah, but it's been so a lot of so people it. in the comment section talking. About I look like I'm fifty and I'm forty five <laughs> and shit like that. No. I'm like, damn. I'm fi- I'm in my fifties. So I, I know you don't look like y'all me. Not listen to Jr. Man, I'm gonna get up out of here, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least y'all get to go to sleep. I'll be okay. I thought Jr. I thought Jr. was older than what he was, not because of the way he looked, the way he be speaking. I thought he was older than me the, hey, when man. I first met Red Eye. Yo, Jay, can you imagine being his age, knowing what he know, and then knowing what you know now? Rilla, mm. Rilla hey, 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 Rilla, I was just saying this. When I I didn't realize till I you already know Jay Jay ain't gonna let the stream in. Yeah, <laughs> hold on, I didn't I, let me say this one thing, Jr. I didn't know, you know, because when I was growing up, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a cool thing to graduate from school or be in the school. So we was all selling drugs and getting the security guards used to hide our drugs and going to jail and stuff from school. So I didn't graduate. I went to jail from high school, and but when I see these young um, black men, especially. I'm like, damn, these dudes is it's a bunch of them. Man. I'm like, damn. I grew up in the era when, when you didn't have to worry about SEs. You just was just free willing. You just was out there. I wish I was in that era. Y'all better not believe that. Had kids all over the place. I'm trying to figure yeah, out yeah, what era was nothing. this where niggas didn't like graduating from school wasn't cool. I'm trying to figure out. That. Man, we used to laugh at really. We used to. You can't not tell me. We used to laugh at the dudes like Jedi and them that was going to school and getting education. We called them nerds oh, and geese. Them, them the boys that, that we didn't want to be like. We was like we was considered the dropouts, the stupid kids, was the cool kids. We, we were the popular kids. I remember. I was, I was, I, I, of course, I regret it now. I remember, but I was getting like, damn, I'm listening to Jedi now. I'm getting talked yeah. about Jedi and JB. I really don't know nothing about the marches, do you? What marches? You talking about blood bullets in the rain? What marches? Yeah, nothing about, about the marches, uh, really. What marches? Protests? <laughs> All right, hold on. Man, y'all better not. Y'all hold better on. Let me turn this filter off. Let me turn this filter off. Hold on. Man, y'all stop listening to JR, man. <laughs> Let me turn this filter off. 
<laughs> it's a filter I put up for you guys. Hold on. <laughs> man, y'all don't listen to JR, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he yeah. tripping, tripping. He's talking about some marches. You know about the marches, uh, really. Man, get out of here, man. <laughs> man like, <laughs> I was in the trenches. You want to hey, no man, man. 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 No work tomorrow. You don't even remember where JR was going with that. Mm -hmm. If you don't remember Mayor Byrne, man, you ain't from my era, man. Yeah, you if you don't remember Jane Byrne, you ain't from my era. See, <laughs> <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't remember Pee Wee Herman, yo, I know oh, Pee Wee Herman. Not from my era, you right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, not from my era. You don't remember yeah. Pee Wee Herman. There you go. All right, y'all. We appreciate y'all for tuning in mm -hmm. to our Pee Let's Talk. We had a little bit of after hours. Uh, Mike Dove, Vintage, Trent Davis. Appreciate you, Jedi Mike, J Prince. Hello. Real salute to you hanging around, and uh, oh, I guess, guess K must have mm -hmm. dropped out, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. Jay, I'm pulling up in your city soon, man. Okay. Are you from Golden Milwaukee? Yeah, y'all only 45 minutes. I got to see what's popping up there, man. Man, you don't want to go to Milwaukee, man. It's, it's, hey, well, you man. from Chicago. I got hey, people like, real quick, what y'all think about that commercial, man? I mean, you crazy as hell, man. Was that you talking to you? No, your son. <laughs> no, not for real. I mean, how was it? Was it good? Yeah. yeah. But was that yeah. Good? yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah, it was okay. Just the skin part, like it, it threw me up a little, but the other. <laughs> hey, JR, y'all was laughing at me when I came on here with this mic. Y'all, they all sitting in the comment section saying, Yeah, you got, man, you got that from, from, a, from a cereal box, dude. Just, just tell us where you got it from. <laughs> no, Jedi, I didn't get I it. This is real like mic. That, he bought it. He got it from a carry good machine from the dollar store. I didn't, I didn't even know. I was going to ask you, was it on? Yeah, that's how I've been talking to you all day. Yeah. Is that thing light up too? <laughs> yeah, it lights up. Yeah, oh, I JR Lord. said hate on that, man. JR, was you talking to you? Did you do a split screen? Oh, oh no, no, no. No, no, because uh, the other person was moving. Like, yeah. that's what I was checking to. No, that was my grandson. Your son, right? Yeah. He said no, that was, was my grandson. Son. I'm gonna get up out of here, man. I'll let y'all later, man. I'll let y'all uh too. Yeah, that's my grandson. All right, really. All right, y'all. Take her, you stay blessed. Go All ahead, right. cue the music, JR. Oh, yeah, you know, I had to put the same one as had it on track. I should have played the commercial one time, but I ain't gonna score. I ain't gonna do too much. Play the commercial, play the commercial. Let's go. We're gonna do the commercial. It's the same song that was in there. It's too early. Yeah, I know. Right, I'll go ahead and play one more time for y'all real quick, man. Exclusive, y'all. It's the first time broadcast of the night. Get that level one, man. That level what? one. That one? We want the new one. Nah, the, new, the new one. one. The new one? Okay. Here we go. It's too early, but that's okay. My gym workout was phenomenal. Before I went home, I decided to stop over my mother's house. I haven't seen my mother in two months. I know she's going to be very surprised to see me. I can't wait. What the? I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The first thing I noticed was this person's skin. What is going on? Uncomplicated, untreated skin? Who is this guy? I had to take a step back. But then I realized it was my brother. But look at his skin. Have you guys ever seen anything like that? I had to take a closer look and figure out what was going on. Best believe I crept up on him. Peep this. I'm still looking at his skin trying to figure out how did we get here? I could do nothing but shake my head. He could definitely use my help. I had to get to the bottom of this. He definitely needed some game to buy this skin. I'm just staring at it like looking at it. Come on, bro. I knew what to do. I had to reach in my bag and get that tease handling. Uncomplicated skincare for men. Bro, this is why I'm excited to have Tee Chanley as the sponsor of today's video. They have helped me start and maintain my skincare routine by making the entire process uncomplicated. Honestly, it's the best skincare system for guys like you and me. I recommend you start with their level one system, which comes with all the basics. A daily face wash to get rid of the dirt and the grime on your skin, a two times per week exfoliating scrub to get rid of the dead skin cells, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20 because you should always be protecting your skin from the sun, and a PM moisturizer to help your skin stay hydrated and healthy throughout the night. My brother was so excited. 
My favorite part about Teach Hanley is that every box comes with an instruction card that tells you when to use each product, how much to use, and in what order. They really make the process of achieving and maintaining amazing skin easy. Shout out to Teach Hanley. And because Teach Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers a great deal. Just click the first link in the description and not only will you get Teach Hanley for the best possible price, but they'll also give you a free gift with your first box. Click that link and get started today for just $30. Feel the teach. Let the teach force be with you. Hey, man. Hey, Yo. <laughs> you give me jinx off skincare tips now? Uh, <laughs> what'd you say, Mike Dub? They say you giving jigsaw skin tear tips now? Oh yeah, man, most definitely, man. <laughs> I'm gonna go use it right now. I'm about to hop in the shower, man. I got I got the soap. You know, they got like a soap scrub. So you yeah. know, like, yeah. like level three though. You pulled out I want my bar from that day, Yeah, man. Hey, I, I got the link pinned to the top of the chat, man. Go ahead and click it. Click that link until you get your free gift. Yeah, I got the level one, bro. You got like the level three or something. Oh nah, man, I just I just got the free gift, man, when I click the link. Ah, yeah, see? that's the that's the thing. See, like once you once you click it, it give you the option of the soap, the lip yep. balm. You got options. So Dig check that. it out, man. Check it out. Dig skincare that. for me, uncomplicated skincare for men. We got to take care of our skin. We that's have to fact. take care of our skin, man. The women love us, man. Oh, before y'all go to bed, brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. Uh, I saw <laughs> your IG, man. Yeah, I'm staying off your IG, hey, man. Brush your teeth. <laughs> And make sure y'all floss. The key is flossing. Anybody can brush their teeth, but you got to spend some time each well, section, man. You got right here. One, two, three. Hey, you ain't using the water pick? Nah, I use the water pick, man. You, you um, use the floss floss. I saw your IG. Yeah, yeah, use the floss floss, man. You know, like when you when you lazy, you just use the one, the single. But when you mm -hmm. really want to get up in that boy, you wrap it around them fingers and you mm -hmm. that shit, yeah. I know. Yep, yep. And and don't be gentle with it, man. You, you want to make sure you get it real good. If your guns bleed the first time, just go ahead and keep doing it. After about yep. a week or so, you'll be good. Yep, 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 yep. yep. That's the fact. You don't want to be embarrassed when you go to the dentist, man. They they get the cleaning your teeth. It's bleeding all over the place. They ain't going to tell you nothing. They're going to they gonna like, look at this motherfucker now. Yo. Fuck that. Hey, right. hey, look, wait, wait. Before you before you leave, JR, okay? No, we're not. We're not Friday. Gonna do, we, oh, What's okay. coming Saturday on the network? Oh, Mr. Lee. Man, Mr. Lee, actually, I'm gonna drop a clip tomorrow. Um, Bro, I still got IG. Take Make sure you guys follow me on IG at LIPF underscore JI. I'm gonna Jesus. drop a little clip if you guys haven't seen it already, man. And I'm gonna tie it into a full clip, man. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get to this. Let's go ahead and get yeah, to this. Either girl, can you still up? You still up, baby girl? What's um, yeah. what's Sunday? La Peep Sports in the mirror. Yeah, Monday yeah. we got Kay and Kayla. Yeah, we got Ken and Kayla Monday, out. Tuesday. Is I'm back on there, uh, Jr. Uh, I'm, I tell you, I gotta talk to Ken and Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it was up to me, yeah, you know, but when you got the individual shows, man, I only have so much control, man. Right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Jay yeah, said, yeah. "My back on there." You know, they grab my arm and twist it up. Like, okay. <laughs> so they, 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 they had me hemmed up. They really came on there. I, hey, after really came on there, they had me hemmed up. I'm like, man, shit. they said on it. Don't. Hey, look, you see, I ain't you pop did it. Up. You did it. I said, I ain't do nothing. Really <laughs> did on this own. Look, I, I I showed up for the algorithm and I kept it moving, man. I, <laughs> I like. I see what they doing though. I see the people rocking with them. So, and that's the crazy thing about this song, about this network. There's literally something for everybody. If one thing, if one, if you ain't rocking one way, you know what I'm saying, come get it mm -hmm. over here or pull up on this day. But it's you know, it's all love and it's all for. Um, it's I, all for I think people. a lot of people. I think a lot of people they uh, rock with me though. They do. Yeah. When they. So so I'm I'm playing. You, That's what you call. I'm playing. What you call like a, a statement slash question. It's, you got a comp. Hit you with that comp. You're right. You're right, Jr. I'm asking. That. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about how you received it. <laughs> they be like, yeah. no statement or no question. Bad either, comments. Either, either, either comments. or. It's up to you. Either or. You know, like whatever you want to do. What's the best way to get at it, um, JP? This is the best that? way you get at it. This is one thing I told Jr. Out the gate. Jr. Hit me and was like, "Yo." Um, 
you know, hey, can you pull up? Da 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 whoop de woo. And I told JR and I say this to this day, bro. I'm only here to add value. The moment I'm not adding value, I'm no benefit. I'm not serving the people. I'm out of here. Serve the people, man. Serve the people. That's it. You know, Do you think the uh, perspective hey. that I come from is serving people? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, for real, ain't gonna you tell you about Jeff that. Chris? Hey, for real, ain't gonna tell you about that Tesla. We just, we just got him. Man, I'm I'm gone, man. I ain't got time. For oh, you. really? Damn. Yeah, I mean, it's a small, it's a small joint. We ain't, he ain't gonna tell you about it, you know. That's what's up. <laughs> I can't wait till I get to that yeah. status. Well, for cars, a car, really, right? right? Hey, boy, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even finna respond to this, man. Y'all better stop ain't listening. Tell you, ain't, ain't gonna tell you, Thompson. What the fuck was the plug this shit up? <laughs> shout, out, shout out to T's hands. Right? <laughs> 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 plug this shit. This motherfucker been dead after the first day. I said, man, I gotta go ahead and plug man. it up, man. I said, just sit on the porch, man, and just uh, plug it up. Shit. Man. But, but y'all know what? Before y'all older goes, before y'all older guys get off, yeah. go, I kind of don't like when they maybe treat me when when it comes. When it comes to talk about data, I don't, I don't, I kind of be feeling some type of way that they be treating me like I'm not deserving. Jay, 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 tomorrow I'm patronizing y'all. Don't worry about it. He he gonna, he can hear all about it. Shout out to Mr. Coleman. (laughs) Shout out to Mr. Coleman. There you go. All right, I'm I'm gonna play play this one track. And then I'm going to go ahead and close it out, man. So feel free to vibe out on this last track if y'all want to. If you haven't hit the like button, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you guys for tuning in to La Peef. Let's talk on the La Peef Network. It's the weekend, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all be careful. Happy Friday to my third shifters and my truck drivers. We appreciate y'all. All All the green gang members. I see y'all, man. I see y'all. I left it. I left it on members for y'all. Yeah, the merch. Go to www.lapeef.com for that merch. You know what time it is. See you, Miss Parker. All right, y'all. Bye about. Mike Dub, you my boy too, man. Track for y'all, man. One more. track man make sure you hit that like button on your way out appreciate y'all
Thank mm-hmm. you. 
appreciate y'all, man. Thanks for all the constant support. Still rocking out with you guys. Appreciate your service, Mike Dub. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Make sure you hit that like button on the way out. Again, happy Friday. Subscribe to the channel.